And hello. All right. Uh, let's get to it. Uh, all right. Yeah. <clears throat> let's continue where we left off last time with um the book reading credentials. Well, yeah, the books. <laughs> uh, yeah. I also gonna just play some of the OST on loop instead of having just the uh, um the menu music compared to last time. Just for it's just so it's something different. <laughs> Uh, one sec. Mm, this one. Uh, let me know if it's too loud. I think it's fine. It shouldn't be too loud. I think. Let me know if it's too loud. <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah, this is Hod's, um, story BGM. I just figured I'd play some of those. I'll probably switch it up here and there. But I figured instead instead of just having the main mu main menu music, just to like change it up a bit. Uh, where were we? Oh yeah, we were in eight o'clock circus. <clears throat> All right, so we still got eight o'clock circus sweepers, everything down there, all of Star and then Imperitus. All right, not it's not that long, but yeah, we'll see. I want to also check out. Um, if there's time, I think there will be time. <laughs> there should be time. Um, to check out the Rowena's original ending. Well, not really original ending, more like the post credits ending. Uh, I know that was changed, yeah. So I'll check that out. Um, I figured also, um, for like something like Limbus, the watch, the checking out the trailers stuff. I figured I may as well just make that a separate stream instead. So, uh, just so that, just for the sake of neatness, I want to make that into a separate stream um, next week, probably. Yeah, this coming week, probably. I'll just do, uh, re um, you know, watching Limbus stuff stream. When was the Tokyo Game Show thing actually? Um, cause he, is it, they mentioned that they're going to be even more, like the, the more of the information will come out rather, um, during Tokyo game show. When was that? Um, okay. Um, what was it? September 17th. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. That's when it's coming out. Fair play. At least I, I also don't. I think it's fine. I, I checked to see if there was other people who have done, like, um, like, Limbus trailers showing on. But to be fair, it's just like vods uploaded rather than streamed on YouTube. I think he'll be fine. I'm just cautious about getting like copyright copyright striked and then getting my channel fucked. I don't want it to happen. <laughs> like, um, with YouTube, it's like. You can get copyright claim that's like, oh yeah, monetization is off and then or whatever monetization from ads goes to the, like, say songs, the artist. While copyright strike is the one that's more of the bigger one that could get you in trouble. <laughs> or get your channel in trouble, rather. Like, claim is fine, but strike is when the issues are, really. All right. Let's get to this now. Uh, we finished puppets, we're here. All right. Emma's page. Its nest has its singularity. For example, W Corp has warp, a fast and reliable means of transportation that's guaranteed to deliver you to your destination on time. F Corp has ferries, which can unlock anything that's considered lock, physically or conceptually. That's OP as hell. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's just lot. That's just what. That's OP as hell. Like, co like conceptually lot. Like physically lock. Fine. That's like doors and stuff, or whatever. Like, I guess that's how Bina, like, just or was it Garion? Yeah, how she just invaded, what? Well, the lab in the outskirts. Like, she just didn't even need. You can just use the fairy singularity stuff just to open up doors and stuff but then conceptually locked I mean what like locked away memories that seems like has lots of potential but like damn at least that's from my understanding 
like conceptually locked like yeah like locked away secrets in your heart <laughs> um any special problems with copyright are we just talking about chances uh chances 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 really i don't think because i saw some people have uploaded their like reactions or analysis of the limbus trailer so i don't think i don't think project moon is that harsh on it it's just more of me being just in case because like um i saw a case recently where a channel was um copyright copyright striked like they got everything sorted out but then they got copyright striked um it's all fine now though um but they got copyright striked and then they but then you're not they weren't able to stream because of the copyright strike so yeah just gotta be careful about that because i YouTube, I think, lets you stream if your account in good standing. But if it's copyright striked, it might take a bit of time to handle that. <laughs> so I'm just being cautious, really. Um, G Corp has fears that can control gravity and so on. J Corps is the opposite of F Corps. It's a technology that can lock and seal something. That's open or exposed on a conceptual level. Oh, was is that Bina's other? Is that that's the degraded lock one isn't it um that's been as um what's it called other um attack degraded lock or just lock <laughs> nowadays since he's fine now but okay cool wait so, uh, it's funny like thinking of it like conceptually it's sort of like breaking the fourth wall because um like conceptually it's like oh yeah i'm gonna seal your speed dice obviously there's no speed dice in the universe in universe but meta wise and i guess conceptually they lock a speed dice i know it's sort of you can sort of think of it like breaking the fourth wall but j corp isn't that the one that was in hanafuda um wasn't it wasn't it j corp yeah j corp but this is like fortune i mean maybe yeah nest of gambling j corp but then I guess it's multiple singularities going on in J Corp in Jay's nest, at least. Or maybe that's just that's the the culture in there. Well, there is like maybe there is some entity or something, but it's unrelated to um, J Corp's. Well, this singularity we're talking about. Like they could have multiple singularities, but hmm. All right, interesting. There's a lot of potential. It reminds me a bit of like, um, how to say, like, you know how like in Fallout, there's like a lot of um, vaults with human experiments and like that sort of thing really gets people going of like coming up with theories and like, oh, what was, go what was going on in this vault or what kind of thing was going on there. And then, um, of course, we get to explore some of them and find out what was going on there. So it's like, all these singularities like the alphabet corpse and then just trying to think of like hmm what could they do or like what what is their aim oh jail corp jay's jail corp i could see that if it's like lock and stuff but when we got gambling unless <laughs> unless they mean like unless it's like oh yeah it's gambling because metaphorically you're locked in gambling once you get stuck in that hole <laughs> Of course, the range or size of things can be locked. That can be locked will depend on how much you pay. Okay, fine. Um, all right. Oh wait, no. F Corp. Sing opposite of F Corp. Okay, cool. Um, the main singularity of J Corp is the is lock, and the other singularity is something they have license over. Um, you as long as they have a okay, yeah, 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 a license for the other singularity. Okay, okay. Uh, cheap ones are mostly used for locking small boxes and other personal objects while expensive ones can seal an area so nothing nothing can come inside or can lock a person's body but if i'm being dissected okay damn yeah that's actually a clever way of like interpreting lock like isn't it it's a way of playing around the concept of locking like damn fair play the technology has a pretty wide range of applications you can lock basically anything that's open in one sense or another could it be this singularity was created because our nest, where Jacob is located, 
um, is a nest of gambling that holds a smart few secrets that's gonna be leaked. Okay, right. <laughs> that's how it relates to gambling. Beats me. Not like anything good will come out of knowing the real reason anyway. Um, alright. Yeah, I guess... Wait, so Emma and Noah came from J Corp. Um, well, J... Is it... Do we, are they nest dwellers? Um, or something? I don't know. Are they, are they nest dwellers or are they just living in the back streets? And just live working in the office? Imagine looking at your skin and being unstable. <laughs> Unstabable, unstabable. That's one way of looking at it, honestly. Like, what is luck conceptually? Oh, the talk about copyright was just me being, just me being, um, uh, oh yeah, yeah, they mentioned, um, security footage. Right, right. They were just watching over, oh, I see, I see, the security guards. But yeah, you know, the copyright talk was just because, um, I want to do, um, not this stream, I figured I'd save it for a future stream, probably next week, of just looking over the Limbus Company stuff and just chatting about it. Instead of having it, like, bunched in with Ruina, I do, for, for the sake of neatness and for organization, and just because, like, I want to I wanna dedicate a stream to that in of itself, rather than uh, bundling it in, in this stream. So, yeah. But because it's just being careful whether I get copyright striked if I show the Limbus trailers on my channel. That sort of thing. I think it's fine though. Yeah, yeah. I saw some streamers who don't have that problem. Like some have like uploaded their vaults on YouTube and there's no issue there. <clears throat> the Jayco mod takes the locking thing gameplay wise as preventing certain amount of staggered damage taken and locking themselves when staggered to take less damage. Ah, I see. That's a fun way of interpreting that as well. Like, Bina takes it like somewhat literally with like locking speed dice, but yeah, with how locking locking can be like a conceptual thing. Like, yeah, I can lock how much damage I take per turn, or I can yeah, pretty much, or like locking yourself in a certain state. Like, <laughs> when you involve like physically, by all means, that's like um, normal, normal. As in, that's something that's like, you can relate to, you can think of easy, like locking doors, locking chests, as they say, personal objects. But then when you when you do locking conceptually, it's like, there's a whole wide of, there's a whole wide range of possibilities. Mm, locking dice and such too, raising your cost and locking your dice to basically power know you and become unable to modify the original roles. Ah, I see. That's interesting. That's a way of doing it. That's for sure. Like, yeah, once you once you involve things that can mess with things on a conceptual level, you can get really, you can go anywhere of that. Because like, what is concepts? A lot of things. It's like abnormalities. They're like a concept in of themselves. And it's like, how to say, um, abnormality potential also is just infinite because they're concepts. Like, you can have an abnormality of anything. <laughs> like, oh, uh, based on someone's trauma? Sure. Fairy tales? Sure. So, concepts are like, like, when you invoke, it's a really fun thing people can do. There's just so much potential. The fairy singularity does that too, technically. Conceptually opening things, yeah. From physical things like locked objects and conceptual things. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know, like, opening up doors by all means within, a, like, what? opening i guess the reason why does fairy i guess it technically like opening up wounds i guess because um right because um in yeah in your mind like repressed trauma like re unlocking memories unlocking secrets mm -hmm. i'm trying to think of why i guess it's like you can think of it like opening wounds like we've been a fairy in game does a burn plus bleed damage so yeah it's, it's burn and bleed stacked together but better so i guess it, you could view it either as like mental damage like for some somehow or another like yeah opening a wound and keeping it open and worsening it mm. Mm, pretty much yeah like fairy has a lot of potential like i get why it was pretty much only for bina <laughs> like yeah, it's, it's another corp singularity and J Corp, well, F Corp, sorry, wasn't involved at all um, in our in this story. So, hmm, 
A ton of potential and it's so so busted. Yeah. Once you involve people that things that can deal with concepts, it's like there's no there has to be some sort of like limit or at least maybe like an energy limit or some sort of downside. Who knows? Yeah. And with J you can lock memories, yeah. And vice versa. Hmm. J and F <laughs> are like really um the opposites, huh? <laughs> nice coincidence. Um, it's quite really interesting that Arbiter's fight with what you can be essentially call manip manipulating basic concepts. Mm. It's like super powerful. Zen has lines. Oh, oh, I see. oh, yeah, that's the thing she was doing like lines, bird cages. Mm. Bina has fairy, chain, lock, pillar, shockwave. Mm. Well, they both have shockwave, I think, wasn't it? It's when like. Um, Zena destroyed well caused the crater in Ketar <laughs> basic words and concepts but yeah but then it's like they really go all out in exploring those concepts um, Elkop Singularity is the bucket and Ayan made the bucket to safely extract Kogito Kogito is something that Carmen found and tried to use for greater good ah I see right so yeah so Elkop was more about harnessing with Kogito like Kogito was around I guess beforehand but then there was no like there was nothing to like harness it to its full extent hmm the fact that the arbiters weaponized them to a lethal amount basically hmm you definitely understand that they're infused by singularities and such utilizing concepts hmm the arbiters like just go nuts huh like what was is like with the claw it's like like for example one of them was like W serum is that related to like singularities? Like I was thinking of W Corp, um, with um the claw used um W serum, and it was like, no, I'm gonna bust through every single floor through the library. Okay, cool. So the serums are also singularity related. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, it was Warp Corp singularity for like temporary. Nice. Interesting. I mean, to be fair, they like. The claw and um, they are, the arbiters in the claw are pretty much extensions of the hand to some extent. They're, they're pretty much the will of the hand, of, oh, sorry, of the head, sorry, of the head, um, you know, in physical, as people. So obviously they get the most powerful um, things possible. The head knows all the singularities, so why not make use of it? <laughs> that sort of thing. Their infusive singularities also means it takes a lot of mental strain, even with training and such. So we do prefer a simple concepts to keep themselves stable. Hmm. Like, who knows how complicated they could get as well? And it's like, I know, the claw didn't really talk either, did they? Um, hmm. I guess we'll find out once we encounter more claws arbiters as well. Like, I know the claw. I guess arbiters are also. I know, claws. The um, claws seem to be more like the muscle. Like they don't talk much. Oh, they did talk with Zena. True, 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 true. true. I guess Barrel just wasn't talkative. <laughs> there wasn't much to say to Bina and things. Do you have Lobotomy's Corp? Yeah, I have it. I have it. Yeah, yeah. I got it. I got Rowena and Lobotomy Corp art books. I got them as the DLC when it was on sale. Claws are. The, uh, yeah, they're absolutely the muscle tax collectors or punish the tax evaders. <laughs> yeah, like um, Mika's dad. Well, he was an, he was more like by accident, but they just came to his house and killed him. <laughs> like, bruh. Like, sure, distortions, um, people killing each other in the street, sweepers, no problem. Tax evaders, the biggest evil in the world, just go and goes there and just kills them, like ruthlessly. Like, damn. <laughs> like, I like I know I if I I know very the claws obviously won't go or W serum on normal people. We can just kill them with one slice, honestly, like one slice or one punch. But like, <laughs> it is just weird to imagine if they did go all out just on tax evaders. Like, oh yeah, here's some W serum, and just goes and just tosses them through the whole like building. <laughs> Arbiter Beholder's Claws, ABC. Oh, right, ABC. 
they love their parallels, huh? There's a theory or joke that Roland is a was a claw because he looks familiar. I can sort of see why people would imagine that because um, obviously at the start of the game, we had no idea who the purple terror was. I could see I could see credence in that theory, you know, honestly, like um, or obviously we have Roland who wears a suit over time, and also um, there's a question at the start of the game: How the hell did Roland? get to the library in the first place like how did he get there and it's like well the claws are able to like just dash across like like that so I mean to be fair in, in Lost Me Corp we had no idea of knowing there was um, a W Corp singularity but I guess you, you could see you could probably theorize that he's a he was a claw obviously he's not but <laughs> it's an interesting theory like before everything was revealed about purple tear and all that. If only mode called Black Claw, which is rolling as a claw. <laughs> just what? It's like is it like just um Roland with the head of a claw? Or does he get also the attacks of the claw? <laughs> like, or is it just his head replaced by a claw head? It mixes the known claw attacks with his moveset. Oh interesting, damn. So you can just do W's. I mean, could mm, that be interesting? Like just doing, just use. Oh, it's on YouTube. Yeah, I see. Cool, cool, cool. I guess there's a lot of funky mods, huh? Like I saw, I didn't. I saw a couple around. Like one was like Angelica mod, which um against Black Silence, which was like Angelica's. Um, this is the Black Silence cards, but also mixed in with some of Angelica's move set from the um, Black Silence fight. Mm -hmm. It looks really cool, that's for sure. <laughs> but it's like, I saw like she was just placed on Beanan's floor to like, I think it replaces a librarian just to use um, the, I think it was the beast they used in the video, or at least some of the abnormal cards from there. What do you think Serum L does? Mm, I mean, would they? I don't know. Would would Serum L make someone an abnormality? Because um, we had obviously the case with um, during Lobotomy Corp when Bina demonstrated to us um how abnormalities are made. It was like you had like someone, she like one of the employees who looked inside the well. I think I'm if I remember correctly, and they just went mad, and it's like. And then they just t slowly turned into an abnormality. Hmm, true, yeah. Sometimes it doesn't have to relate to um, specific similarities. Serum R just hits you really hard, true. And it's a clone thing. Hmm. Unless, like, it's just representative of, like, how the R, R Corp is, like, um, you know, um, an army kind of. Like a protection. Well, they're more like an army of um, an army based corporation kind of like a private military um, on YouTube version of the mod maker I said some story but in the game mod I doesn't have it I see I see hmm maybe throw a bunch of buckets <laughs> something I like to think is that the rhinos mentioned they get injected with something to help their power ah yeah yeah I think yeah I see that could yeah that could be like that like obviously our corp can have multiple singularities like um jeez mind break uh depends i mean obviously mental damage but like jeez um <laughs> um but yeah like obviously our corp will have like i think honestly a lot of the corporations just have lots of, have have multiple singularities running at once to be honest like Lobotomy Corp wasn't just L Corp, it was also, it was T Corp as well, wasn't it? But time stuff, wasn't it? It was T Corp as well, and R Corp was helping them, of course. But I think, um, I think, yeah, T Corp is time, yeah. So they had T Corp singularity to some extent, obviously to establish, it was the TTS protocol that you were using. Hmm. So, and also, it was, there was also W singularity and R singularity. 
นี่ครับทีโคอืมอย่าทีทีทูดัสเซทีทีทูไทม์ทรัคทูดัสเซ Uh, w was working with T Corp. Yeah, that's how、um, time was like stasis. That was how time for the people inside W Corp was in stasis, pretty much. K Corp was the main healing bullets. Yeah. So I guess like some of the singularities, I mean,、um, places, corporations, they have like obviously connections with each other. Like they maintain a good relationship. Like obviously, L Corp was the one. The Bosmi Corp was the one providing、um, the energy for our corp to keep on managing cloning because that uses so much energy. <laughs> yeah, as long as none of them break the rules of the head, pretty much. Like,、um, obviously, like our corp was interesting because like they managed to like skirt around the rules, he- the head's rules, because、um, it was like, oh yeah. Clones could only be alive for like seven days, but with T Corp. Oh yeah, they used T Corp as well, didn't they? Like, I think it was T Corp to like,、um, to like, to make sure that so that time for the battle royale for the R Corp clones was a lot smaller, was like a lot bigger, was it longer? Sorry, longer compared to time in real time, and they really accelerated the process. Towards the end, when they just use the loss of the energy. Hmm. TT the TT two A is supercharged compared to normal time track. Yeah, like having a whole cycles thing going on for gosh knows how long. Well, to be fair, yeah, it's like the most like it's really it's a lot more stronger than the one in the warp train. That's for sure. Like you know, so yeah, it, it makes sense with how much energy. Cause like none of the energy from the main branch of the Bosmi Corp went to the city, all of it went to、um, use powering the TT two. W Corp was the one who sent the rabbits to the Bosmi Corp and raised their memories. Oh yeah 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 yeah. They mentioned that like because they because the rabbits just teleport in, and also、um, right. I think Mio mentioned it at the end during her introduction in the Bosmi Corp that、um, yeah. That they erase the memories of them once they get out. They speed up the battle royale in a chamber, which in reality is like a day or maybe a few hours. When it comes to the time that, to the time that A Corp tracks.、Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, as long as it's a time that A Corp is fine with, it's fine. So like, um, it's a max seven days, but time inside the battle royale is a lot longer, or something like that. I think it was seven days allowed for clones. Or was it less? I can't remember. But either way, yeah, L Corp, T Corp, W Corp, and R Corp is a four wheel deal, four way deal. Yeah, that's interesting. It's like, yeah, we actually because we, we got involved with W Corp in the arena, T Corp, yeah, K Corp for the healing bullets,、Mm-mm. and then、um, T Corp. It was also yeah, T Corp was also inside the warp train. They, they were using technology from there. A person and their clone can exist at the same time for more than a week. Yeah, seven days, seven days, pretty much, seven days. That'd be. I'm gonna say it'd be interesting. Like, um, it'd be <laughs> like, um, we were talking about Philip before, and like how we don't know how exactly Philip is, because um, the, the ensemble Philip was like one third of Philip, but we got. Two thirds of Philip when we turned him when we turned when we got the incomplete page of the crying children. So it's interesting to think like, what if like both ensemble Philip and、um, normal Philip lived on? Would they count as clones, or would and would the head be like, nope, one of you are gonna die now, <laughs> or would they be counted as separate people by that point? W Corp was actually having technical difficulties before L Corp shut down. Oh, because L Corp shut down. Ah, I see. But wasn't actually yeah. That reminded me. Um, I was thinking about that. Like, so because no 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 no. Yeah, I guess it, no no no. Is right right. No mind no mind. Um, actually yeah. How did um how did I guess because Jai Hyun and Elena know about the singularity and they have. Ways of getting out somehow.、Um, they didn't have to spend the whole time inside the train, like ov- otherwise they would have gone insane as well. <laughs> they they even said that like 
um, for them it was just about a week worth of time because they went out of the train sometimes they use oh yeah Pluto's magic right 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 yeah I was wondering yeah there's Pluto there's Pluto ah uh, he put himself into stasis I see I see I see Peacock, the creator of the shelter of the 27th of March. No known singularity though, but Wiki said it's food and preser preservation. Oh, Peacock made the shelter. Oh yeah, right. Mm. Yeah, preservation, yeah. Like, obviously, it's a case where like, you can survive in that shelter forever. But then it's like, everywhere, everywhere the safest place on earth, technically, because everywhere else goes to hell. <laughs> I think Cobb is actually very below, beloved by everyone by how reasonable his prices was. Hmm, like, he knew how to, like, you know, get favor from everyone to get a plant working. Like, he knew that R Corp, he needed, he needed them in case of any, like, issues coming up. Elcott's production was very good and affordable. Hmm, and, like, he mentioned, um, right, um, I think it was, um, what was it? Was it Neza? and Roland during um, Floor of Art, one of the episodes. Um, Roland mentioned how Enkephalon is the energy source, pretty much. Enkephalon is the energy they create. And um, it's also a drug, but like, Roland mentioned that he used like Enkephalon batteries. Hmm. Also a drug, but also the energy source, yeah. Imagine, imagine people just chugging like battery acid pretty much but like not as well still dangerous but not as dangerous <laughs> at least but yeah Roland mentioned how he used um Enkephalin batteries and he was like Ugh, when he found out that it was actually abnormality juice pretty much <laughs> Enkephalin is abnormality juice hmm <laughs> It started from Abnos, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. And he was like, because like he said that also like something like Enkephalin was really dangerous as a material. Like he said that, sorry, he said it can it can just explode um, if you set it off wrong. I swear, like Enkephalin batteries could just explode and just cause damage if I remember correctly. Hmm. But yeah, it's nice that we got some ex like some expansion on what Enkephalin is. It's like gasoline. True, yeah. <laughs> like gas, pretty much. Because, mm -hmm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I remember seeing for Limbus, like, Enkephalin is one of the... I think it's the energy, the stamina system in Limbus. Or at least it's like the it's like the stamina potion, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Enkephalin, I think, is like the stamina resource. Like in other gacha games, you have, like... Um, like in F FGO, you have apples, so I think Enkephalin is the equivalent. Enkephalin is Samsung. <laughs> yeah, the batteries are fine now, at least. Enkephalin is very is very versatile, and how the drug works is that it can show you different realities of yours, different realities. Yeah, your the fuel. Yeah, yeah, the fuel. <laughs> I think so. I saw it. Let me check it. It's on the site, on the pre-registration site. Um, one sec. On the trip booking section. We're really talking about Limbus. <laughs> I said I wasn't gonna. Whatever. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. Like, Ikefalin fuel box. Yeah. We're almost at the. Oh, Blade Lineage. Oh. Alright, <laughs> I'll just show you what I'm looking at now. This thing, yeah. And it's like. Oh yeah, they are using Ekefalin. Okay, so yeah, yeah. The, the identities are like a mix of the stuff from... Well, ego and ident identity. I see, I see. We're really talking about Limbus now. I said I was going to save this for some other stream. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Um, Ekefalin fuel boxes. Which I assume is like the... Extraction ticket is probably the gacha system. It's like the gacha tickets. You use that to spend on gacha. While Enkephalin fuel box is your stamina resource, I'm assuming. Based on other gacha games, that seems to be um, what I'm assuming. Uh, lunacy? No idea. In game currency. I've guessed lunacy is the other resource for gacha. Or maybe it's like the, like the 
It could be. We'll see. Well, tickets, extraction tickets are like maybe just draw tickets. Uh, the spring that has a battle pass. I mean, to be fair, some people just aren't a fan of um, gacha mechanics at all. Like, I get why. Um, I play lots of gachas, so I don't mind myself. Like battle pass, um, some um, some games do have a battle pass. A lot of the time, it's just for skins. I didn't see the details for Limbus yet. We'll check out more of it when I do the stream of it, of watching the trailers and just talking about it. But like um, Limbus does, I guess no. It's like some other gacha games do have battle pass systems where like um, yeah, we don't know to, what it will be like at least. Yeah, um, they give like a nice bonus like. Um, I'll give, I'll say like one, like Azure Lane, it gives more materials, I think, with the battle pass. There's a free battle pass and then there's a paid battle pass alongside it with progress being thing. And like in Azure Lane, the battle pass system is more for a character skin. Like I think you get a character skin from there. So yeah, um, I think I don't play Fire Emblem Heroes. I know there's a battle pass in there, but I don't play that game. Also, the whole thing about members on the socials is not so real. Mm. Yeah, Fate Pass. <laughs> I I don't I don't play Fire Emblem Heroes, so I don't know. I don't know how that's like. Um, it gives skin. That's it. Skins that has stat boost. Oh, okay. But also with stat boosts. It's like yeah. It's more like. I'll see. You. Okay, while we're still on the topic of Limbus, I guess, I'm really curious if the game... I don't think Project Moon is a type who would put anything behind a paywall. It's a gacha game. <laughs> it's a gacha game. Um, so, we will see how it is. I think, like, the really... The good gacha games, like, they still let you... Like, you can pay, or... But you can still get by if you're free to play. Like, a lot of the, the good gacha games let you still enjoy the story or let you progress or let you still experience the game if you um um if you're free to play a lot those are the ones i tend to play myself like ones that are more are more forgiving to you if you're free to play like um like grand blue fantasy you can just farm grids that are like free to play you just farm them and then it's fine or like fgo where like um, the characters, like, there's a lot of good, good characters, but you can still get by in the game with, like, free stars and, like, support summons and stuff. And then, of course, you can still roll into, like, the good ones if you really want them. I got, yeah. I've gone on record, they've gone on record to say it's mostly just to put up money for future projects, so I saw something about that. Um, we'll see how that goes. I saw something about it, like, it was, it's to, like, to do with the whole back to arena. Um, I saw something about that, like to do with how people were like getting pissed off about the ending with Purple Tear. Um, like say, thinking like, oh, they just want money because um, it's, it's teasing a future game. <laughs> but it's like, um, Lobotomy Corp also had a teaser at the end of the game. So it's like, <laughs> I don't, I think by that point, people were just throwing stones. But uh, I not want to talk about that drama because I wasn't obviously around for that. <laughs> when we'll discuss about that when we get to seeing the other ending. But yeah. <clears throat> We're 40 minutes in and all we read is Emma. <laughs> it's fine. Alright, Noah. J Corp owns the nest of gambling. Every person here devotes their life to those insane games of chance. Mostly Korean side review bomb. I see. Oh yeah, alright. Before... Also, I'm curious... Like, I mentioned before that... Right, back on Limbus for one sec. Like, I'm curious if... Limbus has PvP. Because I know PvP... Like, they, they still need people to obviously fund the game. Like, to buy stuff as well. Like, I know PvP is a really, really... Good way of like... Like... Of having like whales in the in the game, in a sense, like some games like live off their PVP, and it's like they have a story and stuff and events, but like PVP is like a massive draw. Like for example, um, Sino Alice, I play that. I don't, I play it and like 
more more like a casual guild so we don't we're not like super powerful or anything but like pvp gets people like going ham on the gacha to like be the very strongest <laughs> um now like, even like for something like let's say blue archive which is really a chill gacha game honestly but then it has pvp that people do go ham for as well <laughs> like hmm very secretive so we, yeah we don't know about that to be honest like um imagine if they give you access to everything in the game for pvp mm, not exactly how that works more like pvp i think people just like to be like number one in the rankings or whatever also we witnessed some bugs in arena i'm not sure how pvp would be for them yeah we'll, see, we'll have to see like the things from what i can gather with project moon games is that they're really good games but like it's more like but um they tend to improve their games over time a lot so we shall see how that goes because like to be fair gacha games are also like that in a sense where you get like quality of life improvements as it goes on um but we shall see how that goes i, I hope i hope i hope in the whole yeah i hope in all hopes it goes well like i'm a fan so i hope it i hope it goes well hmm. like yeah also with the battle system i don't know how pvp would work although you have like in like let's say princess connect for example um there's two types of pvp one pvp is um pvp like where um you like the the game auto fights so you don't you don't use any you don't you just watch them fight so he it uses, uses, uses the auto system so and that's how pvp works so like maybe if it's auto systems only that's how pvp works if a game has a more um uh buttony play style while well, another form of pvp could be like player versus everyone pvp and then rankings based on how well each clan does or i don't know if there's gonna be a clan system in limbus we'll see but they could do that as well like let's say like raid like a raid system pretty much like um which like who's the guild that can get the most points from fighting these raids or whatever we'll see we'll see <laughs> like I, I can imagine there being like big abnormality raid style events where like it's like you fight this one enemy for a long time for a fair amount of time though raid events could also just be pve as well where like the whole community um just joins together and fights this one big enemy and whittles down their health bar over time summer don quixote when <laughs> that's the thing um i want i'll discuss this more in um the limbus stream i'll do just like talking about watching and talking about the talking about the trailers yeah the raid idea like it's done in a couple other games like let's say fgl like most famously was fighting the pillars as a massive server event or like to be fair they have raid events raid events here and there as well and like um that's the thing i i'm thinking like i'm really curious how the gacha will get off its feet as in because um with um limbus we have these like what 10 10 8 i don't know however so many characters at the start um none of them are like marina or 12 12 that's it 12 we have but none of them are marina or lobotomy corp characters and so i wonder how because like I wonder how we're going to attract people to the game, like newcomers. If you're already a Ruina or Lobotomy Corp fan, you might check it out. Because, but then at the same time, it's not like you're playing as um, the Sephira and or Roland this game in Limbus. So it's like people who are attached to like the Sephira aren't instantly drawn to the new characters. Um, but who knows how it goes, yeah. Because Rowena did have abnormal pages, but it's not part of the plot, yeah. Um, oh, not pillar men, but you know what I mean, the, de the demon pillars. <laughs> Especially Barbatus, that was like farmed for like pages <laughs> because that was a really coveted material during the Solomon um, release. <laughs> exactly, Barbatus. 
Ah, thank you, Barbatus, for your pages. <laughs> Solomon Rage, yeah. <laughs> um, mm, it was a fun event. Well, no event, rather a story release. But yeah, um, I know, for example, <laughs> great raid boss Greta. Honestly, it could she could be. <laughs> She's massive, so she could be. Ronan Kelly may appear as the Black Science and Red Mist. Yeah. Possibly, yeah, because someone mentioned how they teased Black Silence as an identity in um, Leviathan. So, who knows? But yeah, Violet Midnight, yeah. That could be a raid as well. Like, Violet Midnight or whatever. You, you can bring back concepts from the previous case. Like, I mentioned how when we, when we watched the ending to... Um, how when we watched the ending to the library, Angela was like... One day, we're going to bring back the like, like get the library back up and running. Like, I could imagine the library being a game mechanic, or an area to explore, or something in um, Limbus Company. Like, either something like, oh yeah, we help the library um, get resources, we build up the library again, or potentially, um, there's this event in Princess Connect called Tower of Luna, where you like. Um, ascend the tower every bit here and there and more floors unlock as you like just go after wave after wave of enemy of enemies so you could treat the library like that it's like a tower style event or like a place to train yeah pretty much like it would be nice to like but the library is the outskirts so um, maybe it'll be something that's revealed later in the story in Limbus Company as the characters explore more outside. We'll see, we'll see. 10 seconds of iron cutscene and you lose your mind again. <laughs> That'd be cool. Honestly, iron as an identity for like the anniversary. <laughs> the head of Lobotomy Corp back in the day. <laughs> if you remember about other complex in Lobotomy Corps in Monolab, there was also, oh yeah, the hologram of Angela I think that was more like like she wasn't even called Angela she called herself by some other name but it turned out I think um, it was like it was a semi sentient AI in the sense that I think it I think the Angela hologram was able to respond to the manager like the manager in Wonder Lab got like feelings towards um, <laughs> the hologram Angela but then it's like after the um obviously it wasn't the real Angela I don't think it I, I don't think it had it, it couldn't have been because otherwise Angela would have at least I feel like she should have mentioned it at least once um oh yeah Angela being game but only as the AI in the forgotten complex oh maybe maybe true 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 that could be a case that could be the case like it's funny, like, yeah, the Angela in Wonder Lab was more like, just was really an AI <laughs> by that point. Like, she was just, and when, when the um, bright days, dark nights, whatever it's called, um, happened, she just reset back to, no, back to like, welcome, hello, manager. Uh, welcome to your first day at Lobotomy Corp. <laughs> and then the manager in Wonder Lab just like off themselves because they just simped for hologram. <laughs> it's a fraction of her mm, maybe yeah it's more like I don't know I mentioned before that I know it's kind of weird ish they didn't have much talk about I guess to be fair Angela doesn't doesn't really care about the other branches but I still feel we could have got like a recording yeah a recording hologram ish something like that like based on how the manager was like how your manager got attached to Angela, I do feel she must have had some like automated responses. Otherwise, I don't know how um, <laughs> the manager in Wonder Lab could get so attached to the hologram that they just off themselves upon discovering that it's a hologram. <laughs> the ultimate Angela Sim, perhaps. In the end of Olympus trailer, there was a few words. May you find your sins in this place. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was also the tagline for um, Limbus was like, um, face the sin, something ego, something like that. 
This like is it was like Lobosby Corpse tagline. Hmm. Alright. But yeah. I see, but yeah, back on Wonderland was like I'm kind of curious I mean I get why, like, um what was the name? I forgot the name of the person. Helping and coping at Limbs be good, yeah. Face the sin, save the ego. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. But yeah. What was it? Tally? Tally was their name? Yeah. Like, we know that Tally is around in the city. So, I don't know. I was kind of hoping we get, like, um, the Bloom office come up come up as a guest in the library. But then, um, Tally was, like, obviously, yeah, looking for Cat. So, I don't think they were that... They were gonna they were gonna go to the library but it would have been nice to have got like the bloom office in some manner in the lib in marina because we got like the road home scaredy cat and servant of wrath so it, it would have been nice to get maybe a bit of wonder lab characters but i get why as well not if they're too busy with other stuff most of the games after the boss is really just people going through iron's belongings <laughs> To some extent, yeah. Hmm. Like, obviously, one after Lobotic Corp, there were, like, lasting effects. The light is a massive one, honestly. Like, the light changed everything, causing, well, and also the darkest days with, like, the distortions happening. I guess distortions will still happen to some extent, but maybe at least people won't distort as easily and at the very least pluto like pluto like from what we've seen so far in the credenzas like argalia and pluto were um really like pushing people to become distortions like we have needle person and then of course firsthand we know with philip so yeah Main objective is to collect and abandon the Busby Corp branch's source of power. I wonder what they want to use that that for. Hmm. I mean, I feel like this is the library, um, the ego, yeah, ego, um, the head will want some, well, at least someone in the city will want some new en en energy source because, um, yeah, someone mentioned a smoke war was a, was caused by iron because the smoke war was. L Corp's old, old singularity or something like that the smoke beast or whatever and just stole his light and now Limbus guy is going inside his house <laughs> but yeah I do feel there has to be some sort of new like energy source coming from um, coming soon eventually wasn't there there has to be some new energy source for the city otherwise Where's your energy now? Then again, there probably is like another energy corporation, but like obviously L Corp was a big provider. And Angela's house is the library in the outskirts, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, we'll see how that goes. Then there's still lots of ways for the game for the story to go. In all honesty, so it's exciting times. That's for sure. <laughs> exciting times. <clears throat> Alright, back to Noah. <laughs> Emma and I checked the security cameras placed in affiliated facilities and spoke spot anyone who cheats. We get hundreds of calls every day. Please check the person is in a dark red in a dark red co at N9281 R231. R R two three one is a side of hand to switch cards. I think my table's rigged. I think we're using marbles to weigh more in the roulette. A variety of creative and absurd calls flows flood the lines over time. I know it's the one who planned the smoke war, but being the DD character did most of the work. DD? Oh, the social detective. Personally from Limbus, I want to know more about the city and singularities. Maybe, because I I read something like how um Lobotomy Corp 2, which is gonna be like about distortions instead, will be a focus on that. Maybe. We'll see, we'll find out. Like Lobotomy Corp 2, another ma management game. I read it was going to be distortion focused. So we'll see. We'll see. What's so difficult, difficult about watching the security feed all day, you ask? Sure, you could think think that, but if you're unfamiliar with how things work here. But imagine having to check the feeds for tens and even hundreds of rooms that have 10 cams each. The workload is spread over multiple people, of course. 
but each of us has a dozen of screens, screens to stare at. It makes the eyes spin like a top. Besides, some people are sneaky enough to pull trickery off camera, and some incidents might occur during maintenance hours. But job is such a busy one. Two eyes just aren't enough. Ironic. <laughs> when you're checking one case, another comes in. When you're done checking that, more calls wait for you. So does a manpower drive me crazy, I swear. Hmm. It's like security guard, but like, I guess to be fair, like, I don't know how it is in actual casinos. Like, they must have cameras around the whole place. Like, in actual casinos. Hmm. El Corp has um, multiple branches in every wing nest, so we will definitely explore the whole city in Nimbus. Hmm. Also, the main plot will be not about ego, but ham ham pang pang. Oh, right, I mentioned that. It actually has a plot point. In Limbus, there's ego corruption when using ego with negative SP. We just went berserk, but not become distortions. Maybe this is because of the six days light from Wiener. Mm. I think it still was seven days of light as well. It's just that Roland took Angela out last minute, like last second rather, that she was still fine. Uh, but then people, it's, it's, the only issue was that people being restored from being books. Yeah, almost seven days, more like, Six days and 59 minutes and 59 seconds. <laughs> Pretty much. Six days, 59 minutes, 59 seconds. So the only issue was Angela, um, was the people being who are books, not coming back fully. Ego corruption was in Wonder Lab. It's because the ego is power that you can handle. Ah, I see. All right, sweepers. Uh, our body is composed of liquid. Liquid is a substance that fuels our bodies. While humans maintain their form with the shell they call flesh and skin, we maintain our form with the suit. Oh! Huh? So then how? I guess you can make silk out of liquid. I guess. You can make silk out of liquid. If this liquid runs out, we'd stop dead in place. Therefore, the liquid must always be filled, which is the reason we dine. Okay, so the sweepers, yeah, the sweepers do it for self-preservation. This liquid is what constitutes and moves our body, but we also use the liquid to sweep the streets and dine. The method is simple. When we embed a hook connected to the fuel tank onto the back of a human, they melt like liquid. Oh, oh that's horrifying. When we consume that liquid to refuel. Without this shell, we will deform and spill on the ground like them. The liquid is patented with the proof of the head. With the approval of the head, yeah. So the, the head pretty much lets the sweepers live. They just let they just let them <laughs> they just let them go and do their shit. You must change your body to become like us if you wish to join our family. Do not worry about side effects. Mother will give you all the assistance you need. We all could safely become a family thanks to her. But yeah, the head still considers them human. They're more like honestly, um the sweepers have the mother that makes them you think but how i don't think we know how but this the, the mother is the one who creates them yeah the pattern expired in carnival yeah yeah the silk manufacturing carnival is actually a fallen wing singularity oh yeah, yeah they mentioned they mention um in the carnival here they mention it here um they mention it how it used to be a singularity but then that's how everyone uses it um, this is that the carnival are different because they do it indiscriminately. Or rather, they do it for themselves, pretty much. They're made of orphans, so technically made of human. I mean, they used to be human, and then, but they are, and then they, their body liquid form, and then they consume liquid other people. Also interesting is that who or what mother is. I think, yeah, that's the big mystery with um, sweepers. Maybe at some point we'll find out. Maybe at some point we'll find out. Like, um... Hmm. Maybe at some point, but... We'll see. Z Corp. Z Corp. Hmm. I mean, someone did say Sweeper, but... I doubt it's a singularity. But at the same time, to make people into liquid form, is quite something to be fair so hmm that's interesting though but yeah so but then 
why would you join the sweepers? I mean, I guess to, for safety, like, as, um... As they say, like, everywhere. Um, everyone wants to join a group of sorts. Everyone wants to be part of something. So, I guess I get... And also, the sweepers are, like, this massive force. They're, like, they used to be one of the strongest forces in the library. So... I mean, in the city, sorry. Yeah, if you're a rat, yeah. Like, any life is, like, becoming this. It's nuts, but I get why in the city context. And I see, they're like, um, they're like slime people. But, like, obviously not swine, slime. Um, you don't, you don't join the sweepers. We get forced to become one? Maybe. I could see how people get forced to become sweepers. Like, okay, you're liquid now. You must now do what we do, otherwise you're gonna die. And if you that resilient as human who turned into monsters is still human. To the head that stand to the head standing, that's why the head is fine with distortions and random monsters at the carnival. Yeah, yeah. They're still human, that's the thing. That's the thing, yeah. Now what you say that the head seems to value humanity in a sense like they care about humans in a sense like even abnormalities like um if angela or Ad adam adam or angela let out let loose the abnos um honestly i could see the head leaving them be because abnormalities are also human well they come from human concepts so they're technically human so i can get why the head would not interfere with abnos like and that's also why right it makes sense why the head didn't interfere like the real reason why they interfered with l corp well the first l corp well the outskirts l corp rather was because um, of Angela rather than the Abno experiments because they were like humans be humans they do what they do <laughs> except for tax evasion don't let humans tax evade <laughs> yeah I mean <laughs> the claw does care about taxes <laughs> Like, taxes aren't inherently wrong, but like, um, <laughs> the, the taxes are like super expensive for the people in the city, so it did be like that. Yeah, the head would subdue some, but like, leave some alive because they're human. To be honest, I think they're all human, like, in a sense, so they all come from human concepts, so. I think he'd honestly let all of them live. Unless one of them was a clone. <laughs> Unless one of them... Oh! Yeah, how would... Nah, to be fair, nothing there when it transforms isn't even a perfect clone. So, would nothing... Would the head let nothing there... Um, actually, no, 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 never mind, no, no. It becomes a shell. It doesn't clone. It becomes... It takes over the appearance of someone else. And the person is effectively, effectively dead anyway. So nothing there isn't even really a clone either. Yeah, it's not a clone yet. Technically it's not a clone. Even then, the person who are, who became, who they become is dead. <laughs> so technically it's only one person. Abnormalities can't die. Yeah, they're based on concepts. The only, the only way abnormalities can die is, is if all of humanity died. Pretty much. If every human died, then abnormalities would die. But while humans are alive, abnormalities are still alive as well. And I think they're gonna let White Knight walk around. Hmm. Uh I mean the head can just see White Knight as like this relig religious fanatic, so <laughs> like He's just letting some religious fanatic walk the streets. To be honest, like, White Knight's powerful, but... Hmm. 
we could just see it as like another human thing to do. So, who knows? We have a god app though, but the head deals with them in about three days. Hmm. Yeah, the head is like, as far as we know, the strongest in the city. Like, I'm curious if the if the head also knows about the prescripts, like the actual reality with the prescripts. Like, would the head know how the index is made, as in how the prescripts are made? Who knows? Yeah, the icon see, I see. That makes sense then. Honestly, I was thinking about, I mean, we're, we're in index here, but um, I was thinking about it as well, like, um, what's it called? How Gary would destroy Hate Corp in less than a day. Oh yeah, right, so this, he destroyed another corporation earlier. The head is kind of similar to Iron, as in, mm, maybe, like, Iron, I remember, like, what was it, Iron doesn't like robots, he does like, Iron was explicitly mentioned to, like, dislike robots, but then he used robotics as a necessary, as a means to the end, like, Angela and those sort of Sephira, like, he hates robots, and, so maybe you could explain, it's somewhat like um, the will, sorry, the head not liking AI. So that could be interesting. Like, the, you could draw parallels. And also, at the same time, maybe the head has this grand, grand goal for humanity. So that like, all of this is a, ne is a necessary evil. Who knows? Who knows what the head is actually on his, with their master plan? I was saying. Um, the head, it's not a head control, it makes sense. Mm, maybe, yeah. It's really weird that some crime syndicate has this really weird connection to the world of the city. You would think they would be official of the head. Mm, true, yeah, because Index is... But Index is... I know. I think the Index view themselves less, less as a crime syndicate and more as a religious cult, rather. They follow the will of the city. Like, well, to be fair, not everyone knows it's the will of the city even then. They accept the prescripts as is and has faith that things will turn out well for them. Um, and like, um, only like Yan, well Yan, only yeah, Yan's gonna be back, yeah. Yan will be back. But yeah, Yan, Yan knows, but also the one, anyone who's been and met with um, that lady down in underground, I've got her name. But yeah, um, distorted Yan, true, but he could come back, as in, someone mentioned ways of like fixing distortions, so he might, yeah, Moira, that's it, Moira, Moi Moira, hmm, so maybe, so like, not, even like, let's see the, the proxies, they don't know the prescripts are the will of the city, based on, well, based on the interpretation from Moira and Yan. But they just have faith in the prescripts that if they follow them, things will be fine. So it's a really interesting thing, yeah. Ian is portrayed as God figure and was shown as a mastermind and despised machines well before you actually met him. Yeah, yeah. Like I think it was um during the flashbacks with um like Benjamin. Like Benjamin Like Benjamin is like really, really into robotics. Like he, or he was rather. He was into the. Um, he was really into robotics and stuff. Well, yeah, Iron wasn't at all. It definitely seems to be something the head would approve. Yeah, it's something that because it's human in the. It's like like the will of the city is essentially the will of the humans who live in the city that's the thing so 
like based by movements, random footsteps, all that stuff. It's all humans in the end. Like if there was no one living in the city, there was nothing there. If there was nothing there, there would be no will of the city. So it's technically humans as well. Maybe all Phoenix Snicket's top being is also similar with Index. Maybe the Thumb Capo, the Cappy, is also a conceptual being. Um, maybe. The, the funny thing with the Thumb that they mentioned in story was like, how they follow these rules of honor. Like, don't talk back and like, don't don't be disrespectful. We'll cut off, we'll cut off your fingers if you talk bad or if you talk shit, we'll cut off your tongue. tongue. Um, even like, Ro I think Roland and Angela talked about it afterwards and it's like, even they don't, the th the current farm do not know where these rules came from. Like, why do they follow them? They just do. Because that's how it's always been. We don't know why we do these things specifically anymore. Like, it could, like, if the, like, if the game goes into the, into the whole old world um, stuff with, like, oh yeah, let's say, for example, if the old world was, like, our world now. So, like, stuff like Mafia and stuff, that's where the, the farm like got their rules from but then no one knows their origin anymore but yeah i think i think it has to be some real life like not real life you know what i mean actual living person for the fun they don't seem like by all means for the index it makes sense to have um it be this conceptual being but for the index at least but for the other ones it doesn't necessarily have to be a conceptual being at least we've only met um, Thumb and Index anyway, so there's more to go. Uh, someone mentioned we saw they saw one of them in Leviathan, but we'll see. And like middle, like it was damaged by Roland at least back in the day when it was the, with the cartel and stuff. And then of course, like obviously there is like syndicates. Who knows? Maybe there'll be something to replace one of the fingers eventually, who knows. <clears throat> that is correct. We are conscious of the attention of people during the daytime. Wait, which order do I read it in? Which order do I read it in? This way or this way? I think left to right. Uh, that is correct. We got... I think it's this way then, yeah. That is correct. We are conscious of the attention of people during the daytime. We, pr we practice caution. It would be a public nuisance to show up in broad daylight and cause a ruckus. And we have set a set of rules we abide to. Of course, to head the monster service, we must assemble, day or night. Oh, and I believe there is a small misunderstanding between us. It's not by the will of us sweepers, but the night of the back streets has become a time when no deed is forbidden. Does it appear to you that every denizen of the backstreet disapproves of the rules? Anyone is allowed to commit terrible acts at night, and there is nowhere to complain if, to that if you are victimized. While this also means terrible things can happen to you at night, it also means you are free to be the perpetrator, or such a deed yourself. In fact, we do not see much benefit from the freedom of the night time, other than being allowed to dine, us, to dine all you want. I see, they are at least polite to like not be a nuisance during the daytime. I see. But yeah, as I think the Kurakuma clan talked about it, one of them mentioned how, or at least one of the other ones talked about how, right, the night time is like no holds barred, full on do whatever the hell you want sort of deal. So it's like, damn. All right, Valerie. The back streets are our main stage of activity at night. When night falls, our world unfolds. At regular intervals, we start marching from like the purge every night. Yeah, like that, pretty much. Like the purge. <laughs> pretty much. Super so self of a head. Yeah. To be fair, we just need to stag, stab someone and then just drain their body of fluid. Well, melt them away, rather. The sweeper is the Vin Diesel group. Yeah, they do care about family, that's the thing. They do care about each other. At regular intervals, we start marching from the, from the perimeter of a nest. Of a and sweep everything as we move forward. Even if someone stands in our way and, and attacks us, even a powerful fixer kills a sweeper next to us who was our family, we pay no heed and continue onward like a wave of water. 
we sweep everything in our way, except for those who are strong enough to resist it. From an edge of a nest to the opposite end, we march without break for 18 minutes until the night in the back streets end. Yeah, the sweepers pretty much clean the streets of bodies. Oh, right. Mm. Right, because someone was. Yeah, because they, they, there's no bodies left around much, huh? The sweepers just sweep it up. <laughs> if a night in the back streets were to be gone, the back streets will fall into even worse chaos than before. In other words, the night in the back streets is the rain that keeps this place in check. Before the night exists, people here show the least amount of. Because the night exists, people here show the least amount of the human decency. Here's an example. You come home at the end of a hellish day, dragging your weary body off to the sofa. You hope to get a break, a small break lying on the couch and watching cheap entertainment shows. But guess what happens? Some crazy jerk upstairs turns up their speakerphone's volume to the max and makes obnoxious noises that make your ceiling shake. Too bad. There goes your peaceful respite. respite. You can't stand the noise that's going to your head. So you decide to ask your neighbor to please be considerate and lower the volume. You want to talk this over without a fight. She so battled the furious urge a million times before you go upstairs. Then, our unfriendly neighbor um, gives you a baffling reply, reply when you confront them. I need some time to myself too. I have gripes with my neighbors that I just live with, so you should do the same. Why make a loud fuss about the noise when it isn't even too loud? Blah blah blah. Talk about talking out of their ass. What can you do though? Barely keeping your boiling anger inside, you go back down to your house, covering your ears with a pillow and yelling curse words as you try to sleep. Even if you told your landlord about it, they struggle with your complaint and smile like a saint. There's no use speaking up about it. That's when the night of the back streets come into play. First off, you block the entrance to the shithead's house before you return. Anything works. You could weld the door, use wooden planks, padlock the door or anything. Ensure they, ensure they can't enter their own house by any means and go back to your home. Sometime later, they'll come back to find that door to their house has been sealed shut. They'll struggle with the door before giving up, and they'll make a serious face as well they're trying to think of some of who could have done this ridiculous prank to them. Once they realize it couldn't have possibly been anyone else's but yours, it's still be too late, because you'll be behind them, bashing their head in with a brick or some heavy object, killing them right, right, killing them right now would obviously break the rules. You drag them to your house and enjoy a quiet rest. When the clock strikes 3am, you drag the little shit outside and throw it to the middle of a relatively large street. You return to your home before it's too late and watch the scene from the window. The time is 3.13. Sweepers crawl out of the dark and sweep the streets queen, clean, cutting all trash, including that noise pollutant. It really is like the purge, yeah. The night in the, the night, like, I guess like, the night of the back streets is pretty much people's way of venting pretty much like they're allowed to do anything they want technically rather not really by law but rather by design um <laughs> like yeah like the sweepers pretty much they come in like as I, I mentioned that the sweepers are like a natural hazard and they are <laughs> they they really are like a natural hazard imagine it's like every day a wave of water comes in on the streets to clean it up it's like that and right so they're able to like do anything at night more because um you can always say oh yes a sweeper killed them <laughs> yeah they, they are daily trash collectors pretty much yeah hmm they're like yeah like even like at night time with like yeah the trash what's it called again the garbage um compactors and all that stuff or like the sweep the sweeping of the streets in real life with like trash <laughs> you have like these guys to clean up bodies and everything else jeez that's why like yeah the sweepers are really scary but at the same time don't get in their way i, I don't think the sweepers um like go, go to your house pretty much they won't go to your house and invade they'll sweep their their daily routine pretty much unless they're desperate i guess or if someone fights them but yeah i see so like just don't make sure you're not out on the streets at night pretty much like avoid the streets at night if you can or like just don't get in their way pretty much 
Because like, it's like a wave. If one dies, there's a whole crowd behind them and you get swept up with, with them. Hmm. All right, index. No two prescripts are the same in any way. It's like a thunderstorm you need to hide. Mm -mm -mm. Pretty much. No two prescripts are the same in any way, as well as their contents being completely different from each other. You can't expect when and where you receive one. It could be placed between the patties of a hamburger you're holding. It could be in your mailbox. It could be handed to you by a passerby. However, if you question who delivers those prescripts or where they come from and put your curiosity into action, the proxies will come for you, so beware. Here's a few examples of the prescripts. To Remy, deliver a bacon pizza to Danny's doorstep on 8th Street before 10 a.m. sharp on September 14th. To Jimin, do not utter a single word for five days. To Sihi, Sehe, if the person you meet outside today answers your greetings by lifting their right hand, take their heart out. If the person ignores your greetings, remove your own heart from your body. Jeez. <laughs> Honestly, it also like with the prescripts, like you can work around. Like let's say, um, this one of taking your own heart. Let's say you get like two hearts in your body. You can do, you can like implant a heart in your body. Um, you have, you can um survive it by just having two hearts pretty much honestly there probably is a way to, a way to survive without your heart in honesty <laughs> but yeah these the prescripts can be pretty nuts like the bacon pizza one is fine this one is excessive but you can make do just don't say a word just don't go outside oh yeah true yeah just don't go outside <laughs> and it's only for one day the first means the first person you meet outside today, hmm, you don't say you can't come, cooperate with some human. Yeah, yeah, you can cooperate with them. Like, let's say, you know, like with Yan talking up, like the one with Yan was like, um, um, talking about like, um, yeah, Bada's well, Bada was okay for like a second because it was a contract uh, outside of a building or outside of a room. Yeah, who knows? Just don't go outside. Just don't. Just don't leave your room. <laughs> yeah, the yeah the cake with needles. Mm -mm. And um, uh, cause Yan was like, oh, you can just um, uh, you can just tell them there's needles in the cake. You can put needles in the cake, but they don't have to eat it. You can just tell them. For example. Also something concerning to bring up is that Purple Tear lost her son for 40 years but she's 12, 52. Yeah, like, we, I think we talked about this actually, yeah. I forgot that was the case, but someone mentioned, I don't, is she 52 in the art book? I don't know, maybe there's like some time travel fuckery. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Adoptives, I don't know. 52 in the art book, true case of numbers not matching up she could be lying or time travel fuckery yeah could be time trap timeline hopping messing with her age it could be that another prescript for other people to go visit you in your room that day yeah true oh yeah true but then they're not inside though they you're still you haven't met someone outside you're still inside so it's still it's fine does anybody find that only esther knows how to interpret prescripts i think esther just knows how they work but he's just not against them either and to be honest i think a lot of people do know how to work around some of them is that like like yan even him even yan knew to work around the prescripts like with the needle cake but he obviously is less is not as confident and this is only i don't think it's just esther i think all yeah all the proxies have a good sense yeah because like what was it gloria straight up murdered um the guy who was like bruh how do, what the hell do i do for this painting one where that was like um stab a painting or something like that or like kill a painting or kill a masterpiece or something and then it was like um gloria was like yeah kill your own painting and like dude was like how the fuck do i do that and then I think Gloria explained 
um, paint then kill your painting. Yeah, which was like the guy tried doing it by yeah, just kill the subject you are painting. Mm, mm, mm. Honestly, I do feel like the guy was on the right track of like kill your painting. To be fair, like but then again, the painting is never living. Yeah, I mean, to be fair that like some technicalities work some don't so it's a bit cruel in that sense like how do you kill a painting like i guess the only way is to kill a person but maybe you could also kill um uh i don't know any subject so just like anything that's alive for a bit or like a tree paint a tree and then burn down the tree and then that's fine you, you killed your painting it doesn't have to be a person either as long as you painted something. Also, when people draw Gloria as human, uh, they always have she always had pigtails. I could imagine that. There's also like, like what's it called? Gloria sounds cute, but yeah, she's in like that that robotic body. Um, and this is only scratching the surface of the symbolic orders written on the prescripts. The contents of a prescript range from ordinary tasks to things that cannot be carried out in a relatively normal, in terms of morality, means. The errant, errant variety and creativity of the prescripts make you wonder just what goes on in the head of the person who responsible for writing them. Take a moment to think about how you would feel if you received a prescript that says, chop off your right ankle and eat it medium rare. P.S. You don't have to eat your bones. <laughs> You think this is an absurd instruction no sane person could follow, but those who belong to the index will gladly will feel glad that it doesn't require chopping off both feet or eating bones. Hmm. Yeah, her voice is cute. Hmm. Yeah, I don't. There's no way around some of some of them though. Like, I can't think of a way around chop off your right ankle, eat it medium rare. Like, I guess you could use the cloning thing that Pameli and Pam, whatever they were called. What are they called again? Um, Pamela Pemeli used maybe like the cloning thing to like get, get your right ankle back, but then you're still eating yourself. So, hmm. <laughs> it's still something. Yeah, robotic ankle, we need the old one. Yeah, true. I forgot, yeah, yeah. Prosthetics exist in this world. As in, ultra good prosthetics. So that could work as well. <clears throat> All right, warp team. Uh, so one sec, let me change up the BGM uh, now. All right, Malkov's one now. Most people who join syndicates are poor. Don't think they can afford insurance, yeah. Yeah, so like clone insurance, probably not. Uh, many people are under the impression that W Corp Singularity is quick transportation via teleportation. That's how our technology advertises the public anyway. They aren't strictly wrong, we're just hiding the big, bigger picture. W Corp Singularity is the restoration of the previous status. To put it in layman's terms, even if your body is crushed to a pulp, it can be recorded, restored to a recorded state as long as all pieces remain. Oh, interesting. So, hmm. I mean, so can Tomori. I mean, would Tomori be able to be restored then? Or like the puppets? Because as long as they have all the pieces, they can be restored, can't they? Won't they? Mm, maybe there's not enough. Maybe maybe they don't have enough pieces left. Like as long as like I assume. Well, let's read. We scanned the molecular structures, genomic data, and other information of the passengers required for their restoration when they sit on their seats. Yeah, yeah. And they feel like helping. True, true. I think by this point, W Corp has much bigger issues on their hands. <laughs> they have much bigger issues. Of the whole singularity being, um, everyone. I see. Yeah, wouldn't wouldn't like lots of people know about it. save game state. Yeah, as long as you make a save and have all the pieces, then you can be restored. Yeah, as long as the game doesn't get corrupted. Hmm. All right. Oh, 
Is that why? Oh, is that why they have seat belts in train? Because otherwise, they want to ensure that people、um, do sit in their chairs. Oh, they miss the first class passengers. True. I don't think the first class passengers.、Um, Do get scanned though. That's the thing. Yeah, I don't think they get scanned unless they unless they have like a safety measure where they scan the first class in the worst case scenario of like the people invading first class somehow. The scan data is stored in a transmission device inside the train, ready to be sent to a transport restoration machine. With that, any and all kinds of pandemonium into which the carriages may have turned can be reverted with a single button. And where the corp? Ah,、uh, wait. This cute glory art.、Oh, I see. Um, let's see. The machine has turned. Uh, difficulty has difficulties with scanning life forms that move too much. Oh, okay, okay, right. No wonder. Yeah, yeah. That's why we have seat belts. That's why we have seat belts. <laughs> That's why there's seat belts in the train. As if all singularities has small side effects, some might leave this train with more weight than before or gain a bit of height. No one has bothered to complain about it, likely because the change is so minor. We just shrug it off as a matter of feeling. The body feeling lighter because of their excitement for going on a trip. Or feeling heavier because they have too much prior, they ate too much prior to board the train. Interesting, interesting. Oh, wait, it's more. <laughs> the passengers don't remember what happened inside the train, but that's not because we use、um, amnestics. It's the restoration procedure, reverting the memories to a prior, previous state, rather than selectively erasing them. In plain language, everything goes back to how it was when it was scanned. The passengers will continue conversations they were having when they first boarded, as if nothing happened. They won't notice any oddity or displacement in the dialogue. Any thoughts they had or words they were about to speak will be restored and resumed seamlessly. Damn. <laughs> right. No wonder you don't feel it. Yeah. System restore, or like,、mm, pretty much save state. System restore and save states, pretty much. It's really not so. I think W Corp is sort of a backup plan for First Class because even R Corp doesn't know why W Corp goes to the library. Only speculates First Class gone missing. There is no uproar. I mean, I think there would be up. No, no. I mean, W Corp goes to the library because,、um, isn't it because? Didn't they mention it? Because the First Class passengers were taken. That's why. Um, these guys went to the library, but then, of course, because they went to the library, um, uh, yeah, that means also people went to the library because of W Corp secrets. So they went because these guys went to the library because of First Class, wasn't it? Because First Class went missing, and to be honest, because a bunch of other passengers went because Tomari and stuff went missing as well. So. Because they they had they couldn't they didn't want to have any uproar happen about the warp train being like fucked up, so we had to return. They had to like retrieve the books. You thought opening gates to different dimensions was our singularity, but actually a former singularity, a former wing used to own. It wasn't a very well yeah first class gone missing.、Mm. It wasn't a very well known wing, so you probably won't recognize it even if I told you its name. Point is, the Wayne discovered a way to open gates between dimensions. Oh, this is probably, um, is it? It's probably related to Purple Tower, isn't it? This old, the old Wayne, is probably related to Purple Tower. Probably, the ability to create rifts in space. The Wayne sadly never knew how to utilize that stunning technology they'd found. The nest ended up failing, falling before it could find a proper use for the singularity. And the company now known as W Corp spent a huge amount of money to purchase it. At first, people at the corp also struggled to think of a good way to use this tech. If you could make a big rip in space, entering was a different matter. You don't know what's in there, or if you can come, even come back. We had no idea, but soon enough, W Corp found a way to put this dimensional gate to use, which involves T Corp synergy, a device made by T Corp that collects time installed in the train. Not a single second really passes in the carriages, even if the time travels for thousands of years. It's the、uh, temporal preservation or whatever. 
That's what they apparently use, but it's too complicated for me. Anyway, whatever happens in the train, we revert using our Singularity of Restoration and T Corp. And T Corp takes the time we collect for their own Singularity. We're good business partners. I see. So T Corp runs on time, in a sense. This isn't. This tech isn't used for long distance travel. It's applied to the weapon. Isn't just used for long distance travel. It applies to the weapons we use. Equipment used by agents of W Corp is specialized in tearing and cutting things apart. We can precisely cleave lumps into individual pieces with the help of the space ripping technology. Honestly, like even then, you could they could have become a weapon, um, um, a weapon based um, group with the whole sp space ripping. Yeah, save states and space ripping, space tearing. Lesty. To restore the train, the passengers have to be in their seats. You have to be seated so the scanning program can detect your genomic data and put you back on the right seat. Oh, and the scanner has trouble reading things that move too much, so you should be nice and stay still in your seat. So the warp cleaning, warp cleaning up crew, like us, tidy up the carriages and put the passengers in their seats, according to genomic data. And with a press of a button, ta-da! Everything goes back to normal as if nothing happened. I only learned this after I joined the corp. But isn't that so cool? That's what we agents do. But sometimes, the cleanup crew isn't enough for the job. What's so scary about dealing with humans, you ask? I heard this story from my seniors. One time, a colour hid their identity and stuck, snuck onto the train. What a shocker that must have been! Is this Roland? Wait, is this, is this when Roland was talking about? Is this when Roland took the train? Well, let's read. Yeah, because he hid his identity. He hid ident identity. That's obviously... Wait, it wasn't a color. Oh, okay. True. It's our rule to stop powerful people for like colors or key members of the association from boarding our warp trains. Or to guide them to take first class. Angelica was the color. Yeah. Or to guide them to take first class seats if they must board the train for a safe, soon safe reservation for us. We wanted to sleep with our carrier instead of joining in the chaos of other carriages. The colour fixer was super tricky to deal with, they told me. Most patches started training under colour's guidance to, in order to gain some kind of enlightenment. Okay, that might not be Roland then. It doesn't seem like a, a Roland thing to do. No, but a few of our agents were pulverised by those people before they could even see a glimpse of the colour. <laughs> they trained them too strong. Warren was a color, but people confused him with Black Silence, if I remember that. Yeah, because of the mask. So, maybe it could be Purple Tear, because she could be going there for funsies, because training on the color for that amount of time, yeah. It could be Purple Tear. She, she, she seems a type to train people. Like, or it could be Roland wearing the mask, the Black Silence mask. Well, not Black Silence mask, but the mask that obscures his identity. Because, like, that's one way to sneak onto a train. But then, of course, it means that they know that he's thing. The Black Simon is main... Yeah, the PT can just teleport, yeah. I mean, she could just be going to fuck around. But, who knows. I know, because of, like... I know, it just it just made me think because... Obviously... I mean, Enlightenment, true. That could do with the whole Vermilion Cross. But, I mean, my guy got involved twice in incidents. <laughs> There's so many colours, yeah. It's just that... It's because Roland mentioning mentioned taking the warp train, and then obviously Lesty's page talks about a color joining the train. You can't help but think it, think about it. Like it could have been post, it could have been post Angelica, for all we know. Like that Roland took a warp train. Like he was like, "Fuck this! I'm not gonna walk around the city. Let's take a warp train to get there faster." For example. We aren't totally powerless against those situations. We could have gotten into so many. They probably want fixer level ones, like Ron to also take fast class. True, true. Like anyone part of the association, key members of associations or colors, yeah. Like we know, like free personally, one just some zombie. But it's not all. Oh, yeah, of yeah. There's of course there's more. There's more of course. Hmm. It's just that when when a game you know leaves like vague stuff. You like to think it's based on someone we know because of, uh, you know, to keep things cohesive. But we aren't totally powerless. 
Whoever this poor smuck got brown as a color must be down bad in the mud. Depends. You, brown could be a decent color. Like, I don't know. I don't know, like brown. I don't know, anything. <laughs> I don't know, anything. Depends what the color brown person is using. Like, what's their weapon? What's their, like, speciality? Like, Black Silence was obviously working assassin like. Or something or similar. Terror was obviously tearing through space. Reverb was because of the whole sounds and stuff. Red mist was because of the red mist that forms when she fights. Or the bodies when she when she defeats them, they turn into mist. Purple is known to train people and she can take out anywhere. So yeah, I, I, I like I like to think it's her. Hmm. Or didn't want to walk, yeah. It could be anyone who just didn't want to walk, like. Hmm. Like, you can imagine Roland being the type not to walk. Brown Swordsman. This sounds alright. This sounds alright. We aren't going to uh, Tony Paris. We could have gotten into so many problems. We, we would have gone into so many problems otherwise. In case things get too difficult for our agents to handle, we call R Corp. Okay, cool. R Corp is also, yeah, a wing we're partnered with. I saw footage about R Corp in our training course. They were so cool. That was my first time seeing the mercenaries in action. They keep pressing on and wipe their targets, no matter how harsh their resistance was. I was like, whoa, they really are something else. The fourth pack, was it called the rabbit team? Yeah, I think it was. I gotta wonder though, why rabbits of all animals? Isn't it back a herbivore? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> also, I really like, I really like Lesty. Like, honestly, like, I could probably make a list of like, ones that I find cute, like characters I find cute at least. <laughs> huh. They ain't going to raise the ticket prices or run fewer trains like last time, are they? What do you mean, Cap? I think the fourth pack members from the ravens or herbivores. Maybe. Rabbits, rhinos, rangers. Oh yeah, true. Rhinos are herbivores. And rangers are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're all herbivores, yeah. Except for, yeah, crows. I don't know if ravens are herbivores, but yeah, hmm. Hey, ravens are omnivores. I see, I see. I see, I see. Lobotomy Corp, the company that was supplying our energy, G energy needs went down recently. That's a good point. It's harder to operate trains with less energy. What do you mean by last time though? Oh, you're not new to it? Back in the day, our corpse nest Oh Okay, cool. This is this in this is alright, so this links it I see. Yeah, our corp was also another energy Alright, so smoke I see. Okay, cool. That's some nice text. I'm all about ravens and he's really good. Hmm. Ravens eat carcasses, but they're omnivores. Hmm. I guess omnivores then, yeah. So the company put putted out and Put our corporation into some sort of energy sources we're dealing with now. Not quite. It did go bust eventually, but it's more that the company was stingy about sharing its energy. Um, awfully strict too. I heard it had a bad reputation among its partner companies because they were so tight arsed about energy supply. We had to reduce the number of trains running for a while. I had no idea. Okay, cool. So, right. So, Lobotomy Corp. Yeah, the old L Corp. Yeah. So, the current. Well, our lobotomy corp was a, mo a lot more nicer with the energy supply. Hmm, I see. Yeah, the previous one used to be stingy. Yeah, yeah. Just so, so even back then they had to be running the trains not as often. Don't count on I had no idea. Don't count on me though. I also picked this story up from my superior. There's enough chittering. Let's get back to work. Alright, cool. Alright, cool, cool. Alright, so that does, like, yeah, it tells us that the last one was, a. Uh, hmm. Ayn was big into cooperation with other wings, yeah. I guess Ayn did, did know about his way to, like, make it, make it so Lobotomy Corp was big, was to obviously cooperate with others. He can't just, like, have it be isolated as itself. Like, obviously from the knowledge from Bina, so he knows how wings work best, which is to, like, work with other wings as you both as you improve each other or like supply something or give something that they would want pretty much it's 
smiling faces, wang. They call the back streets unsafe because there's this one time of day when night, when darkness comes out, and your friendly neighborhood watch can't do jack shit. <laughs> Jack's about it. <laughs> the night in the back streets when the shut when the city shuts its eyes. Breaking any rules are forgiven during that time. Means to protect yourself from harm like recording videos or hiring peacekeepers all rendered useless and was rusty old fellas sweep every corner of the streets. No evidence is left behind. No corpses, weapons, nothing. Not only did they the old security measures stop, peeking at folk as whole is banned during these hours. Huh? Oh, I said no security. Right. We're not allowed to like watch in. I was good at networking. Hmm, pretty much. <laughs> well, stumbling on the corner scene of a crime ain't bad. What it really means is you ain't supposed to record videos of the scene or sh spy with security cameras. No one should be strolling the streets that late in the first place. Because <laughs> of that, they don't ask a darn thing about crimes happening during that time unless an eyewitness shows up. You just can't if I'm being blunt. The public institutions, you know the deal. Those shocking shocks at the head, at the head fixer associations, vigilant peeps and the like. Um, if one of those officials tried to dig, take a dig at something that happened during the night, of the in the back street, some scary fellas called the claws go after them. Oh, I see. So right, so the head doesn't exactly like. If anything does happen in the night of Backstreet, that is really, really bad to the point where the head gets involved. They will send claws. It's not exactly a full free reign, but just don't do um, <laughs> bad. Uh, ho ho ho. Ho ho ho. Ho ho ho. It sounds like French. Yeah, it's like French. But then they're speaking like, I don't know, old fella. Like, it, it reminds me of like uh, English in a set. Like, no, they send close of people investigating crime. Oh, I see. Never mind. I misread. The public institutions, you know the deal. Resident peeps and the like. If one of those officials tried to take dig that. Oh, I see. Right, you're not, you're not allowed to investigate anything during the night. I see, I see, I see. I hear the night in the back street is considered what's it time for doing. What should I call it? Permitted by the head. Oh, just doing anything. Okay, cool. Or whatever. The head. Or sometimes the head. Right. The head might also. Um, want people to do stuff during the night in the back streets so stuff that's under wraps so you're not allowed to investigate anything I've got no dang clue why they said a time like this when every soul ears already frightened to the bone no matter what folks say when I in the back street starts out 3.13 and ends at 4.34 never too late but never too late or never too early or too late by a single second every time Australian, Australian, that's it, that's it. Like, I mate. <laughs> the back streets aren't some unli unlivable mess like some folk are saying, you see? Rough things do happen often around here, sure. But there's some sort of there's, uh, there's some sort some effort at peacekeeping going on to stop a whole lot of people dying over harking time. Every area of the streets has some kind of some kind of neighborhood to watch made other local residents voluntarily doing jobs like fixers do trying to make the back streets a safer place unlike the so-called public safety association that starts with z whatever that stuffy august called british <laughs> maybe it's a bit of both it's not a knife this is a knife <laughs> the neighborhood watch ain't chained to any official authority nor they ask for huge fees this area's got different styles of neighbors, so not everyone in every corner of the town likes them. Most folks do appreciate they're keeping them safe though. Alright, so at least like, yeah, it's like the back streets are bad, but they're not like unlivable hells. Like, like people do try, do still try to live there as best they could. Like, obviously we have like food and stuff, which is well, not the best ideal is human meat, but people do try to make a do try to like live there as normal as possible. There's there's this one rule that stands squarely in this nigh lawless land: doing any kind of harm to the residential area is forbidden. 
No invading people's homes, no demolishing them and all that. Not even the big and tough crooks of the thick fingers can touch this. I guess the scientists gotta stay and most. Stay the most, what you call it? What's it, place? If you didn't know, I see these taboos are a huge deal. Much more serious than taboos of the nest. You break it and your life's over right then and then. Okay, so you can't, you're not allowed to invade homes. Um, like the thing with the Kurokumo clan attacking someone in the house was because they were allowed inside the house first. Every corp has their own special agents, like N Corp has taboo hunters. Oh, I see. Alright, so. Alright, so. There are. Like, as long as you stay inside, you're safe, pretty much. Like, most people. Oh! Oh! Oh, right! No wonder, right? Um. Right, because, um. This sweeper thing talks about. Yeah, right, because th th this is. That's why, right? So, right, because, um. That, right, no wonder. I was confused, like, why would you um, close, like, lock someone's, like, block off someone's door and then kill them? Why not just kill them inside their house or something? Oh, they were dragged out before they ha actually harmed them. Okay, interesting. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Taboos on the nest were created by the wing. Ah, I see. Taboos of the city over the head, taboos of the nest. Alright, so like, yeah, the wing manages the nest specific rules. But then the city is obviously has much wider rules. I see. Right, because I was confused. Like, I was thinking, why would they like kill them outside the house? But right, because of the taboo in the city. Alright, so as long as you're safe, you stay inside, you're safe pretty much. But then, of course, there's ways around it. Like, no, 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 no demolishing, but... If you're forced outside your house. I see, I see. Hmm. That's, that's interesting. It's kind of like... Um, you know how, like, vampires are in Legend? Like, you have, they, you, you, they have, to, you, you have to invite vampires to come into your house. They can't um, come in your house without permission. It's like that. <laughs> it's like the whole vampire thing where they have to be invited to come into your house. Mm, you can't cross a threshold, pretty much. I don't know, it's kind of interesting, like, the city does have its own arbitrary rule set. This does keep people safe, but like, even then the city is hell to live in, obviously. The city and its rules and its conditions are hell. But, but like, there is like, these weird rule sets that keeps it from becoming utter anarchy it makes sense if you didn't have this taboo no one would survive a day yeah you'd have sweepers coming in being like nope feeding time <laughs> the city's a big sardine can with the fact there are 6.7 billion who live in it yeah but didn't someone say someone said that the city was still kind of massive as well like it was it's like what the size of the european continent or something or like bigger than that so it's tight but not oh it's still tight yeah <laughs> even then if you fit 6.7 billion just in europe it would be uh in the landmass of europe it would be still a lot <laughs> east district the size of a european country all oh, right there's 25 districts oh uh, i see Oh, we saw a map. We don't know how big the city is, but there's a map. I see. The rules in the back streets don't work in the nest, and the opposite's also true. You could drag a higher up working for whatchamacallit from nest to back streets and do what's it to them and get away with it. As long as it was during night in the back streets and no sneaky rats saw you doing it. But if you did the same what's it in the nest, you'd be breaking rules. Nights in the back street is only a na is only a it's only a thing in the back streets, like the name suggests. I see. There varies a lot. We're talking about size of France or Portugal. Yeah, it's, it's like... Yeah, it varies, I guess. It's why Warp Corp is popular in the first place. Oh, right, right, because it's... Right, even if you... Yeah, right, true. To get to get people... To get, uh, to get to places fast. True, 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 true. The city's like the size of New York. That's... No, that's like really small. <laughs> like, we're here saying... 
the districts the districts are like country size but then if the city is the size of new york that would be small like really small <laughs> even if it's even if it's the states yeah even if it's not like new york city but if it's just new york that would still be really small for 6.7 billion <laughs> but yeah we have like I see, yeah I think I guess that's why they got lost in the woods right yeah yeah hmm they got lost in the woods or something like that it's based off the map oh the map oh I see I guess the map makes it look smaller than it actually is but then again it's like actual maps in real life things seem a lot smaller if you don't look for things for scale oh I see to roughly measure it I see I see I see I guess if you take New York Okay, yeah, I guess the, the map isn't to scale. The map isn't to scale. <laughs> the map isn't to scale, I guess. Two to three British islands, maybe. That's still small, in all honesty. The British Isles are, in all honesty, not that big. <laughs> They're still pretty small, in all honesty. <laughs> like, scale-wise, the British Isles are small. <laughs> even, if you, even if you include... Um, Republic of Ireland that's not British but like I mean the Isles themselves then y yeah but it's still never in British yeah nah British Isles are small <laughs> they're not that big compared to other places but yeah I guess that's also why even like people would want to go to the nest like I mean to be fair like the nest would have a bit of a, a bit higher living conditions but at the same time if you're in a nest you don't have to worry about night in the back streets either like, that's a big like um something to worry about pretty much <laughs> all right let's change up the bgm I just see that the city is just um, every country on the earth shaped into a bowl. Mm. You can honestly say that with that little space and how many people are packed inside, you could say that all death is necessary. True, but then the issue is birth rate. We, we've discussed this last stream, but like, the thing is, um, birth rate is also still um, something as well. Like, why do people get born in this world? if things are so shit and like um even with the amount of deaths that happen there has to be a lot of a lot of birth to um offset it i guess maybe people people in the nests give birth a lot and that adds to the population because of instincts true but like even then like um i guess to be fair like people in the nest could get evicted into the back streets with all their children so that kind of pans out to some extent <clears throat> all right crying children okay so all right so sorry to get, I get how you feel okay this seems to be um this seems to be um is it gonna be the, the conversation he has with yuna the co the proposal we'll see the population in the city casually goes from 6.7 being 6.4 million in the blink of an eye yeah it's really interesting philip's backstory looking forward to this sorry i get how you feel but i'll need more time to think about this um are you feeling down no no i'm fine i get it this is rather sudden and you need some time to collect your thoughts thanks for understanding you know you're a very caring person i guess grams picked the right rookie to hire is that so thank you i couldn't say anything beyond that i tried to think positive positively about it convincing myself that i wouldn't want to see sonbei Feel troubled because of me in the future. Oh, uh, one sec. Um, 
clinging onto it further would only make me seem pathetic. Although Sean Bay didn't decline my confession outright, it felt safer to think of it as refusal so I wouldn't get my head in the clouds and make another attempt at it. I shouldn't have held any expectations in the first place. I thought I'd feel like a load had take, been taken off my chest after I confessed my pent up feelings to her, but I couldn't even bring myself to look Sean, Sean Bay in the eyes. I didn't see it. Why not to show, uh... I mean... They probably won't, there's no need to mention that sort of stuff, I guess, like... That sort of thing. Like, they say any, like, as they, as they mentioned, anything could go on in the back streets. But yeah, <laughs> let's not, let's not talk about that so casually. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> I found myself looking for excuses. It's not because I'm a coward. It's not because I was afraid that I might be faced with darkness I couldn't possibly handle if I left my head. No. I just looked at the shade so I could see a bright, brighter light, that's all. One sec. Uh, yeah, but the, that thought made me feel a bit easier. I don't know what expression Sonbei wore at the time. Was she grinning at my nonsense or was she upset? All I can think is that she um, was properly giving me a look of disgust. Oh yeah, don't worry, but now that you know, at least. <laughs> yeah, probably not something to bring up so casually. Uh, you gave a fine speech, but I must wonder if you're truly upset for the sake of Salvador and your other late colleagues. I'll go prepare myself. I closed my door on the way out. I didn't want to hear any more of it. Because, wait, was it because I didn't want to hear any more of it? Did I lack the energy to refute him? I had no time to reflect on the reason I left my seat. The one thing I couldn't stand was him putting the blame on me, but leave my master- Yeah, Oscar, yeah. Leave my master and Sean Bay behind that place they call the library when I escaped so that I could bring others to save them. A wise person once said that you must close your eyes when so- Ah. Close your eye- close your ears. When someone utters useless words or speaks with harmful intention. Is the useful uselessness of a talk determined by solely by one's own standards? Yeah, survival guilt. Hmm. Maybe Oscar was right, but are his words useless and wrong because they distressed me? I really didn't want to accept it, consoling myself that I need some time to focus only on the grief of losing my master and zombie. I covered my ears. Oh, this is um. Oh, I see. This is seen. This is like not looking at you know, is um see no evil. He didn't see how um how how you know was looking at him. Um, Oscar did um question. Yeah, the monkey thing. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. This is, um, right. Oscar, like, telling him, are you truly upset? I think it's more like a thing just to test him, or, like, to get him to properly think about himself. You're pausing it just at the right moment, like it's, like it's a rerun you've watched over and over. There's got to be a reason. Shut up. Shut the hell up. Sometimes the human brain has difficulty telling reality from illusion. If, okay, so I guess to some extent he was aware it was probably fake, but... Watching a horror film incites fear, even though you know it's fiction. However, it's not always easy to discern the truth. We're standing right before my eyes reproaching me, but I can't dismiss them as mere illusions. Even though they're... dead. Gone. There was no way they could be real. It, didn't, it doesn't make sense that I know what they're about to say otherwise. It couldn't be something they told me beforehand. When Sombe was about to speak, I shut her up, as though I knew what was going to unfold. Unfold. What could I gain from uttering what will harm me? self justification Those words would have wounded me for sure, but they were also words that would protect me. Yet again, I'm running away from the truth, vilifying others. It made me feel a bit better. Vanny was right. All I had to do was, all I had to do was make up reasons that are convenient for me. It's not my fault at all. They're the bad ones. It's derisive how shallow my admiration for my master and Sombe was. Did you might pass my attitude towards them so easily out of selfish self-preservation? He misunderstood Oscar. He didn't realize she was just giving him a lesson. Like Oscar even put a teleportation device to save him. Pretty much, yeah. 
Nothing is more beautiful than knowing the truth, and therefore, nothing must be more shameful than admitting that one believed in was a lie. I could have sworn I acknowledged my vice and embraced it. Although the process was a little unstable, I still felt ashamed for the truthless deeds I had done, and decided to cherish that negative part of myself, or so I thought. I stopped talking. I could even tell it was appropriate to speak anymore. Turn a blind eye to all that tries to hurt, hurt me. Turn a deaf ear to words that will lead me down the wrong path. Turn a mute mouth to unnecessary evil. And last of all, act not. Make myself happy that way. I could no longer perceive anything. Damn. Yeah, it's like... In order for Philip to like deal with the world, he just closed himself out. So like, by the time we meet distorted, well, ensemble Philip, like he's like cut off himself from everything like his memories and like all that stuff it's tragic like like he chose to like deal with his deal with it by not by not like improving upon his vices but rather just blocking it all out blocking all things about it which is tragic <laughs> like honestly like from the from the way it is written it does seem like Philip is like self-reflecting like at least we have like i don't know i want to believe we have two-thirds of philip still with us that he's gonna come back two-thirds maybe he won't come back like what was the one like Ro about a bit like roland hiding behind his masks it's just that roland has angelica mm. he's trying to cope pretty much by like blocking everything out but like that's obviously not the way you should do things obviously like by all means to some stuff that's harmful but it's just that he's like like turn a blind eye to all who tries to hurt you uh whereas that lead you down to down the wrong path and mute mouth to unnecessary evil like not everything was bad towards him but he's just effectively blocking everything out but it's like what was it wasn't there um yeah so i want to believe that what was the one that was um was it speak no evil that ran away or something at least was it speak no evil that ran away when um we defeated crying children the first time most well, yeah first time or well, second time technically so i wonder how philip would be like he still have like he could maybe improve on the speak no evil or maybe he'll improve a lot better upon um blind eye and deaf ears like he'd probably be open to um like he might like because he had those two aspects still with him he could still be you know um he might eventually be able to like see people in the eye and also listen to um, other people but maybe he won't be able to speak out against people if he were to come back i'd like to believe that though well, i want to believe that philip will come back at some point <laughs> like um okay back to limbus for a second but um there's always a possibility they'll introduce new characters as well like not often because the system seems to be focused on the 12 like with the identity and egos but it would be nice like i don't know maybe philip could become playable at some point like they'll release philip as a character as he joins as he joins up with them maybe then again he's he's locked onto his own ego so who knows it would be nice to have philip in some way again he's a baby in the book we have true but i mean I mean, that, by all means, he's, if he's a baby, then that means he can grow again. Like, obviously, he won't come back as the baby. Maybe, like, he'll come back as um, somewhat like this, like half the half ego, Philip. I neglected Angela and running away from his mistakes. Mm. But yeah, I would like to have Philip come back at some point. We'll see. It's like, it's a shame if we just killed him off. At the very end like just killed him it's, it's tragic but i don't know i want to believe that we, he's gonna he's gonna be able to redeem himself at some point especially because salvador and yuna are alive so i want to believe that philip would be alive again <laughs> honestly it's like a strange thought like what like if he was if he came back as a child like 
think that'd be weird. And, and then like Salvador and Yuna raise him up again. Tomri came back as Tomri, so maybe he could be baby when he's released. Maybe. Like he came he was distorted, so he was distorted already when he fought the library. I mean, yeah. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe there's a way to revert him back, but we shall see. Because Tomri that with Tomri, then Tomri is not a distortion. Like Tomri is literally two people sewn together. <laughs> Tomri isn't isn't a distortion. Tomri is just two people um, sewn together. <laughs> so they're physically like that. It could be fixed if one of the children was able to become a full adult. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. One of them was able to. Yeah, was able to become a full adult with the river reverb. They could at least. You know, the two of the other ones could heal. Hmm. So, yeah. So maybe they could come back. You think he's dead? True. That's possible as well. But yeah, with with the light, who knows what's happening? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I want to believe he's back. He'll come back. At least, or at the very least, maybe we'll get a crying children identity or ego. Who knows? But yeah, Tomori, I don't know. Maybe they can be fixed with city technology. I don't know. I don't know with Leviathan in the sense that are they are they sane now or are they just are they still um, mentally fucked? Um in Leviathan. I don't know. But let's hope that when Ian or Carmen releases him from the light, they fix his appearance. Hmm. Or at least someone does when he comes back. The other two children could become their own characters. Oh true, yeah. They could be they could become their own characters, maybe. Potentially as well. Like Philip is split into two people. <laughs> um see no evil and hear no evil. That could be interesting, yeah. I want I want to see that. I want to see that. Well, wherever. I, I want to see Philip again, pretty much. Like, as I want to say, joke about Philip. He's, like, he's one, he's a character, he's one of the characters I really appreciate a lot in um, this game. Especially because we got to have a lot of build up with Philip. Like, Dawn Office, Wedge Office, um, Crying Children, then the two ensemble fights. We got a lot of time to build up with Philip. So. It'd be nice to have more Philip in the future. Especially because he's so built up as a character. Like, there weren't that many There weren't there weren't that many <laughs> see Greta. Jeez. <laughs> well, we're talking about build up, but like And like we have um build up with characters like Xiao, for example, like Lowell, like L Lu One, Lowell, and then Xiao's encounters. Um I, Yan also got some really good build up as well. Like, obviously, we all up to distorted, all the way up to distorted Yan. That was, um, it's really good build up, that's for sure. The deaf, oh, yeah, it's true. They have their own personalities, yeah. The blind one is quiet and polite, but like, more because they can't see shit. And then, um, yeah, the deaf one is an art because it, it thinks people are talking shit to it every time. So it's like, what the hell do you say? <laughs> The one that was um speak no evil was just silent. Yeah. That was the one that ran away though, at least. True. I guess it's like yeah, hear no evil is the, the is like Philip's more um wild side, let's say. Alright, Dante's page. I think because we got information from Oink about Seven Association, there's not much info. <laughs> Seven Association deals with info and investigations. We collect all kinds of information on this city. Though, why aren't we disclosing the full details about certain cases to the general public through news outlets or, any or anything you ask? Some things are better left unknown. For the sake of the safety of the world. Section 3 feels so empty these days. Oh, didn't you hear the news? Many of them died in that incident with the distortion last time. Even the guy we counted on resigned and ran off. Oh, oink. Yeah. Okay, so this is oink. And um, Dante from Hit Game Limbus Company. Ha. Okay, this was oink. Right. The, and a lot of them died from... Um, from the pianist. Right. 
When that happened, I guess that's why the NTC right that happened. I guess that's why NTC felt even more noticeable. He seemed pretty refreshed and relaxed on his last day. I wonder why he quit though. Sure, the work here can be tough, but isn't it still easy compared to some others? Gotta agree with that. Beats having to worry about getting axed over time. Rumors say he went to join the musicians of Bremen. Why would he join that weird funky band? You tell me. Maybe there was something more important than having, making a fortune and spending the rest of his life in comfort for him. Hmm. I guess, yeah, we got all the information about Seven um, from Oink's page. So, there wasn't much for besides having a bit more perspective on them. I see. Interesting. It is interesting that Oink did have... Um, I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't think he's cut out to be a Bremen musician but like <laughs> he's following his passion at least so I can't fault him there but yeah it is interesting that Oink's page I mean I guess I don't know I don't think I don't know if they had plans to have Seven Association being in this game at that point when we fought Bremen maybe I don't know but like um, it is interesting that Oink's page does like go hark all the way back to seven like it, like that means his thoughts a lot of his thoughts are about seven as well in a sense all right kim we value the art of violence more than anything here those with an unscathed body are not prepared to join to join us a swordsman who does not have a single blade scar on his skin is doubtlessly too careful when he wields his weapon and his inane hesitation will be an obstacle. Oh right, because didn't Kim have like Kim has a page where you're you're meant to be hit. You have to lose a clash, pretty much. You're you're meant to lose a clash to get the other page, wasn't it? So I see self harm with well not self harm but more like letting yourself get attacked. Too irre irresolute to endure the wounds of his own blade would leave let alone the assault of others. A body free of scars is proof of cowardice. Alas, it would be wise not to expose your wounds outside of those on your face. Also, are you use this card that has a 30-40 counter dice? Yeah, you have to lose... I, I've, I never used it before. Um, but yeah, I know... Um, yeah, I know which one you know. Yeah, yeah. It's the one for Kim. I think Kim was on this floor. Yeah. Uh, yield my flesh. Yeah, so you're, you intentionally get injured and then to claim their bones is like a big um, counter dice, isn't it? Yeah, I don't, I'm not a big fan of losing a clash intentionally. <laughs> a 5 cost pace with a slash counter, 40 to 23. Exhaust on use, inflict 5 paralysis and bleed. Can it hold 2 at once? Yeah, it's interesting, but you take damage on this first turn which is not ideal and then obviously you fo you need to attack otherwise let's say you're using um yeah if you do not connect you take five um stagger damage not a fan but you like tiff zodia i mean tiff zodia is like um you know you get the power for the rest of the fight um intent i don't like intentionally losing like as in terms of like, I take too much damage, like, I build a whole floor around, the whole floor for Tiff Zodia is around, is fully around, is based fully around fighting, I mean, using, um, uh, Tiff Zodia. So yeah, Tiff is fun, like, the issue is that I don't want, I don't want to build a floor based on Kim, that's the thing. <laughs> I don't want to build a floor around Kim pretty much for mountain of corpses you need to lose emotion level yeah like mountain of corpses is also kind of um hard to pull off like gibura does a lot of a lot on her on her own but like mountain of corpses is hard to um properly get like i got it once for i didn't pick it but it came up during um in distorted yan I know, I know it's not good for Disorted Yan, so I didn't pick it. But like, I had to be on the ropes to even use Mountain. 
Well, like Tiff, I could build a whole deck around, but for Kim, I don't want to build a whole deck around that. Um, you whole floor around Kim, but why not build something else and have Kim support for fun? True, but I don't know. I, I don't want. I, I think I'm the type for this. Um, for Rowena, uh, personally, um, it feels like you shouldn't be constantly on the brink of death because the game is a lot about so the game. Um, it feels like the game is a lot more surround. Like the, the general gameplay is like based around survival. Like, especially when you have something like um, multiple waves. Like, let's say Fum, for example. You have like three waves of enemies. You don't want to be like unless you're Gabura. You don't want to be like on the brink of death by the end of by the end of wave one because you, because you're using Kim for example like Kim has a big draw but you need some healing I feel personally you need some way to recover health otherwise you're gonna be on death store pretty much hey there welcome to the stream we're just chatting about the game and stuff we're just going through uh, these uh, lore stuff books <laughs> like for Kim you need one lose yeah true I think it's more like when you're, but when you're basing your deck around losing, um, losing. I think it's just not my, it's, the, it's just not my playstyle, pretty much. It's just not my playstyle. Yeah, Kim and Hannah to, um, his resistances. How is Great Garden? I really liked it. It was a fun RPG game, RPG maker game. I really liked it. So, it was a, it was a cute game. Not as dark as Wada and Mageko, but it was really nice. I've only lost with Yield one time in Clash uh, against 1528. Mm. All for Hannah, yeah. Oh yeah, that one, yeah. All for Hannah. That does change resistances. True. I think also, yeah, because Kim is like a really... Like, not late game, mid game page. So I don't want to... I don't feel like using uh, it. Like, it's like 8140 versus like... Well, that's Greta, but... Like, Don Juan is like... Well, to be fair, Don Juan isn't that bad either. But it has, like, speed 1. Like, having, like, speed 3 or something would be, would be much better. But it's still a decent thing, but I just never used it. <laughs> Honestly, like, I only used Kim when we got to the ensemble. True. One of the strongest clashes, yeah, because of, of um, Singular Strike. True. But then again, wouldn't Singular Strike be against that card? Yeah, Singular Strike. Yeah, you get plus two power um, on that. But then it's like that means yield my flesh could be could just win a lot of the time potentially. Build a floor around status types or types of damage, not around page, except for Gabura. Yeah. Hmm. I don't really build around specific pages. I f don't know. Yeah, but if you win, it's still good damage. True, true, true. So even then, it's still good. Mm, good point. I just never, I just never gave him a proper try in my in my playthrough, I guess. Yeah, all, all the times he does doesn't lose. <laughs> Oops. All right. Uh, Blade lineage. The more speed dice need more page and light recovery. Less speed dice means you need less page and light recovery. True. Depends how you manage the economy. The card economy, light economy. Depends how you manage it, pretty much. It depends. Uh, Blade Lineage isn't known for coordination. It's a little more than a cohort of people who have nowhere else to go, or those who carry the intent to murder someone. Most who seek to join us sit at a lowly social position. It's not rare for such people to join hold a, uh, it's not rare for people to, to hold a huge deadly grunge against someone you best behave before those who are, who are more skilled than you before those who are more skilled than you we must maybe a band of murderous ruffians but we not understand our place uh, uh, you can only lose against dice that have over 20 mm, pretty much and that's not as common early game or mid game Alright, now on to Star of the City, which is the majority and then Impuritus. Well, Impuritus still has all these reverb members. 
but still a fair chunk in star. Kim is not need to lose every time. Like, you lose, you get big reward. You win, there's nothing bad to win. True, true, true. Good point. I think also, I'm not big on single dice pages because, uh, single dice pages because, um, I, I don't want to be attacked by the other, t other dice as well. Like, I use single dice pages solely for, mostly for range attacks or for, like, some attacks I know that's coming, but I tend to, I don't tend to lean towards single dice pages, personally. It depends, really. Alright, loose section two. Uh, hold on. We'll go with this. And you don't need to go full build around that card. It's more like a support. Oh, true, fair, yeah, true. You don't need to focus around that card. Just do, just go like support on it, really, I guess. True, true, true. All right. Loom Association is a battle orientated fixed association, specializing in all out combat. We receive requests from wings and fight great battles for them. Some may see the lose fine styles old fashioned, but we get frequent requests from those who, are, who want strong willed and determined warriors. Most requests that come our way aren't complicated. 9 out of 10 are resolved by simply marching toward the enemy and defeating them in battle. It doesn't require specific strategies or certain personnel. We're Valu, the association that exists solely for war. It doesn't mean war is the only type of request we accept after all. After all, a fixer is free to take any request. The catch is that all these requests must be reported to the Hand Association before you deal with them. The report must include the details of the request, client info, how the case was resolved, any other relevant information. Once the report has been submitted, Hand Association will assess the performance of the office and its fixers and evaluate them for promotion or demotion. That's how the grades of fixers and the fixers are updated. Therefore, a fixer's grade doesn't necessarily correlate with strength. Oh, okay, cool. I was wondering, I was wondering about this. Like, right? How is grades right? So it's based on, yeah, it's more based around the requests you handle over just how strong you are. Okay, cool, cool, cool. That makes sense. All right, that makes sense. One thing, Lowell likes dragon fruits, and uh, Jar became a dragon. I see. <laughs> how poetic. One last thing I'd like to add is that there is a line there's a line fixers shouldn't cross. A fixer may advertise himself, himself or their office to get them requests. But we should not threaten Yeah, greatest is job efficiency. Hmm. But it should not threaten people to give requests to them. This is an area handled by the Han Association and Ufi Association. A specialist in dealing with transactions. In dealing in transactions. Of course. Associations shouldn't have to worry about running out of requests in the first place. Okay, cool. Zhao was a cold person who couldn't easily show who didn't show easily show her feelings. Even though the Lu consists of those who only face forward and never express any emotion in battle. That's a bit ironic. Huh? Never express emotion in battle. But then it's like all of Lu Association have fervor, which is like based on emotion. So that's kind of like, maybe they, they do feel emotional, but inside, they don't show it on the field. So, that's interesting. Luau didn't know Xiao at all. I think it's more like, in terms of general with Lu. Um, but we'll see how they met up, we'll see how they met up. But yeah, they didn't, they didn't, they didn't know each other until Lu Association at least. Zhao was especially hard-edged above the rest. I came to wonder if she was capable of possessing emotion at all. I and Roland Zhao the lover gang. Hmm. Ro Lowell didn't see beyond the mask. Hmm. We'll see. I think because like didn't Lowell mention how or like mention how Zhao likes, you know, cute stuff. So she knows. I think Lowell does know about Zhao's emotional side. I think he does know. Like, but she. He, 
Um, we'll see, we'll see. I'll, I'll finish reading this, but like, like, didn't like Lowell mention about how Zhao likes like plushes or like some cute stuff? So, yeah. A uh, harder. I came to wonder if she was capable of possessing emotion at all. If she was capable, her tone was dry in the most upsetting situations, and she never seemed and she seemed apathetic to the loss of several colleagues, never showing emotions in response to anything, but thoroughly looking after herself. That was my impression of Zhao. I thought the path Zhao was walking was completely different from mine. We disagreed on every aspect, from strategies to personalities. I thought of my relationship with her would stay formal between two co-working directors of, of an association. I, didn't, I don't remember when and how we got so close to each other. I couldn't be bothered to pull, push, this, push away the person who naturally came to my side. We started spending more time together outside of work. People intersect one another somehow, though I have no clue how our paths managed to converge or what about the paths led them to cross. One thing I can say for certain is that our relationship isn't a superficial bond between two directors. We need each other because we cherish each other, not the other way around. Can you really call it love if you only cherish your significant other because you need something out of them? At the very least, I don't think of Xiao as an object of exploitation or gratification. However, I know that preaching love is utterly meaningless in a city. I think she should never be carried away by emotion. I know well that a person at a position as high as mine should be extra careful. I've seen countless fixers who brought private matters to official grounds, only to meet undesirable results. The moment you get swayed by something you cherish, you lose yourself. You neglect your own safety. When a, when a human, a creature, that always puts itself above all else, loses their edge because of what they hold dear and places higher priority on it over their own lives, the consequences will be uh, grim in any case. Knowing this, I decided to remind ourselves of one thing we plighted our troth. Whatever happens to each other, we won't put ourselves at risk. As I thought, a Zhao agreed plainly and rightly. I could trust in Zhao, and I was glad to have this person as a lifelong partner. It was reassuring to know that Zhao wouldn't throw her life away if I ever died. Focus on my own survival, even in this situation. Okay, I see what you mean. Okay, fair. Perhaps my heart has grown stronger since I met her. Having her next to me was a great help to me at some at that point. Okay, yeah, I see what you mean. I think, yeah, I guess he doesn't know the full extent of how emotional Xiao could get. I think he knows that, I think he has some idea of how Xiao isn't fully this Iron Maiden, but um, <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean now, right? Yeah, I guess, yeah, Lowell didn't, wouldn't, wouldn't know the, the full extent that Xiao would go and try and take revenge for him. Ah, it's kind of sweet at least that, you know, Zhao did try. Ayn is cold and serious and Calm was the one who made him lighten up and smile. Roland was distant and focused on the job. Angelica is the one who made him break out the shell. Hmm, parallels. <laughs> it's some good parallels. Cecil. The Lu- It's a thing though, they say they don't um, be emotional in battle, but then it's interesting like, they are pretty like, like from Lu's, the Lu section 2 story, they are pretty chummy, like, friendly to each other and like, mess around with each other and stuff, so it's interesting, and also then, obviously, ironically, for their battle style is to not show emotion on the field, but then they get power based on emotion level, well, further, so I think it's like, I don't know, they don't show emotion, but they are pretty emotional, ironically enough. Like fire, pretty much. The Lu is an association that specializes in warfare. We work for a single goal of victory. However, victory isn't necessarily won in battle. The ideal course of action begins by identifying the reason the enemy intends to fight in the first place. Humans in a nutshell, pretty much. You try to like make this like iron exterior, but you people are emotional in the end. In some manner or form, it will come out. Like with, like with your sword. <laughs> like with your sword. Um, the ideal course of action begins by identifying the reason the enemy tends to find in the first place. Gaslighting yourself. Yeah, pretty much. Like, you gaslight yourself into thinking you can't, you won't have emotions, you won't be emotional. But that just makes it so much worse when it does come out eventually. 
Next we break the enemy's will. Only then will we launch an attack on enemy forces. Even when war is inevitable, we mustn't hope for victory after starting the war. Secure a path to victory up before engaging in warfare. But Liu engages in battles that are already won, with a strategy that is fated to lead us to triumph. We face enemies that are fated to lose. In other words, we don't participate in a war that cannot be won. Blindly charging into the fray isn't always the path to victory. And while strategizing allows you to look ahead and see where victory lies, it doesn't ensure that you will reach it. Therefore, it's crucial to assess the strength of the enemy and the condition of the enemy before you determine if you should advance or retreat. It's up to the director of each section, our leaders basically, to decide what to prioritize and what to discard. For instance, Director Luel is extremely cautious. He's not hesitant to retreat and reorganize his force if there's a slight disadvantage. On the other hand, Director Zhao tends to push forward as long as there's an opportunity to count on, but she isn't reckless about it. She designs elaborate strategies that will overcome the odds. Director Lowell's choices aren't always wise, and Zhao's choices aren't, don't always result in smooth victory, but two are the hardest within their abilities. Outside of weapons and martial arts, the most important thing that provides us protection is our clothing. It might look like a fancy suit with golden decorations at the first glance, but you know how a fixer's attire is no ordinary clothing. It's mandatory for people working in higher sections to wear clothing adorned with a moonlight stone. Oh, okay, another one, M Corp. Okay, moonlight stone. That you know, it makes it makes me think of Child of Galaxy, but probably not. The Galaxy was Galaxy, not Moonlight. Of course, the loot doesn't have exclusive right to use it, so you can say it on the clothes of other fixers and syndicate members too. The Moonlight Stone emits a golden glint, and you can- Oh, that's why- I see. You can either gild your clothes with it or make ornaments of it. Oh. The Moonlight Stone mitigates or shuts off psychological affliction, induced from all kinds of mental attacks. Pressure, interference, all that. Whether it's caused by seeing, hearing, or feeling something, or a direct assault to the mind. I don't know how the stone works. Amplifies a single purpose or thought. Oh, okay. Many people forget the mental pain coming from outside. Or fortifying the mind as if it's surrounded with a, with a giant barrier. So thanks to this clothing, we don't panic when we saw the crying children. A distortion. Okay. Oh, I see. So, all right. That explains. Kind, that kind of explains further as well, as it amplifies um, their emotions in a sense as well. This gives them power. Amplifies a single purpose or thought, or also um, mitigates or shuts off mental attacks and stuff like that. Well, I think that's also interesting. Like with Zhao, like you could interpret countering censored. Yeah. Pretty much, like, the Lu Association would um, counter censored pretty well. It's like white damage protection, pretty much. It's like white damage protection. But also, it's interesting in the sense that, how to say... Like, I think, I was thinking on Zhao, like, I guess you could technically say um, how the voice... Um, Carmen's voice was like um, like when Zhao was um, on the brink of ego and distortion. Like you could say how that's a mental attack in a sense. So like while we had mirrors there, like Zhao also had the moonlight stone clothing to help protect her against um, to not distort as bad as fast compared to Philip. Uh, because of the voice, white damage, pretty much. Mm. So that's interesting as well. Like, besides Miris being there, by like coincidence, it turns out, yeah, the Lu Association are like Zhao was equipped to deal with the mental attacks and stuff. That's the thing. Also, we don't like in Rowena, we don't have any like mental attacks do we we don't have any mental attacks like we have paralysis bind bind blind well bind they're all like physical ailments we don't have like the only one that is like a mental thing was like reverence but that's only for white knight so um we don't no one really uses any like psychological warfare 
attack. Well, the only one closest to it would be um, Oswald, but I guess for gameplay purposes, it's like, let's say you have like a little association equipped against Oswald. Um, it'd be funny if it turned if it turned out you can't he can't like um, what was it called stupefy was it stupefy yeah 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 Oswald couldn't stupefy you because you're wearing um, a little association key page that would have been interesting as a hidden mechanic that would have been funny <laughs> a bit like you just can't get stupefied because you are wearing the Moonlight Stone um, gilded clothes but yeah also may is really cute I, I, I like may i like may a lot she's cute <laughs> but yeah all right <clears throat> now on to fun reindeers oh yeah reindeers true true i guess stagger resist yeah mind whip and stuff yeah true that does count as mental affliction it would have been nice if like what's it called um the little association had like some like passive stagger resist but again hold on uh maybe let's see compare in comparison 50 49 46 46 all right i, I was gonna say what if they had like really high stagger staggered stats as well but yeah okay the main the main thing as a result of um, as a result of the thing is um although to be fair they do have also but well, that's more to like Moonlight Stone like Visited in Peace and like Cecil's one which is Firm as a Great Mountain which is like emotion level based and they recover HP or stagger resist but yeah okay wait it's funny then look like they said that Lowell's um whole idea is that he knows when to retreat but he has a fighter never retreats <laughs> so i guess with blue association there is this, there's this kind of like odd irony to them like they are emotional and like in situations they will go against what they think they would be doing like yeah for balance yeah for balance purposes not much different yeah but like like the thing we just read was talking about how Lowell is a type that will retreat if necessary and regroup. But then it's like a fighter never retreats. So I don't know, that's, that's interesting, you could say. Like, huh. Okay. Okay, okay. Interesting. <laughs> oh, hey there, welcome to the stream. Gaslighting yourself. Pretty much like Lowell probably doesn't want to retreat. Like when his emotion level will go up, he like when he gets emotional, he won't retreat pretty much. So interesting. Hmm. Uh, hold on, BRB. Let's get back to reading as well. Uh, let me see. Also, oh, it's funny that good card draw only comes from index. Hmm. Your head hurts, but when, when I'm doing some passive skill, uh, hurts off when I'm doing some passive. I see. <laughs> All right, fun. Uh, let me change the BGM as well. I feel like uh, maybe this one. Alright, back to reading. Alright, Fum Soldato's page. The Fum is the most cultivated and humane of the five fingers. Just to be polite. Just be polite and know to respect others. But then, why did the Fum top the list of syndicates one would never want to be involved with in a survey of fit for fixers by the Han Association? It's better of good manners. The reason is simple. 
hierarchy is absolute for the thumb. To us, it's as natural as the fourth face of nature that split that spilt blood only flows downwards. The fact of nature, sorry, not up. Only the expect, one is expected to give unconditional obedience to high authority. That's where the relative court, uh, courtesiness of the thumb comes from. Bong bong. <laughs> I see them, I see lots of art of them around. <laughs> but yeah. I guess, to be honest, like, if you're a fixer looking to join a syndicate, um, I feel you would want to join something that was different from how you are like the like syndic like, like offices and associations do have hierarchies so why would you join the farm if you're a fixer why would you join the farm um because you're going into another hierarchy system at least with the other syndicates there was not as big of a um um there's not as big of a what's it called hierarchy like we have index with index proxies messengers and proselytes but um hmm. but it's not as strict as farm at least yeah yeah you, you can make bong bong in in the game as well like i, I think bong bong is still also in the names you could choose from here. Okay, it run, it'll randomly pop up. Like, there's Yum Yum, at least. <laughs> but there's... It'll pop up randomly, I think. As well, if you do here. It, they use, I think they use the same names from Lobotomy Corp. But you have this one that's here as well. Oh, Boris's page. Yeah, that's a really cool page. Hmm. Alright. Next book. Oops, we're in star now. <laughs> Alright, there's still a lot of star to go, but Kalo. Capi de Capi, Godfather. Soto Capo, on the boss. Capo, Captain. And Soldato, um, Soldier, good fella. The thumb is divided into four echelons. Oh, smoke. Yeah, that could work, because he has a blunt, a strong blunt card mm, as well. His hierarchical structure is still effective outside of Syndicate. For example, a common fixer is comparable to a soldato, associate fixer a capo, a board member of a wing to a soto capo. This is how hierarchy. Um, yeah, they're, they're the old employees after all. Mm. This is how the hierarchy is to be interpreted. No outsider is except from this rule. Yeah, and so Carlo was a soto capo of the boss. Like we don't know who the Godfather is yet, huh? This is how the hierarchy is to be interpreted with one of the underbosses. No outsider is sent from this rule. No matter how you be usually behave, you must remember your place and respect your rule, our rules when you're dealing with the thumb. If a young, oblivious fixer walks up to a capo and speaks to them, that poor Pico Picocio will be rolling in the streets on the next day with his jaw and teeth missing. Okay, so yeah, the thumb, like, the thumb impose their rules on to other people the fun impose their rules on other people which is like by all means have your mafia rules within your own group by all means but like don't impose that on other people <laughs> personally speaking like by all means have your rules but don't impose that on the others some of the higher with other that's also kind of why they do they are respectful if you're higher up like that's why um Kalo, um said to like cut off catrio's tongue um because she was talking shit to angela who's i guess angela would be the equivalent to godfather because um they were she and because catrio was disrespecting and angela so i guess in a way they're polite but they seem a bit troublesome to deal with. <laughs> Pum is essentially the strict teacher everyone hates and is afraid of. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, someone of the right authority or person of a high class would be a different story. Also, there is a funny shit between Kahlo and Nikolai. I could kind of see that. They're both like the older, like, P 
people of their groups who like manage a bunch of um unruly ish people especially nikolai like the rest of them are pretty unruly well, except for maybe ranger dude hmm. we have a person oh just old <laughs> i mean you could relate them more than just old <laughs> i mean just get hokuma involved then if you're just saying old <laughs> If you're just saying, oh, just get Hakuma in as well, why not? <laughs> anyway. If a person in the same echelon as ours were to approach us, we gladly greet them and hear what they have to say with an open mind. Conversations with them are to be conducted with courtesy and decorum. Furthermore, if the person you're dealing with stands on a higher echelon than yours, they must be treated with utmost devotion and delicacy. Such is the rule, such is the rule of ours. And respect to their position. Don't be too bitter over it. Indeed, class is earned, not given for free. It's only right to give it respect it deserves. Hmm. I guess they they can be polite. The claw, I mean, the thumb can be polite. It just really depends who you are. <laughs> and who you are to who, whichever one. Even then, it really depends. Like, even Catriel, who was like, what? She was, what, at least a capo. I think I, I think a capo, but like she was, they, they can still be disrespectful to others. Obviously, when they get punished. But yeah, all right, Boris. The farm uses types of bullets. Jeez. The farm uses different types of bullets. <laughs> I guess there is a there's a community for everything, huh? <laughs> Such is that rule. We picked the right. Ammo for the right situation. But as you can guess, the price of those bullets is a serious drawback. Not even the thumb, one of the five fingers sitting at the apex of the back streets, can just waste bullets willy nilly. That's how costly it gets. You can't get trigger happy. Because of that, the thumb fight with bayonet and butt stocks of their guns most of the time. Um, and only fire bullets when it's absolutely necessary. The butt stock is built to be solid enough to crush most things to pulp. And the bayonet is pretty handy as a sword. Some just stick to raw strength though. Like Boris. He just fights with his fists. <laughs> Alright, Catriel. Boris was originally going to distort, but Yan took his place. I heard someone mention about that. Hmm. I heard someone mention about that. Um. Let's see. I heard someone mention about that. Uh. Yeah, I heard someone mention about that. Hmm. Like, uh, was there something, or maybe it was some? I saw something that was like meant to be a bit more graphic. Like, they they were gonna like, th like the thing with um Yan and the whole like ink thing. Like, people, like I, I read something that was like, what they were going to throw Yan into an acid bath or something, or something like that. Something weird like that. I don't know. That's why originally I, I, someone mentioned it, or I read it somewhere that Yan was originally going to be thrown into an acid bath or something. That'd been something. Anyway, um, the thumb scene of command is simple: obey the orders issued by your superior unconditionally, and do not question the intentions of your superior. Kill if you're told to kill, and die if you're told to die. You cannot defy the orders, no matter how baffling it may seem. Most who fight them are punished on the spot. Even if order is made by someone whose rank is only one step higher than yours, you're still obliged to follow it. There's nothing you can do about it, unless another person whose position in the pecking order is even higher than your commander's your commander. Commanders decide to step in and take your side. There is one exception, however, when a high-ranking individual temporarily devolves their power to a subordinate of theirs. Usually this occurs if they have urgent business, preventing them from joining a meeting, or when they need their peer to know something that the subordinate can explain more professionally. It's still a rare occurrence even then. No one transfers their authority for fun of stipulated for the fun of simulated uprising or other trivial reasons. That's how significant hierarchy is to us. Yeah, fun is like a really strict syndicate, like if you're a fixer, why would you join this group? Like you're you're already in a hierarchy. So 
there's no point for you to join the farm uh, if you had to join the syndicate or at least one of the fingers like there's no point <laughs> there's no point in you joining one and the army uh it is still like mafia it still has that kind of like respect sort of stuff um they try to um you know project even in a powerful syndicate weaklings exist cowardice can surface among the strong and chaos can ensue from the most faultless rules not everyone in the farm can abide the rules without a slip up the type of authority power seems very easy to abuse hmm what happens when one violates the rules if someone is trying to disrupt the hierarchy they'll be purged in a few days it doesn't matter if it's a person of the syndicate or an outsider every person must abide by the rules the degree of violation is, is irrelevant it doesn't decide the weight of the purge the one thing that matters is the uh, the most is the fact that they showed insolence the lesson is marked with blood so that no one no one dares break this rule again that's the most important one it might seem like nitpicking but there's one basic principle to remember don't get on the nerves of your superior it's an elementary basic elementary part of the basic decencies for human be human relationships and so many people seem oblivious to this hmm all right cane office yeah, they're, they're pretty, like, they are as they seem, really. The farm really is like the mafia of the, of, uh, the city, pretty much. There's like, they are as they seem, like, the whole, um, class and respect sort of deal of them. That's for sure. They don't use anything, like, special or anything. Well, guns. But we aren't, like, using any singularities or anything, either. They just have... You have guns and stuff. The farm is the simplest finger, yeah. They're really simple. They're like really organized, but they're also really simple. Yeah, no idea clear what, what Z Corp is about. Because like, yeah, there's like, there's 25 districts and nests. But there's only, there's 26 corporations. 26 wings, rather. So, who knows what Z Corp is. Xenocorp. <laughs> Nemo. I don't think they're in charge of East Respective Corp, but hmm. we live in turbulent times when wings are destined to fall behind in the market if we don't respond to patent disputes effectively, big or small. Uh, it's one of the reasons patent wars are that much important. Both mega corporations sue one another for patent infringement or accuse one another for stealing their patent. Us small fries can watch the giants clash without worrying about getting caught in a crossfire. In yeah, hold on, you're right back.
And I'm back. Hello. <laughs> I, I, just, I just had to um, get, do something real quick, but it's fine now. Alright. Um, Mega Corporations. Alright. In fact, we benefit from. Yeah. There are unspoken rules that you need to remember to keep your stake in the patent war. One must patent a technology separate for areas outside of the nest. Um, separately for areas outside of the nest or of other domain under their jurisdictions. No one must. One must avoid admitting to infringement before carefully reviewing the lawsuit. The rights to a technology cannot be protected if its details were publicized through advertisements or such before the patent was registered, etc. Patent wars break out for so many reasons. It will take a day and a half to list them out. Alright, so yeah, Kane Office is like lawyers and stuff. Notarization is, is the process of drafting documents to officially certify a deal between two offices in case things happen. A notarial act is very powerful. But with these, through these documents, you can verify various facts and secure executory force. Meaning, if one side doesn't carry out their part of the contract, the contract can be enforced on them. There's no need to for them, no need to argue about who is to blame. Notary acts exist to stop necessary disputes from occurring. It's the job of the notary public offices like Kane Office to help with that. Oh, and the city is divided into domains. It's similar to how the Zvi Association sets, sets territories for policing. It's fair to expect at least one notary public office in every domain. This isn't to say that you can only use the notary public to your, in your domain. If you can't find a notary public or if the office isn't functional for whatever reason, you can always go to other domains, but it costs a bit more. A lot of people still choose the latter, since they need to get business done in a hurry. Now every notary public office has the same level of professionalism after all. Yeah, I guess a lot of things are like contracts and stuff, huh? Um, a lot of, yeah, you need, you need things down in contracts. Which is why like Roland got fucked and why um, Prom um, Pluto got like really fucked. <laughs> Because of the smoke print, um, Martina and Bada. I mean, they seemed cool. They, they seemed cool together, yeah. Duncan Romper with Lobotomy Corp. Mm. A, like a like a murder thingy. Mm. Maybe as like a singularity. <laughs> I do wonder what San did wrong or did not do properly because if his brother is a bad as a second a grade two fixer. Uh, who also, um, <clears throat> who also essentially lives in a mansion. Well, he's a grade six and lives in a shabby op place as, as an office. Yeah, best ship is Nemo x money. <laughs> I can see that. Just money. That's all he cares about. Yeah, even here, Bada doesn't ha doesn't even mention his brother. Contract shouldn't be signed on. An um, should be signed on equal terms with the consent of all parties involved. And the offices must fulfill the terms. Must fulfill the terms following the mutual agreement. It's a societal boundary that keeps us humans from betraying each other, each other's trust, as we must coexist. He wants to be a great, a greater fixture by his own. Hmm. True. Maybe. Bad blood. Perhaps. Hmm. I can see that. Hmm, just probably some bad blood, maybe. Hmm. Although these principles are rather abstract. Maybe when we see Bada and San in the future, maybe we'll learn more. Maybe, or maybe, it's, I don't think it's in the art book. Or at least maybe he just tells us, but that's it. We exist to prevent anyone from devising lowly schemes and ensure we can each party just gets benefits. The head's rules don't cover every small detail, so you can say this is a necessary addition to fill the gaps. Hmm. Yeah. The offices must fulfill the terms of contract. It's a societal boundary that keeps us humans. Hmm. Like, I think also it's like contracts for everything. It stems from how. Um. It really stems from how the people in the city just can't trust each other. So. Hmm. Ah, sure, no problem. Catch you later. But yeah, none of them can trust each other, huh? We just can't. Like, you got, like, no one can have faith 
like people can't have faith easily that they'll their agreements will be fulfilled because the contract wasn't there. Mm. All right, Church of Gears worshiper. Uh, let me change this up. I do like how there's there is a light motif kind of going on like Hods, Malkov I think they all have I think the battle themes from like the earlier floors have some sort of light motif <laughs> going on. Yeah. As the gears turn, our bodies are put in motion. Hulk gears are indispensable. Let me see, it's, it's too loud. Hold on. Neza is more relaxed, yeah. It's more of a, a relaxed version of this theme. Um, the introduction seems terrifying, but Hulk gears are said to feel. Hulk gears are, are indispensable for meat gears. The introduction seems terrifying, but Hulk gears are said to feel much more satisfaction than meat gears do as time passes. Funky music for, for body horror watch music. <laughs> True. I just swapped it because um it was on Hod's Battle 1 for a while. But I just realized, oh wait, this is the same tune. So I might change it again in like a few minutes or so, like 10. But for, actually, I'm not sure if a fork gear can still think like a human. They say fork gears are honored to be serving their role. Their role. Um, but perhaps it's only a made-up story told by worshippers who hadn't completely gone awry. Wishing to free themselves of the little, little guilt they had. The promise, the words I sometimes hear aren't heard through my ears. The gear guides my body as it rotates, as if, it, as if it's entering commands into my brain. Oh! That matters not. We are able to live thanks to the help of the fourth gears. We're no longer lost and able to find a way ahead. Even if there is no path to take. It tells me where to take my taste my next step. Damn. All right. So yeah, these people are like they have the gears in their heads embedded in. Jeez. Eileen Simps. <laughs> to some extent. All right. Index proxies. Esther. Is forging precripts a violation of the rules? The answer is not exactly. It can be written on any piece of paper. As long as it's stamped with the seal of the index, it will pass as a real prescript. We must wonder, wouldn't there be many people who exploit the system with malicious intent? Copying the seal is a complicated process and not many know how. Even if they overcame those hurdles, we still cannot outsmart the prescripts. The prescripts know all. We can tell whether or not a prescript has been carried out, how it is done, and if someone is delivering fabricated prescripts. Individuals sending out counterfeit prescripts on their own volition can ultimately be traced back to the will of the prescripts and the city itself. Okay, so cool. So there is somewhat an idea that the that the will of the city is the prescripts to some extent. If, even without having gone down to see the um, machine. I suppose the prescripts have some generosity for those forgers as they may remain unpunished unless a prescript ordering it has been issued. The prescripts were already aware that Messenger Yan was giving out false ones, hence the prescripts hence the prescript to follow those fake orders. No. That the prescript no might not be the most appropriate expression. They just they don't know they are. They they it's all so part of this big plan, huh? Yeah, Esther's pretty smart. Like, I mean, to be fair, he seems the most composed of the trio of proxies, at least. There are a number of ranks within the index. Proselytes, messengers, and proxies are as much as I know. Alright, yeah, there's one more below. There's one more down below. Um, there's one more above proxies, aren't there? Those who have been chosen by the prescript will decide whether to become a proselyte. If they accept it, they will cover their eyes with a blindfold as they serve the role. The blindfold has little symbolic significance. It's to teach the proselyte to follow the prescript. Oh yeah, the weavers, that's it, that's what it's called. 
Um, the weavers, the weavers. I forgot, I forgot, yeah, yeah. Above, um, pro above the proxies is the weavers. Hmm, hmm. I, 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 I just, I just forgot the name of them. Um... Is to teach the prospect to follow the prescript? Yeah. The automator. <laughs> to some extent, yeah. Just follow the orders of the prescript. Trusting the prescript, pretty much. Something above the weavers, yeah. Maybe there's like... I guess to be fair, above the weavers would be the world, the city itself. Use a group of five to six proselytes. Accompany a proxy. And learning the rules of the index in the role of each rank. If a proselyte shows certain level of competence, the priests will assign the role of messenger or proxy to them. After being promoted, we are given a blade of their own, and we may take off the blindfold. Ah! The priests, the priests are a predetermined path. There is no point for proselytes to refuse any. It's still within their choice to decline the priests' offer. Even though they are free to quit any time, no one knows if the priests will allow it. The prescripts might order proxies to kill the runaway who abandoned their position, or let it slide, or even give the order to resign first. The prescripts are truly unpredictable. The index has an arsenal of swords and blades. The message, the weaver is the one that makes the message, so the above them would be the will. Yeah, that's what I assume. Yeah, that's what it feels like at least. That's what it feels like. See, that's what it feels like, yeah. Uh, let's go with... Tiff's one. Someone has to have made the machine, yeah, true. Someone had to have made it. That's interesting as well. Hmm. And someone has to maintain... Yeah, the, the weavers maintain it. The head? Maybe. Like, someone has to... How is the will of the city able to come out without the machine? Hmm. That's a mystery, that's for sure. The Index has an arsenal of swords and blades. Most of the priests we receive can be sort of a sword too. Sword too. Hmm? Never really thought about why we use swords. Nope. Maybe it's because they have this oppressive aura and makes us look serious or something. Each of us uses different types of blades, starting with the ranks of messengers and proxies. Why don't you use Gabura theme? It's calm. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm not using Gabura's theme. It's a bit too hectic for me reading out, for me reading, reading things. <laughs> so it's like cool. The world of Prescript says so. We might not regret the scream, so let's talk about her now. We might reach her. We'll see. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> we'll, we, we, we'll probably reach her. We'll probably reach her. Don't worry. <laughs> From, a fl from light one-edged sword fit for slicing through things quickly to heavy double-edged great swords, they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. Helps us stand out from each other. As for me, I've got five whole blades. Maybe being speedy helped. It looks like we got swords that fit our traits. Have you seen the sword Hubert's carrying? It looks so heavy. He swings it like nothing. Oh, I didn't see it properly. I see, yeah, yeah, because they all get different swords, and like, Yan's sword is like, um, well, that's, that's distorted, but there's like, it's like a mass, it's like this sword that was like, pretty big as well. Alright, Lu Wan. Well, not Xiao, but Lu Wan. Chun. Right now, Nest L is practically a war zone for the association, syndicates, and fixers. And how was the city built? True. Yan's normal sword is big as himself as well, pre-distorted. Yeah, yeah. It's just that now it's like extra distorted. It's like, it's got like, um, like rust, not rust, but like it's really broken down. On top of that, distortions are making things worse for associations and the residents of the nest. According to the report from the powers up above, there are three major factions of note currently remaining in the nest. The Index, Robotomy Corp, R Corp, sorry, R Corp, and Blue Reverb, and his group. R Corp seem to be eliminating threats as per request from another wing, similar to what Lou has been doing. The Index appears to be guided here by the prescripts. After all, 
They gladly obeyed the piece of paper pretending to kill every member of the farm in the nest. As a result, pretty much every farm, crook, and the syndicate sub subsidiaries that were in this place are goners. Even the underboss, who was supposed to lead them, kicked the bucket, so you can guess how it went. Yeah, he's meant to be a future color, but like... It's weird, like... Chun... Like... Yeah, Zhao said you have potential to be a color, but like... Chun doesn't really have much... Going for him. He like, died as quick as we met him. <laughs> it's strange, that's for sure. Not strange, but more like... There could have been more to him. To the leader of the Lu, the most crucial element that can make or break a battle is vigor, not the competence or strength of individu individu individuals. With vigor, even the weakest creek can carry heavy rocks like a gale blowing up leaves. Therefore, an excellent leader chooses good fixers and then puts vigor into them. A bit like luster, like the Vermilion Jobber. I mean, to be fair, Vermilion Cross was ganged up on by over distortions, so I don't think um, I don't think Gabura well, maybe, you could have solo Gabura against the reverb ensemble but still, I don't think it's an easy job either <laughs> strength or skill alone won't make a good fixer while those traits do play a role in higher sections, Purple Tear had to escape, yeah, Purple Tear, Purple Tear couldn't defeat them either we don't know how he was working, true. I guess Chun... If we meet Chun again, that would be nice to see more of his potential. While those traits do play a role in the higher sections, the most important quality is how well the Fixer meshes with their leader's combat style. Section 2, the team with Mei and Cecil, because of careful level-headed Fixers. They go quite well with Director Lowell because of that. Section 1 would clearly be superior in terms of sheer power. We follow different strategies with pros and cons for each. So a direct comparison won't really tell much about our actual performance on field. Yeah, Purple Vermilion Cross had to fight all of them, so he got wrecked. Well, he had, he had some fixtures with him, but they got wrecked as well. Director Zhao likes to emphasize something. A mercenary's work is to, is to deceive, to fool the enemy into believing that we are advancing when we defend, to make the enemy believe we will thrust them from the front when we strike from above. Feign submission when you raise your claws. We must seem unable to attack. We must seem unable to enable. When it, uh, we must seem unable when able to attack. But the enemy might grow arrogant. When the enemy is roused, distract them through disturbance. Be aware that we ourselves must are not are not subject to such anger. Yeah, Art of War philosophy pretty much, yeah. It's all like Art of War stuff. Mm -hmm, pretty much. Yeah, like... We saw like a bit of Vermilion Cross, he was kind of sturdy, but like... Stat-wise, he could probably only take one at a time. Getting ganged up on by the rest would have killed him. Yeah, it's really like Art of War stuff. Hmm. In order to defeat the enemy, you must be roused. You must be roused to anger. Remember that one's emotions must remain a means to motivate the body, not the ends. To exploit the enemy's wrath with this in mind, our director may be seized with anger and momentarily stray onto unadvisable paths sometimes. But even the whitest jade has a flaw. I trust her to set herself back on the right on the right track in no time. Ah. All right. Now we go. R Red mist, which is a really long one. <laughs> Hold on, one sec. Alright. <laughs> one sec, hold on. Which one is it? One sec.
No, this one. <laughs> and this, tr- I, I, I have the Lobos Me Corp music as well. I just think it's up, it's appropriate for this. Was it this one? Yeah, this one. <laughs> Let's have this one on, or Red Mist one. <laughs> Ego, the weapon that corresponds to the mind of its wielder, the sword it calm and gave me was extracted from, from someone by chance. Giant eyeballs were attached to the sword adorned with crimson chunks of flesh. They watched my every move, almost to the point of making me feel uncomfortable. Wondering if this was a product of some new singularity, I asked Carmen what the thing was. She only said I had to get used to it, since there's little she can do about how it looks. Although, it looked a bit creepy. It wasn't anything unbearable, and Carmen didn't seem to mind as long as there were experiments to be performed with it. She added that I had to be careful. It's like Carmen is like, don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Pretty much. <laughs> she added I had to be careful with it, as it was thanks to sheer luck that the ego could be extracted at all in its unstable state. I had a plethora of experience handling various workshop products, so I decided to take the sword without much hesitation. Yeah, that's the thing, like, I don't, like, I don't think, like, this is my personal theory that with these egos right now, like with prototype um, mimicry, I don't think it was, like, with the, like, with Christopher, um, nothing, like, I think he's nothing there. It has to be. But I think with, like, the abnormalities from, like, Iron onwards, yeah, she didn't know what she was doing, but also... I feel like I don't think anyone died as a result of well as a result of prototype mimicry because it's prototype and it was like really unstable so I don't think otherwise Carmen would have like um, killed herself sooner because I don't think I think like Enoch was like the casualty yeah so no one died so this was extracted without anyone dying I guess Christopher was like um, the more like uh, allowed for the more stable nothing there mimicry but like yeah this prototype mimicry was from no one dying at least but it's like it's more because I think because Gabura was able to use it well and really well enough then injured maybe yeah but no one died until Enoch because yeah that's what really shook um, yeah Enoch was the was her breaking point because Tifrith, well, Lisa, was like, you should have died yourself or something like that. So uh yeah. That's how I that's what I think at least. So I don't I don't yeah, because of how Carmen reacted and how she told Ian that she's a lot more sensitive than she looks. Like she's 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 the type that would break easily if something happened. She told she to, she pretty much told Ian that, so she was like, "Oh yeah, make sure you carry on my work if something were to happen to me." And it's like, yeah, she's naive. In it, I I can't help but like her though. Like, I respect her goal too much to like really lambast her. In all honesty, like, I respect her goal for doing all this. Like, hmm, Ian, yeah, Ian's. Well, he be- Ian more became a good person in a sense. I don't think Chris turned to nothing there. It might, might have, there might have turned to Chris and t- killed his family. Maybe it's like because it's it's way too from the, from the description that of what Chris turned into. It was way too. It felt too specific for nothing there. It felt way too close to nothing there. And also, of course, Gabura using thing. Yeah, Ayn's not good or bad. He's he's really great as a character. <laughs> like he does improve as time went on. Nothing there is him and his family. Hmm. There's lots of theories, to be fair, but not clear cut about it. That's for sure. When I first, Ayn was selfish, in a sense. He like he had. He was selfish in um, getting the goal done, in in getting his goals accomplished, which is Ian, which was Carmen's dream. 
in trying to achieve it. Yeah, day 50 was when obviously Ian improved upon himself. Although even then, day 50, Ian forgot about um, Angela because he still has that guilt around her. But then, of course, now we got Rowena, where finally Ian talked to Angela as a person and not as a machine. So there's that at least. Carmen's death messed up Ian like Eno did to Carmen. Yeah, like Ian really got fucked up over it. Like, what was it? Even ben like Benjamin, Benjamin was saying like how Ian was just messed up and like, and like I think because Ian also felt really guilty about Carmen. Like, like Ian mentioned how he could see that, um, how he could see that Carmen was deteriorating and like about how they drink and stuff like that to like I forgot the reason why they drank wine whenever they did as well hmm yeah being yeah I mean like he he cared about he didn't desire he didn't do what he did out of like um what was it called not benevolence there's a there's another term I forgot what it was but he did it for Carmen pretty much he's decent overall but yeah, he's decent when he redeems himself. But that's the thing. That's the cool thing about Ian is that really, there's a lot of ways people can look at look at him. Pretty much, like there's a lot of ways we can interpret Ian, and like there's there's no right or wrong way to view him. Honestly, like some people have a more lax view on him. Some people just hate him. <laughs> it really depends, huh? Especially if you haven't played Lobotomy Corp. Then again, you're, it's more because you're missing information. Yeah, half hate him, half like him. But I do feel like... I know, I do feel you should play Lobotomy Corp. Or at least have a see all the cutscenes in Lobotomy Corp. Before playing Rowena personally. Like, even reading the Wikipedia plot summary. I don't feel it's fully enough. Like... Um... But yeah, especially because like when you play this game, like you don't have if you started from playing Marina right away. Well, I mean, to be fair, it's, it's a different experience then because like your point of view is essentially Roland. Like um, with Roland, you don't you don't know you don't know who the Sephira are. So you meet them for the first time uh, as they are, as a patron librarian. Well, I'm supposed to be different compared to other characters like Bina said. He's different to Angela and Roland. Mm. There is parallels though. Like, yeah, Angela was effectively doing the same thing. Bina said that Angela turned out to be more similar to Ian than Carmen. Mm -hmm. When I first had the sword and grip, I didn't feel anything in particular. All I could tell was that it's just a big, heavy greatsword. Nothing out of the ordinary than its appearance. When I held the sword for a few days later to protect a co-worker of mine, I heard a voice. It was the voice of someone deep, desperately yearning for something. Unfortunately, the meaning of that voice was lost on me. Rather, it wasn't even human speech. An awkward sound mimicking somebody. Noises of teeth grinding, bones crackling, mingling of flesh. Some things collide, fall apart, and mix in irregular patterns as if to mimic the way humans speak. However, the sound was too violent and sharp. The strong, the strong obsession is an, of an empty one. Attachment. Void. I'm not sure what word I should use to find this. Yeah, essentially nothing there. One thing I understood was that I could, I could only hear that voice and it rang in my head rather than my ears. The, strong, the stronger and clearer my aim to protect someone became, the louder the noise in my head got. Anxious my mind was being consumed by the voice if I let it weaken my will. I heard to my pretend I didn't hear it. The eyes on the blade carefully absorbed, observed me as I, as I fought the voice in my head. The piercing gaze persisted as if to replace me if I faltered for even a second. It made me feel hazy sometimes. The voice was only a bunch of grinding noise at the beginning. They slowly learned to speak over time. Soon enough, it started speaking in a language that I could understand, though it stammered a bit. 
It takes human hide to protect human flesh. A shell. He kept asking for a shell. I couldn't stop the voice, so I most I could do was ignore it. Even though there was danger in using it, its power was formidable. With it, I protected many a person and cut down many a threat. The voice became stronger and deeper with the more blood the blade drank. One day, it asked a sharp question. Don't you desire a human shell as well? When I think back, back on it, the question might not have been aimed at me specifically. It would only say whatever it wanted to say. It wouldn't try to convince or alert me. All it uttered was monologue. Oh wait, that's, that's kind of like... You know when we use the ego pages? Um, when we use the ego pages in this game? Like you have the whole text um, come up from the from the um, of the man he's speaking. We're not they're not really speaking to you. They're more speaking monologue. Like yeah, whenever you use the ego pages. Well, the ego pages, the abno pages. Yeah, I was frozen stiff when I heard that. It kept saying something. Are our lives really worth the blood I spilt for them? It wasn't capable of forming such detailed sentences, but my head took it that way for some reason. Maybe I was thinking to myself. The employees were fine because I put a filter on them. Uh, I think the cognition filter was only on iron. I think. It was only ever on iron. I think everyone else sees the um, actual um, lobotomy corp as is. I think I think the cognition filter was only ever for um, iron or X rather. I don't think, um, I don't think anyone else had filters on the ego weapon. What do you mean? I denied it. I, did, uh, I denied its claim at the start. I never provoked anyone first, but I only acted to protect others from an approaching danger. But I felt a small part of myself waver from what the voice said. What will happen when I keep washing away blood with blood? A bloodstained shell would be all that's left. I collapsed for a moment, but I didn't stop thinking. If I broke down, I might be in danger as Carmen warned. Carmen, right. Carmen would have been different. Nothing could possibly beat the glitter in her eyes that shines to see Pine as a new path. About that. Those honest, virtuous eyes. Even when someone jeered at her speech. Even when someone despaired in the face of an obstacle that brought progress to a halt. Carmen never stopped looking after others. She could always take the initiative to lead all of them. If I can protect a person like that, maybe this place will change. Yes, as long as I can protect that one person. Ah. But yeah, then Carmen broke down because of Lisa and Enoch. As my thoughts became clearer, I couldn't just sit down. My body acted before... Uh, like, isn't very audible to the employees compared to, Car to Carter Cali. Oh, I see. Maybe. I mean, to be fair, we don't follow any of the other point of views of the characters when they. We don't like. We don't know what the agents are experiencing when they, um, when they use ego weapons. To be fair, we don't know what they're experiencing because we obviously don't follow their point of view. So who knows? Like, oh yeah, Wonder Lab. True. Did they hear? Did they hear voices as well? Did they as well? I think they did as well, didn't they? Or did they not? Then again, Wonder yeah, Wonder Lab didn't really I don't think Wonder Lab did it as much. Then again, um what's it called? This is an A -lef level ego, so it's more dangerous as well to wield. So hmm. It's a lot more dangerous to wield as well, to be fair. Like yeah. Callie's using an Aleph level ego, so only to mentally unstable. Hmm. As my thoughts became clearer, I just couldn't sit down. My body acted before my head. For ego, it was Tally to use Rose Aleph. Yeah, yeah, true. I think Tally was fine using the Rose one. But again, does the Rose really speak much? Like, nothing dead tries to speak. The Rose doesn't really speak, though. Hmm. True. My body acted before my head could decide what to do. I don't remember what happened then. When I finally took a grip, all we know is that the rose eats. Yeah, the rose eats the rose. Hmm. It has this sort of like pickiness to it. Like 
you, you need to start you need you need to be a really high stat line to like work with rose with the tainted rose so only cat or rose could work with it and then it would kill whoever worked with it in the end and if it doesn't if it is really picky if it doesn't have someone it works with it releases spores so yeah <laughs> it's quite something at least when i finally took a grip of my rationality in a vast mindscape and came back to my senses my body was burning burning hot is this rage have i been taken over to the point where i can't even see ahead but i felt so calm refreshed even my head was kept cool while my heart leading while my heart le leading the body was aflame it wasn't long until i noticed there was something different on solid armor there was a layer of something tough and dense but it wasn't fabric a veil of mist was covering me as long as I moved around and shook my limbs several times, and the, best, the, the veil dissipated after. When Carmen learned of this, she didn't say much. She didn't make a big fuss about it or suggest trying something with it right away. She only said that wielding this power is more important than simply manifesting it. So I shouldn't be lazy. She went back to work after leaving that peculiar piece of advice. Maybe she didn't want me to feel too much pressure. Yet a mist. Hmm. As more time passed, I could use the armor for longer, and finally, eventually got to draw its full power. I had a weapon and armor that resonate with my emotions. Using them, I could protect many people, and I was able to draw forth more durability and strength. The researchers seemed to be struggling to make progress with their work, but it was alright. I believed in them to make it through, and I had just to be quicker to do my job in the meantime. However, not long after the incident happened all too suddenly. No. Maybe it wasn't so sudden. The sign was there. Just around this ah, jeez. Just around this corner, I can hear a child crying. She's singing in front of a door. One of the two children Carmen took in died in a failed experiment. Unlike Lisa, who was wary and reluctant to open up to us, Enoch showed interest in our research and volunteered to be a test subject the other day. Enoch's speech was so concise and on point, everyone was shocked. He wasn't afraid and he wasn't shaking. His voice was unswerving and gentle. Enoch's eyes were in voice of a naive kid. His words and thoughts were surprisingly deep and mature. Even I was astonished. I sometimes wondered what made this kid have such thoughts. His eyes seemed to have already seen so much of the world's despair and misfortune. However, it was still no reason to allow a kid to participate in the experiments. Carmen spent several nights agonizing over this matter. If this the experiment was authorized at last, though I didn't want to know what they thought of it anymore. But what were you going to do, holding that hand that little kid? I had to wonder if he were that desperate, but I shrugged it off. I wasn't want to stop him, stop him from doing what he chose to do. You. You should have been the one to die. The other kid, who was now all alone, mumbled crying. Her words had no weight to it. She probably spouted what she didn't sincerely mean, because the situation was too much for her. Yeah, I, I should have died. Carmen's answer, on the other hand, was likely sincere. Everyone stood still. A crack appeared in our minds which we ever, never thought would crumble. Maybe we all expected it to happen deep down. Carmen's state worsened with each passing day, like a rusting nail. The sunny eyes of the woman who had, spoke, who had brought us together were now cloudy, and she spoke less and less. Her voice was lifeless, and she had gotten so cold. It wouldn't have come to anyone's surprise if she died at any moment. She didn't bother to, trying to look okay. I think it was better that way. Everyone in the laboratory felt constrained in her presence. They viewed Carmen in different ways. Yeah, box cutter. Hmm. Well, what was it wrist cutter? Wrist, cu wrist cutter. Was was the eat was the thing? Reproachful looks of those resenting her for bringing them so far, only to let go of her responsibility. Concerned looks of those worried that something might happen to her, and I guess there are those who had no thoughts. The research went on quietly, but not for long. A few days later, Carmen spilled out all of the guilt within her and plunged into it, never to come back up. Yeah. Ah. I guess because Gabura is the type to, that manages to just work, that manages to just keep on going, pretty much. Until, like, her encounter with the Abnos during her fight with Bina, at least. But damn. 
I guess this also helps give backstory to Carmen. For anyone who hasn't played Lobotomy Corp, it does give good, like, indication of who Carmen is. Like, what happened to... In the laboratory, at least, a bit as well. Besides the stuff that was talked about in um, the story, like Bina invading, at least. Hmm. R-Corp. I'll leave the Lobotomy Corp music on for R-Corp as well. Nikolai. In the past, the fourth pack was considered a thorn in the side of R-Corp. In other words, a headache. We were a headache that they couldn't find a good enough, reason, good enough excuse to remove. Ayn was actually also doing final keeping together, like Kali, a bit. Yeah, I mean, he's the he knew he knows what had to be done, but he still felt terrible over Carmen's death. Like it was like the whole he could, they, he should have known that something was going to happen. Like he saw that Carmen was deteriorating horrifically, and like it was that conversation about the wine or something as well. Um and stuff as well. Something about that. In other words, we were a headache, yeah. Which was frankly understandable as we were a total foul up of an army at the time. The considerable amount of time for us to improve our current state. The Rhino team, powerful but easily agitated and uses its strength to destroy everything all too often. Ranger team, prone to suffer a nervous breakdown in prolonged battles, causing enemies talking damage to its allies. And the Rabbit team, the first for blood leaves no margin for sloppiness at the cost of killing civilians. Hmm. Yeah, he seemed to. Yeah, he thought that Carmen would just get better, pretty much, but nope. To put it the nice way possible, they had a unique niche only they could fill. As a matter of fact, bringing them to Orthodox battles would do more harm than good. Not so long after, I received news that they were planning to destroy our pact. Pack. Perhaps they deemed it's a waste to spend any more money, any more energy on us. The news of destruction didn't come off as much as a surprise as I expected. Or perhaps I was panicked that my hair turned white. <laughs> well, there wasn't much I could say. What more can I say to this person who isn't even part of our corp? All I can do is humbly accept my fate. The guest who had an impressive pair of red eyes and dashing brown hair looked at me and gently smiled. Her demeanor took a sharp, cold turn. Huh? What? Hold on. I couldn't have been able to tell that this person had talkative and lighthearted side. I didn't. Wait. What? Huh? Is this? Huh? Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh, this wasn't detective. Okay. <laughs> I was confused because the only brown-eyed red person we know in this game is Carmen, but that makes no sense for this situation. Because <laughs> the only brown-haired, red-eyed person that I know would be Carmen. But I see, another distortion detective character. Okay, okay. <laughs> I was confused, like, huh? What? What? <laughs> I see, I see. Distortion detective. Okay. After a moment of silence, she slowly opened her mouth. A large-scale war was about to occur. If we made big enough contributions to that war, we may be able to avoid being destroyed. That wasn't a suggestion or a plea for help. It was a semi-mandatory request. The reward, we get to avoid termination. The red-eyed woman Nikolai you're talking to is rich, while Carmen is broke. Yeah, it's more like I was just confused. What the hell? Who? Just who? But like, I see, another teaser for other material. Um, her attitude was something else. The way she confidently delivered her speech in front of, her, of me gave off a sense of conviction. It was as if she was saying she's going to make the war happen. Baffled, I let out a bout of laughter. I knew we weren't in a position to refuse it. And she was right. A huge war broke out soon after. Thick smoke. Okay. So the R Corp. Okay, so the fourth pack with R Corp was able to. I see the smoke war. Okay, okay. I see, I see. I see, I see. Project Moon purposely. Did, I see. I guess it. I see, I see. Long ago, there's a huge battle between huge syndicates. I don't know what Bob was saying when. 
These kind of things happen all the time in the back streets. I had the misfortune of getting caught up in the middle of one. The fight was so fierce and intimidating. The young little Mio had to shiver in a corner. I couldn't find a gap to run through and there, were, um, there weren't any hiding spots around me either. All I did was crawl to a wall, crouch into a ball, and pray that no eyes fall on me. Stupid, wasn't I? My prayers didn't work. A syndicate member spotted me, and I closed my eyes tight, thinking it was the end. When I took a short breath in, I heard the sound of a sword cutting through the flesh, followed by the sound of a person clutching the floor. I thought swords like that would hurt a lot, but I felt pretty okay. The situation was so surreal. I was starting to believe I didn't feel my body hit the floor because a person's senses were, were dulled moments before death. <clears throat> then I realized I was staying conscious for too long, for someone that just got cut up with a sword. I mustered the courage to open my eyes. I got to see what's going on at least. You know what I mean? I slowly opened my eyes to a scene I'll never forget. A person covered in red, mass carrying all syndicate members in front of me. She was literally chopping them up with her massive blade, and they were helpless against it. I was looking at it in awe. I didn't even think to check on my, check on my body. Fud. The last thing I kept member down, the street was open. She looked around, turned to see me, and wow, my face would have looked so dumb. I don't even, rem I don't even remember that. Anyway, she pointed at an Annie with that weird sort of hers. Superhero Kali, pretty much, and yeah, it's with, it's when she has, she's a color, she's, she's a color, or progressing to become a color already, because, um, it's a um, weird sword, so that's obviously proto mimicry. And told me that I'd be able to save myself if I ran that way. And the rest is up to me. Instead of saying thanks, all that got out of my mouth was a stupid mumble like, ah. I leaned on, on a wall and barely stood up, on, stood up with shaky legs. <clears throat> I, need to I need to run before more people came come this way, but I was so terrified. Even the people who saved me. She was red all the way and looked so scary. While I was differing, she hired at me and approached me. Did I frustrate her? Is she gonna kill me now? Was my savior an impatient, ill-tempered freak after all? I collapsed on the floor. I mean, think about it. A scary human- Okay, no. Alright, it's already red mist. It's already full red mist. A scary humanoid thing, fully covered in armor, walking toward you with a greatsword decorated with red flesh. It was a miracle I didn't fail on the spot. She grabbed my arm, sent me upright and said in a dry voice, it's not the strong who survive, it's the survivors who are strong. Then she shoved me back, my back, and started running before I could thank her. I didn't look back once, I was so embarrassed comparing myself to her. Ever since that day, I trained myself, aspiring to become like the hero that saved me that day, and landed a job at R Corp. I wanted to become a hero myself and save the lives of others. What I wanted more than anything though, was to meet the person once more. R Corp. Participated in the most large battles in the city, so I expected to see her someday. I thought she'd have been alive all along while she, she was tough. I was going to thank her and show her how much stronger I had gotten since then if I had to get to see her, but I... Well, yeah, I couldn't tell her. Not just because I never saw the Red Mist again, or Gabura, as she is called now. We did meet each other a long time ago, but that's another story. I wouldn't have been able to say it even if I met the Red Mist when she was still alive and well. I got embarrassed of myself again. I thought I'd saved everyone, but after all, what I've been doing was far from being a hero. Hey, what do you think a hero is? Hmm, yeah, cause like, the whole rabbit team is like, shoot up people, like go blah blah blah, and like, indiscriminately fire. So, and yeah, like, I guess Kali is more of a hero than Mio. Like, Mio's still like, working with the R Corp and like, how, they just um, they get they just take part in like large scale battles on orders. So, hmm. but yeah, like yeah, they, they met again. But like the next time Mio would meet Gabura would be as a box, well, robotic AI box in the Bosmi Corp. Yeah, <laughs> hmm. Yeah, Mio met Gabura as a box. Maxim. The L Corp that came before Lobotomy Corp imposed unfair conditions. Weird question. What's up? Don't you mean the what's a hero question? Uh, it's a decent one to think about. Sometimes. I, I wouldn't say Mio's heroic. I guess that's why she gets self-doubt. 
Like, it's not exactly heroic what she's doing. Like, she's just working as a as part of the um, R Corp. Philip wants to be a hero. Trying to be a hero is really just like a bad idea in the city. True. But at the same time, I don't know. It's, it's like, it's those thoughts that separate you from others that allows the people to form an ego, pretty much. Like, it may be a bad idea in the city, but who's to say it can't be done? That's what allows them to form an ego, you know? That sort of thing. It's what allows them to form an ego in the first place, doing things that they, that they think couldn't be done in the city. That's what allows them to form an ego and be themselves. Or even distortion, but in the end, it's like, how will they do it? That's something. Project Moon's trial record, do you think the protagonist would differ from other gacha game protagonists? Um, it's, I don't know. You can't really say gacha game protagonist outside of like, I don't know, like, there's a lot of variety in gacha game protagonists, in all honesty. Like, by all means, we have like the self insert character, the one that we name ourselves. But like, um, I think we are. There is a self insert in Limbus Company, isn't there? Not the playable ones, but we take the role of a manager, I think. They mentioned manager in one of the thing, in one of the things, I think. So, yeah. Don Quixote wants to be heroic. We're expecting her to suffer. Yeah, it's like... Um, in Limbus, we play as Dante. Oh, okay. Alright, so we play as this character called Dante. Okay, okay. Oh, as in what? Wait, do you mean this Dante from Section 7? Or do you mean another Dante? For the namesake. Do you mean Section 7 Dante or... Okay, cool, cool. Some other Dante. Okay, cool. I didn't, I didn't see the details yet, but... I guess they wanted to go with the with the divine comedy um, sort of thing, but mm. I see, I see. It just it depends. Depends how much personality this Dante character we play as has. I mean, to be fair, honestly, in gacha games, there's a lot of variance. Like a lot of the time, to be fair, it is like silent protagonist, and then we we do say whatever. Um, we choose dialogue options and whatever, but there's a lot of, there's personality that shines through based on your dialogue options. Like you can have a you can be like snarky or whatever. And there is I think there is some gacha with um, that isn't as silent, but I'm not too sure. I can't remember, for the ones I played I don't feel that way at least. Like yeah. But we'll see then how it is. It looks like you have Dante as a voice. Yeah, they, they could have. A, I mean, they could have a voice, but I mean, like, are they like an active speaker in dialogue? I mean, are they like an active? Act, do they speak actively, for example? But yeah, not too sure. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see in practice. Like, like what's it called? A lot of gacha characters do have voice voice actors and voices, but. As in main characters, like the self insert. But hmm, the vibe is about Virgil and the driver. Okay, cool, interesting. <sighs> the Elcorp that came before Lobotomy Corporation imposed unfair conditions, and many wings weren't happy about it. This W Corp, who had to raise admission fees and get less trains running because of the energy deficiency. F Corp, which wanted to experiment with fairies to use them in various ways, but failed to produce satisfactory results because they didn't have enough energy. And many other wings had a thing or say, or two to say about the older L Corp, but didn't have the gall to say it out loud. There weren't many alternatives that could provide huge amounts of energy. These conditions soon became a hot topic among wing employees and city folk in general. Who's going to be the one to change that misery L Corp? Then someone next to them says, who would have the courage? Who would have the courage to do that? We all know that will lead to a war between wings. No choice but to live like this. But there was another reason to do something about the El Corp. Okay, yeah, this is now like really explicit about. Um, this is a really explicit about the El Corp being the smoke war. 
They produce a huge amount of fumes at first. I thought it was some kind of smoke, but it's not different from what ch factories chuck out. But over time, people realize it was affecting the residents around negatively. Some would start suddenly start become start wishing for the happiness of some others, and still others would spend some time staring off the space. What's more, people had a sense of sickness all over their bodies, and they started wandering around a corpse nest. It was like they were returning to their hometown or something. One day, some rich person visited us and said that our war will break out soon. Said we'll get benefits if we helped her. That was from Nikolai's story. They gave us a bigger thing to worry about than an upcoming destruction. A war is about to happen? Nikolai collected her thoughts and calmly asked why a war is going to occur. The person paused for a bit and spoke in a languid tone. I was creeped out how she said it like it was no big deal. When one person's pure ambition and another's tragic obsession join together, a dream is destined to be born. Oh, interesting. So who's she? Who who's it referring to, with a uh, pure ambition and tragic obsession? Like obviously, I do feel I do feel like it's Iron. Um, what? This is this is Benjamin, and this is this is Iron. Benjamin and Iron, or do you mean Carmen? A and C. Okay. Oh, I see. Oh, Iron. Iron's weird. Like he's not. His ambition was more to follow through with thing but i guess tragic in terms of the term in terms of like how carmen died so i guess you could see that yeah a and c mm. i see that's true 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 good point okay cool this really makes it explicit how well for the most part explicit how yeah um we're pretty much coming in well lobotomy corp was coming in to replace the smoke l corp our corp is pretty famous as a military company. As how many combatants die in battle, we fill the vacancy of new soldiers in no time. It was natural for Wing sending giving us a quest to wonder what kind of singularity we have to pump out so many mercenaries in such a short time frame. Besides our soldiers who weren't lacking in combat prowess by any means, there had to be more to, more to us than just hiring many people. The mercenaries of our corp don't fear death in the first place, they don't hesitate to carry out tasks. We're big in numbers, casualties are replaced quickly, and we fearlessly proceed and get the job done. Our corpse marks were ideal for outskirt explorations and other dangerous operations. How could the be possible then? People started making guesses. There has to be only one answer. That must be cloning people. No, they've got to be robots. Our corp has been developing war machines in secret. On the head of the rest of them, they tried to clone humans. That's a good point. Yeah, even during during the bottom corp. I thought our corp was like war machines, like robotics. I thought they were like war machines and I didn't think of clones. I thought it was like war machines or maybe a mix of both, but like I didn't know about I think it was both actually. A mix of these two. Um to some extent. But yeah, cloning thing. Endless living war machines, yeah. At the end of the day people just laughed it off, talking about how nonsensical their hypothesis were and how secretive singularities are. Um, nobody had the right answer. Well, we missed the mark a bit. It's true our corp uses cloning technology. For that, we had to make a promise with the head. No more than one person should exist in the city for more than seven days. At first I can understand, but I'm still not sure why they set a limit for how long. Is it related to some kind of ethic we weren't aware of? Oh no, we don't just clone humans and call it a day. We set the fittest among them. Inside the, hi inside the hatchery, dozens, hundreds or even thousands of them fight to death. We have to kill the clones that look like us, eat them, and prevail. The larger the population is, and the more time given, the finer a clone is made. And the scariest part of it all is finding myself beginning to think this way. Think about it. Is it really admirable, an admirable trait to have no fear of death? I have to disagree that... I have to disagree, disagree. When you know that you'll die someday, you don't put off your duties forever. You're bound to pick them up, even if you rest for a day or two. And your life's at stake, you try all kinds of things to survive. That's when people feel when they're alive. Maybe I said people guessed our secret right. Because our lives are much different from machines. One thing I'm afraid of is that hell of a selection game. As time passed, my fear of it changed to weariness. Is this the real life? Jeez. <laughs> right, even more parallels with Angela as well. Besides just the whole cycle of clones and suffering. 
it's like that sort of thing becoming not even feeling death anymore not even properly passing death every team in the fourth pack has its own caricature you'd think that we'll never get along with each other Rudolph the red nosed reindeer <laughs> you'd think that we'll never get oh true he's called Rudolph yeah <laughs> Every team in the fourth pack has its own caricature. <clears throat> You'd think that we never get along with each other, having each different personalities and powers and strengths, yeah? Surprisingly enough, we hunt in packs. The most operations, for most impressed by our differences, the Lapino Rabbit team is generally seen as a distracted and raving bunch. Maybe it's because most of us are nimble, but it also means we handle our missions quickly and with certainty. Our method is the cleanest, actually. Hmm. If I had to admit a teensy little problem with us is that we don't discriminate enemies from civilians. We do have a tendency to shoot first at any non any non rabbit in our that comes into our sight. We we'll leave ourselves open for attacks if we take our sweet time to t tell them apart. So we've got to strike first. But hey, we don't have any pro troubles behind that way. So that what's good is good, yeah. Bow junkies, yeah. They don't prop they don't really have a sense of like. Um, being indiscriminate, huh? Um, has his own character. Personalities just disappear, but we still do have most, most of our mission impacts. Us rhinos specialize in using physical strength. We're good at pushing ahead, if nothing else. I think we're the strongest team in the fourth pack. Smash him hard, block him hard. We often stand in front of the front line, instead of frail rabbits and reindeer. Rhino team's armor is thick and large, and we've got thick bodies too. Sometimes though my body starts heating up if I keep moving around and I can't control myself for a while. I mean it's because of the odd tech Arcop uses. Something about expanding muscles and pumping more adrenaline into the blood. That's what they told me. Oh, charge. I see. Oh, in case you're wondering, we see no singularity or anything. Plenty of others are making use of it, apparently. We never got to hear the deets. We do hear often we gotta watch out though. The Rhino team's got more destructive power than others, and once one of us starts getting all excited and enters the rampage, it won't be easy to stop them until they calm down. Rhino go forward, but one act like it's icy. Yeah, the steroids, yeah. It's it, it's like charge, to be fair. It's the whole charge mechanic, in a sense. But again, we don't lose control when someone has too much charge, but it is a way of like incorporating charge mechanic into these guys. And like other stuff does use charge, so... Every team in the fourth pack has its own characteristics. Uh, nonetheless, we move. It's hard to imagine us working together. Nonetheless, we move in packs for most missions. Overcharge, yeah. I mean, overcharge. Uh, yeah, overcharge does stun you, so that's a downside. The ranger team utilizes electric waves generated from, from brain waves. You see these horns? The electric stimuli generated in the ranger's brain are condensed at the tip of these horns. Um, the concentrated electricity is then collected by our staves for attacks. There's one thing we should be careful when we use the ability. If the battle drags on too long or we exert too much power at once, most ranger go insane. Ah, the most the symptoms are expressed in various ways, but in most cases they hurt their own com. All oh, right, that's why they take their own. That's why they take stagger damage. They they self inflict stagger. They hurt their own comrades or damage the psyches of others. We sometimes utilize K Corp singularities. Oh, white bullets. To protect our sanity or mitigate mental damage. But we can't afford to use it often. I see. Alright, purple tear. Uh, okay. Let me change the BGM now. Let's see. Oh yeah, let's go with uh, this. If you're reading this book, it must mean there's not something you want to know about me. I'm sure you have lots of questions, but I certainly can't give out detailed answers. It's hard to come up with a definition and explanation for a power that naturally emerges, you see. How should I put it? In that case... I can travel through time and space and see a myriad of possibilities. Too many for you to possibly fathom. It's probably a little bit different from time travel as you commonly imagine it. 
A future self who has experienced the present past returns to it, in order to change the future. Whatever is going on in the past, some kind of paradox is bound to happen to catch your cause causality, big or small. Little things can set off massive twists, like the flap of a butterfly's wings causes a tornado. Even even I'm afraid of bearing that risk. It could turn into a cycle of meaningless struggles. Yeah, I guess it's fair, fair to say that I travel to a completely different space. Even though that the possibility of that an infinity, if inf uh, that an infinity of different versions of the world you live in might exist. Let's say you sidetracked on your way home and were killed by a syndicate member. Some people theorize that I is the purple tear. It's Tear's son. Uh, mm, I doubt it. It's a bit too. There's nothing to link them. In all honesty, they're both what old-ish guy people. <laughs> So, nah, I don't, I don't see it. Unless there's something here. Let's see you sidetracked on your way, got killed by syndicate members that ambushed you. But in other worlds, you might have decided to go straight home. Mars is her son. That is her son. Hmm. True. Though someone said that the son's been dead for forty years or something. So, I don't know. Well, you might have noticed the Syndicate members... This thought never happened. Imagine the Syndicate as you stepped into the wrong alley and quickly got back on track. Those small choices can add up and result in countless worlds where countless outcomes unfold. I know what you're thinking. This isn't logic that can really be proven. I know all of this sounds unbelievable. People can't understand me because of that. You know, I have difficulty explaining myself. Yeah, died for 14 years. Yeah, 40 years. So, yeah, it's, just, it's a weird one. I made it sound grandiose, but this power isn't almighty by any means. So try not to use it carelessly. Yeah. The only thing that back then up is that Ayn's probably over 40. Yeah. It's a bit weird. Not that I expect you to care for such details. It's already complicated enough as it is, isn't it? If you know, just know that this power isn't omnipotent. No power is conveniently given to you in this world, after all. There's always a price you might need to pay. And that's a, there's a world I yearn to reach. No matter what price. I'm doing this so I can find a world where I can see that possibility. And in many worlds I've been to while doing this job, I saw people who were lost after losing their precious stuff, just like me. I couldn't let them just pass by. They looked so miserable and pitiful. Well, it wasn't entirely out of goodwill. The fact they were worth helping was a, played a big part. Once again, nothing in this world is free. I didn't quite pity them as much as I weighed up the favours they could give me in return. Thanks to that, I've become acquainted with quite a few fixers. And as corny as it is to say this myself, some even started calling me their mentor and became my devoted admirers. Those people asked me what I'm doing, going, why I'm going to sit great reps to see. A leading figure that commands powerful fixers who are on a le level of color? I don't know. All I wanted to meet is my son, whom I had to part with in the most unfortunate way. Meaning I don't care about ancillary stuff. I can see it so faintly. It almost seems to be within my reach, but it always ends up being a mirage. Oh, I see, so that's her motivation. I see. Oh, right. Blue Reverb said 40 years. I see. I see, I see. Alright, cool. So her motivation is to meet her son. I guess the son's dead. And so that she's trying to reach the world where her son lives. Or at least reach the world, but she can't quite yet. Huh. <laughs> You're her son? I was in no way a soft person. Maybe the son is not dead, he's in an alternate dimension. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, she's looking, she's trying to find the world where her son didn't die. So, who knows? Maybe one day she'll reach her goal. Huh. I, have, I was in no way a soft person, though I didn't view myself as particularly tough or rugged either. A straight and honest person. Accusations w would be brought against me for being unmoved by the death of any person, however close that may have been in my life. In life, a point no, not everyone would see as criticism. How could a person be so cold and heartless? You know, the basic being of bearing a fixer is to look after oneself first and foremost. At first, I spent much time thinking about it, asked myself many questions. Shall, as a person, value the lives of her colleagues? Although her position forces to keep her farewell to deceased teammates short. Since carrying out her duty and emerging victorious came first. 
shedding fewer drops of tears than the number of fallen was all the tribute I could pay. Bawling my eyes out would have stirred any sinus in for my colleagues. In the early days, the responsibility sometimes felt too heavy and burdensome. It's like you sod, in a sense, yeah. It's like if you sod that they feel they need to keep it bottled inside and have this, like, iron exterior. I don't know. Maybe just some weird time stuff with it that... So, maybe not 40 years exactly. It could be some weird time stuff. Always just really weird that point. Going to different dimensions to get a person already seems dead. It's like a bad idea. True, but sometimes you need to do something that seems like a bad idea in the first place, honestly. <laughs> I had never once thought that my method was incorrect. I believed it to be the best solution method for myself, and I deemed that problems wouldn't be solved any other way. Most fixers will probably think in the same way. Therefore, I could not understand the manners of Lowell, the newly appointed Section 2 director at the time. A person who tries to look after everyone, doesn't hide his grief-stricken face when a co-worker passes away. He's seen his crystal as clear as crystal, that his tenderness would one day lead his team to death. Yet he was faring better than I thought, a polar opposite to me. The ways I wanted to pursue, but gave up because I was faced with my limitations. It might have upset me for a moment, a principle I could not follow. For I was not allowed to openly express sadness over the death of the few, nor to protect the many. And my obligation to seize the chance of victory compelled me to march forward if there was something to count on. My capability wasn't vast enough to embrace every member of the team. Was my choice wrong? What did he have that I did not? Looking back, I don't think what I felt was envy or jealousy. The addition, addition was not a toxic emotion. I'm sure each of us had different specialties. It is said that people intersect with one another in some time, in some manner. I don't think the process to be natural at all. I was not a believer of faithful meetings. Faithful meetings. After all, two parallel roads could never cross. A relationship begins with a desire to know. Simple curiosity. To know more about a person or to go further and see what they are seeing together. Open, people open up new roads to merge into other roads. Into the roads of others for various reasons. A theory that Agalia is Iron Sun because of some Kabbalah stuff and because of Adam's tattoo. I mean, Adam's tattoo is more, I think it's more symbolic than actually being an actual tattoo. Like, it's more like to make him look extra godlike. But, hmm. I mean, it's a theory, so you can't really, you can't really fully say no, but we'll have to see how plausible it is. And also, at the same time, it makes, it means that it makes Ayn seem extra old. Like, who is his, who's the mother? <laughs> like, Ayn would be super old by that point. When Angelica is his daughter. Yeah, that'd be kind of weird. Not weird, but like... I don't know, but that makes like yeah, I don't I don't know how that would work then. The pattern is the same as the blue suit. Ah, I see. True. It could just also be like a reference to it though. Like, hmm. We'll see. Depends how depends how far out they want the story to go and all that stuff. I thought I would never care about him since he was so different from me. But my expectations weren't quite right. I want to learn about him. Um, learn more about him. I wanted to know what his emotion I felt was. I thought I could perhaps become a better person if I saw what he was seeing. To we were seeing together. There's one thing I realized is that the relationships between people always start from a small curiosity. Taking what I had said so far, you would think that this is such that is such a peculiar and untru untruthful love. You might think it's fussy. I couldn't give out a clear answer for I can't dare define what love is. What could I say or add about an emotion I felt for the first time, but one that I'm still struggling to figure out? Furthermore, every person carries a different form of love. There will be undoubtedly be some people who don't place much much importance in that emotion. You might even think that such emotion is absolutely useless in the city. Even if I were to define my love, this wouldn't come across as a sweet story if you cannot understand it. However, I can be certain that my sentiment towards Lowell was sincere. A so-called curiosity and sympathy, they bring out, a, they bring about attention, admiration, a bit of obsession, obsession. 
I learned soon enough that this isn't much different from what people call love. It may not have been something out of a fairy tale or drama, but we still cherished each other in, in our relationship. Perhaps I had seen, I had been under the impression that love is this concept that is utterly distant from me, but love that I came into was cramped yet big, and it felt burdensome at times. Uh, but he's a mother because of, uh, I see, some stuff related to that. Hmm. We'll see, we'll see. You said I'm wrong. I'm strong. The story, truth is I, I was weak and faint-hearted until the very last time I faced you. I have only grown so I am glad I lost you. Why did I miss everything while you were still by my side? Why do I spend the whole night longing for you and regretting only after you parted from me? I do have one regret regarding you, but I cannot trust my feelings for you. I don't think that's the case. Nah. It's a weird, it's a theory, but right now we have no explanation for it. Like, it's based around background knowledge, it seems, of like the whole thematic stuff with the tree of Kabbalah and stuff. But like, there's a whole lot of other stuff that doesn't work out. Like, you can have references, but not everything has to be one to one. Zhao and Lowell's love story is just as tragic as Ron and Angelica's. Hmm, true. It's, in this case, Zhao wanted to properly express her feelings for him a lot more uh, openly. Like, they both knew they were in love with each other. It's just that she wanted to be more open with him. But, like, at the very least, they're coming. They're not dead, dead. At the least. Like, Roland and Angelica will at least um, come back. I mean,. Zhao and Lowell will come back somehow while Angelica's dead. And then, of course, well, I've, like, Roland went on his rampage after Angelica's death, which was a lot worse effect as well. Like, Zhao at least had her anger directed to the library. Um, yeah, Lowell, I mean, Zhao, Angela, um, Roland had it just unleashed his rage upon the city. And then potentially Angela, if you did, if you didn't properly do realizations. There's a lot of names, yeah. <laughs> Moments of loneliness will come as I live. It won't be a thirsty longing for love, however. It is when I look to my side, yet there is no one next to me. When I am worn out from running somewhere. When I feel that my heart grows heavy than painful. Trying new things might let me forget it for a while. But a, for a moment, but the memories will still follow me for life. When I feel such things, I can go back to humanity, a familiar place, place, a familiar mind, a familiar person. And I plan to reunite with you soon. I want to tell you that I no longer have shame for the path I've chosen. That I finally freed myself from the guilt. Ah, uh, I guess she did have the idea that it was a suicide mission. To be honest as well. She did have the idea that the whole thing was a suicide mission. It isn't guaranteed they will appear at the same time. So who knows it might summon them years apart. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows which, which one will be first? Which one will come? Who knows? That adds an extra, you know, something spe like something they could do with the story for them. That's for sure. Especially if they see that, let's say, let's say Zhao comes back first, but sees like Miris, Chun, Seso and May come back first. Um, and then Lowell is nowhere to be found. At the very least, she does have the faith that Lowell will come back soon at some point, for example. Have you ever... Okay, so distorted Yan. Have you ever seen a glimmer of light when you close your eyes? It's blindingly bright at times and it shakes in a regular, in a regular shape at times. I don't think they were spawned in a different time. I think they were spawned in a different place. Mm, it really depends how we do it. Time and place, same thing in the end. Where like, it could be any, it could always vary. Sensation is often called a phosphine. Yeah, it's like some cipher or something. Uh, in Korean that you, if you type it out, it comes out as distorted yan in um, English or something. Something like that. It's some cipher I saw. Whenever I close my eyes, the uh, phosphine. Um, whenever I close my eyes, the blurry image of a bloodstained carpet appears to me like that optical night, optical phenomenon. The beginning of an unpleasant nightmare. Four mannequins that lost their face 
an arm and an arm, each are lying on a carpet, spilling red beads. Another mannequin has his hands on my shoulder. Shoulder. I turn around and look at the blood speaker in the mannequin's face. I can feel the vibrations coming from it, and if I can't hear what it says, but I already know what sounds this mannequin is making. The vibration precisely matches the words I remember. My heart starts beating accordingly. The damn power to recall. Oh, power of recall lost all my good childhood memories to oblivion. Yet it, this damn power, yet it, it brings back such remembrance every time I close my eyes. My response to it is always the same. Take the flower that slipped into my hands, nail it into the mannequin's heart. A beautiful tree, a tree, a beautiful tree in blooms grows from the cracks of the, from the uh, grows from the cracks the flower made. It's soft as the hands that caress me. It's as pretty as the sound that consoled me. It's as sharp as the noise that of that last moment I was scolded for the first time. Every branch that grows from the tree causes a piercing buzz in my ears, and the petals hurt as they brush past my cheeks as if to make me feel the pain they hold. I stand still, that my feet were tied, until my body is covered in scars. One, two, black marbles fall from the wounds. How long have I been in this cycle of pain? The nightmares have been with me for a good majority of my life. If I close my eyes, the memory of that time haunts me. Well, was he like massacred or something? Was like was his family murdered or something? From what I can understand, it's like it's a nightmare, so it's abstract. But was his like family murdered or something? If I close my eyes, the memory of that time haunts me. But like I see, it's like it's like Angela to ex to some extent, where like his memory is too good. His memory is way too good to the point where he just remembers that moment every time. I chose to close. I chose to keep my eyes shut because I'm. I thought I'd rather deal with deal with the ever echoing past. Oh, that's yeah. It's an Angela um, parallel. But no, no. Rather, she closes her eyes because she doesn't want to. Was it witness it and stuff? Well, it's somewhat of a parallel. At least they won't be visited by new kinds of pain. Prescripts kept coming without a break. The city folk meet different ends. Um, depending on the prescripts they received, even though their fates all share a commonality of cruelty, their resentment screams, tears, rage, and death. It's too much for my eyes. I always thought about how my life would have been if I stayed. Oh, but to be fair, yeah, he closes, he closes his eyes to avoid the present. If I said as a commoner, taking precursors like them, maybe I was better off back then. Maybe I should have died early so I could breathe again as another being. Why did the precursors give me that order that day? I traced back the nightmares to remember the past. Everything was, ord was over. I planned to follow them to death, but I didn't have the courage to end my own life. So I, I picked up the prescript that I thought would spell my doom at last and read it slowly. All the fresh-looking prescript contained was a message to be a command to be a messenger. It was pointing toward a beginning, not an end. I couldn't see a single word that said anything about salvation or death. After being numb for a while, I finally tumbled down to the floor and broke into laughter louder than a sound, any sound I had made before. I couldn't help but laugh at my state. I wanted to end my life because of prescripts, and now the prescripts won't even let me do that. Where has my free will run off to? Ah, I see. I guess maybe his family was affected by prescripts, but then he got told to become a messenger and like yeah I see I mean even then he could he still could have done it but I guess he was he felt shackled by the prescripts as well I felt I was frustrated he killed his family because oh he killed his family because of a prescript okay that makes sense now okay I get it I get it I get it I was thinking like his family was murdered because of a priest because of a prescript but I see I see I see I see all right, that makes sense. I see. Yeah, because it's like abstract nightmare dreams. So it's like, huh? Okay, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I see. No wonder he has so much resentment towards the prescripts. I was frustrated. Not even my own life was under my control. Where everything relies on the prescript. He's going to kill himself. Then, then he picked up the prescript to be a messenger. Yeah. Hmm. And I'll gladly play along. Even if I can't shatter the prescripts, I'll at least make a tiny crack. 
if I can show the masses that it's possible to, to oppose the prescripts, um, something might change. Something has to. It will make a difference. Once I had hope, I could see the way. And once I could see where to go, I had the strength to get up. Mm, right. Yeah, like, that's why um, Yan was close to forming, could have formed an ego as well. Like, like he did something to, like, as himself. He tried to do something as himself, but then he just faltered at the end. However, I realized it only just now. What I felt wasn't hope, and that ignoring that prescript and taking my own life as I planned might have been a true expression of my free will. True, there's that as well. <laughs> what is the right way to live a life in a place, in this place I must wonder? I'm not even dreaming of a life I can be proud of. How does one achieve the feeling that a life is bearable to live, let alone satisfied with? I thought I had found the un an answer to that, but in the end, I couldn't escape the prescripts. The prescripts are the city's will, as it is my will. I've realized something. Oh, you like, oh, you like Angela in the script? True. Hmm. All right. So there really is parallels with Angela, and then he becomes a machine distortion in the end as well. Hmm. Yeah. There really is parallels, huh? Or at least some comparison points you can bring up. The priestess in the city are the city's will as I thought I found the answer, but in the end I couldn't escape the priest. The priest the priestess are the city's will as it is my will. I've realized my limit. I feel as if I've hit some kind of wall I can't overcome. However, I don't feel all too forlorn and miserable. Maybe there'll be someone who can ride along with the flow rather than break it. It just won't be me. I'm not fit to accomplish such things. So I want someone to find an answer in my stead. I hope they can tell me that. Tell me how I can enjoy this nightmare. Damn. Ah, jeez. Hopefully, maybe when he comes back, he'll get something. Oh, Anta noticed the parallels herself. Hmm, true. She did mention about free will. She does have that stuff about free will, yeah. Hmm. Alright. The general ones are pretty long as well, I forgot. Oh well. Dong Huan. Hana so she seems to have the, taken an interest in the library and Blue Reverb. The two entities at the center of all the problems that have been happening in El Corp's nest lately. Now that they've smart their presence in cities in the city's sky as stars. I asked the caller who happens to be a friend of mine about it, and he said that so she is going to recruit Oh Vermilion! Oh Vermilion! Oh I'm gonna recruit him to hunt down the blue reverb and his cohort soon. Oh, I see. Yeah, I'll read. I'll, we'll get there, yeah. You've been making a quiet scene in El Corp's nest. In particular, the lives of many syndicates, fixers, and residents close to the library were lost to their hand. So the association couldn't just sit and watch anymore. They apparently set up a camp at the door of the library, but no one knows what they're waiting for. A couple of things they heard are that all sorts of sounds and noise are coming from the camp, and that large number of firearms belonging to the farm were abandoned on the ground. Maybe they launched an assault on the syndicate while I was still struggling to recover from the loss of the underboss and his capos. The ensemble's not like most syndicates, just trying to make money off turf, the turf of the wingless nest, that's for sure. But we still don't know what their goals really are, and I can't shake this bad feeling. Anyway, since I was asked to pay a visit to the library, it'd be worth investigating the case some more after I get this job done. Well, at least you'll be alive at least soon, but yeah, Vermillion is dead. Alan. The message we got wasn't unexpected. The boss of our organization had always been a rash one. To me, Yan took the wrong lesson from the lack of free will. With no free will, everything you do is meant to happen. So Yan making kind of precepts was meant to happen. True. So like, hmm, true. It's just that he got everyone who distorts our egos has someone to help push them along the way. Not, not, not really the voice, but like rather someone physically there. like. Philip had Pluto and Oswald, Zhao had Miris, and then Yan had, um, what was her name, Moira, uh, pushing him in that direction. But again, the voice also pushed Yan a bit extra as well. Uh, lack of free will. No free will, everything you do is meant to be meant to happen, so Yan making the kind of was meant to happen. Yeah, true. I guess he took it. He took it as like I can't defy the will of the city. No matter what I do, he can't defy it. But like it also means he should. 
I know if he viewed his own prescript, the fake ones, as his own free will, or at least he was something he chose to do, it would have been something. But then he feels like, oh no, it was all predetermined by the will of the city. Then it's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> In the end, yeah. How would he needed someone to like, like pessimism into nihilism to some extent? Like nothing matters anymore, so we'll follow the free. We'll follow the city in itself. We'll just go with the flow now and deliver these prescripts. Night owls. So it's usually is a good idea to zip your mouth shut at a gathering of bomb subsidiaries. If you don't have any good intention to make, shutting up is the best next best contribution you can make. Can never be sure if you're about to say is good is a good opinion either. The socket. You just missed, but did you read Full Allen? Uh, yeah, it's just. Oh, wait, did I read? Oh, wait, whoops, I missed a bit. It was a miracle that I managed to stay on the farm for so long. I told him to be careful. Alright, alright, he worked with the farm before. I told him to be careful with his words, and actions as the boss will affect his underlings as well. Yeah, here we are. I thought I'd flip my lid at hearing the news, but I didn't feel anger as I expected to. The only thought that came to my head was that I'd finally done it. With my head cool, this is my next move. At least, some of us will make it out of here thanks to the early warning. Oh wait, was it this? Was wait? Is he this? Is he the person who got? Uh, was it this the person? Was Alan the one who was like talking? No, it wasn't. Okay, never mind. It was just another incident. Okay, all right. It was. It was just another incident. All right, fair play. Oh, okay, he's. Oh, I see. It was another incident then. It's usually a good idea to zip your mouth shut at gathering of farm subsidiary. Oh, is it? Oh, is oh, right. Owls is a farm subsidiary. If you don't have any good suggestion to make, shutting up is the next best contribution. So even syndicates have subsidiaries. His boss got killed in the farm story. Oh, that was his boss. Oh, I see, I see. Hmm. I see, I see, I see, I see. Can never be sure if what you're got to say is good opinion either. But a socket in general. In other places, mistakes will cost you your own life. But losing your credit in meetings like that means the members of the syndicate are also biting the dust. So what did we do wrong to deserve the punishment of our boss being a moron? Ah, I see. I see, I see. Unjat. We are Ujat. We, while, it's a level, while it's a grade 1 office on the surface, we only receive requests from one person. It is for Lady Diaz and Lady Diaz alone. Oh, this person, you're, the, the brown haired person you're talking about. I see, I see. We are ready to perform any feat that she demands. Her pure ambition will bring her to a position of great power one day. We simply serve as stepping stones for her ascent to the top. Ah, I see, I see, I see, I see. I see, I see. Arena. Did you know many people whom insurance companies employ are those who have experience with um, this detective work involving investigation and deduction? Since we deal with huge sums of money, there are more than a few cases where the clients deliberately harm themselves or lie to us in an attempt to commit insurance fraud. And a considerable number of calls we get aren't actually mere incidents. How do we tell apart a real accident from the fake ones? Haha. <laughs> That's a bit of a secret. Well, maybe a little hint. Some, oftentimes, something will be off about the way they act or talk. I told you that folks who used to do detective work frequently jump over to our industry, right? Those armchair fellows suddenly have their wits. Their keen eyes will catch signs hidden in even the most elaborate of disguises. Receiver terms can be a little too particular, but I disagree. When handling of that much money, it doesn't hurt to be thorough with inspecting and determining validity of cases, right? If people start reaping insurance payouts for the simplest things, our business wouldn't survive. You'd be surprised to learn how many people in city still cling to the idea of get rich quick get rich quick schemes. Hmm. Murray insurer. In this city, money has more um, value than anything. You need more mo you need money to be able to start anything. Money is also required in case of unexpected events. An accident that will cost you a great deal of money could happen at any time. Insurance is useful in such cases. 
As long as the conditions are met, the payout will be will, will fill in for financial damage, of course. And all accidents will fit the insurance bill perfectly. There are insurance plans for fixers, associations, even wings. On top of secondary insurance, an insurer can take. It will take a long time, long while to list all the insurance that exists in the city. There's a wide range of carriers and plans to choose from. It's fulfilling the needs of different types of individual groups. You never know what danger awaits you. True, yeah. But then insurance, like in one of the other ones, mentioned how they're way too expensive to be worth it. And also, their con the terms and conditions can be pretty tricky. Mr. Krabs is the perfect city dweller. Ha! <laughs> A friend of mine who was trained in the same workshop as me told me about this place, said some new tech was discovered recently. Something about tinkering with the mind to use it to your advantage is honestly more powerful than I could ever imagine. Apparently it's more powerful. I'm honestly not very good at forming an impression of something when I just hear or read about it. So I told them I didn't, I don't get it. And then they said something about maybe going to the library would help. We've been researching this new and exciting technology lately. And we say we're too scared to head into that place, even if it's vital information to be found. They weren't um, the type of person to get physical, so I understand. But I tell my buddy I will visit that place for him once I'm finishing developing this, this one thing. There's a new gadget to test anyway, and to witness a technology that's still obscure and hot off the presses. Well, this makes your heart throb, doesn't it? I wonder who this person is then? Who's this person... Who's this friend of theirs that... That they're talking about. I wonder. I wonder who this person they're talking about is then. Maybe we'll meet them in the future. Leaflet Workshop. It's a good place. Offers serviceable weapons to fixers at reasonable prices. One one of the workshops, yeah, but which one? Like, it feels like it's meant to be a, a specific person. Like, that they're being talked about. Unless it's for... I don't think it's for her own workshop. Oh wait, in the same workshop. Or is it not trained in the same workshop? So it's not the same workshop, though. It's not leaflet. Maybe. Offers serviceable weapons to fix it at a reasonable price and sells quality product weapons to underground syndicates at higher prices. There's been cases of the opposite happening sometimes, but I, that's not what ha matters. Just want to emphasize that people from all walks of life visit our workshop. Oh, and I heard some workshops have membership clubs. The select few chosen by the workshop owners are sent an invitation, or so I heard. Business would be much handier if we adopted the same system as with everyone at everything else. Greeting guests is the one thing that's more dangerous than developing new weapons when you have when you run a workshop. Bayard. Fired. There weren't This wasn't Le. This wasn't always the prim and proper office of Amnable fixes it is now. It's the complete opposite, actually, full of uncontrollable punks. I tried to gather the rascals in one place and lead them, but it never worked out smoothly. It was a ragtag band of people without place to call home, like rats. So I got my frustration out of my chef and I met my, friend, my old friend Morgie. Oh, maybe I'm more familiar with the name Morgris. Who? I don't know. Who's Morgris? Morgri? Who's this? Anyway, after my ramblings, they said that there's someone in the office who would be perfect for the job. I took the offer since I didn't have any better ideas. Um, their name was Renaud. At first, I didn't expect that young spring chicken, the spring chicken was able to do much. I was surprised to see that he was only needed a week to convince everyone. A guy who looks much younger than me, Renaud. Is that another Charlemagne? I feel familiar. Is that another Charlemagne character? Oh yeah, uh, no, it's not. It's not Charlemagne. But it's, an, it's just it's a name from something. But I don't think it's Charlemagne. Oh no, it's involved with Charlemagne. Um. Okay, Renaud. Oh, Renaud and Bayard are part of the. Um. Renard and Bayard are part of um, the Charlemagne story. They're not Charlemagne, but they're part of the story. Um, you know the Twelve Fixers, what their namesake is from. Like Roland, 
Astolfo, Olivier, all that stuff. Um, the Charlie Man story. Um, oh, Charlie Man is portrayed as vengeful and. Okay, cool. Okay, so, oh yeah, Mogri, okay, Mogri, Bayard, and Renaud, they're all part of the Charlie Man story. Um, I see, they're all part of the story. It's just, a, it's a, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're not, um, in the same, they're part of the, the like, Bayard, Renaud, and, um, Mogri are part of the story, um, are part of the story. Charlie Man part of the mythology at least I see guy who looked much younger than me yeah he had a way of words that proved some and for those who wouldn't listen he settled it with a contest of strength like some part of the back streets back then I was kind of jealous seeing Renard handle something that he struggled with like it was nothing but now I've accepted that he's a much better man I know that I wouldn't have yeah, I, I don't know it too well myself, but it's part of Bayard, Renaud, and Thing. They're all part of uh, uh, the Charlemon uh, story. But now I've accepted that he's a better man. I know I wouldn't have managed to do it myself. I could have booted him out like a stubborn old man. I have better things to keep than my pride. Charles, oh, yeah, Charles' office, the place um, Renard worked, was popular among fixers. Okay, cool. A lot, right. So it just goes into right into mentioning Charles' office. It was the subject of a lot of gossip for a good reason, as it was a grade one office consisting of a few elites, handling any many requests with ease. People would often wonder what kind of fixers were in that office. All we know is about the office that its fixers wore luxurious clothes. And the office interior was fancy as well, in a style unique to the northern side. Now there are 12 fixers led by someone called the Captain, and they've all parted ways now, living their own lives, that's about it. Outside of Renaud, the person who helped us, we've only ever seen Mogri and Astolfo, who he would sometimes accompany, and someone called Bradamante. Ah yeah, I, I know this name as part of the Charlemagne as well. Their attire and weapons were also distinct from what I could see of just those four. I couldn't find anything in common. In the pressure, the pressure I felt from just being around those powerful fixers, um, the stark difference between me and them was something. I couldn't think much else. I, um, I don't see Roland as the captain. I can't see that. I can't see that. It seems to be, um, like I think Charlie Man. Charles would be the captain, I assume, and then the rest would be the paladins of Charlemagne, um, or something. I'm not too sure how the, how the mythology goes, but I don't, I don't think Roland was the captain. Like from the flashbacks and from what we know of him, he doesn't seem the captain type. He's not. I don't see him as the captain. Also, yeah, Roland didn't wear fancy stuff. Yeah. To be fair, um, yes, looks. I mean, luxurious, luxurious clothes. Like to be honest, Roland's suit could be really good as well. To be fair, it could be a really luxurious suit for all we know. It could be like, like spiced out with all those, like, um, stuffs. So, it could be a look a really good suit for all we know, but it's not fancy. It's luxurious. All right, and here we are. So that's interesting. So there's more like background a bit to Charles' office. His suit is expensive, but no. Hmm. All right, now we're finally here at the Imperatus Civitatis. Hannah Fixer's page. Each association has a creed or maxim that reflects its atmosphere. Some emphasize gallant passion. While others aspire to be quiet and cold. The Han Association is no exception, and that has a number of outwardly seen principles. Coincidentally, they represent the most basic idea of fixer of the fixer must have. So the end and the pianist will be after the ensemble. Yeah, I guess I'll read the pianist one, yeah. Yeah, QA Project Moon will 
return. Yeah, I see. That's yeah. I guess that'd be cool to see. We did we did see a teaser in Roland's bad ending, so with Astolfo. So that'd be cool to see. We must be we must exercise concentration and resoluteness in all situations. Be diligent to detect the emergence of a new flow. Yet be wary not to be swept by the flow yourself, as our occupation includes placing some on low positions and holding others in high regard. We must secure the values that constitute our frame, while amending outdated parts of our ideologies. Thus, we need to have an open mind that we can accept opinions that differ from our own in moderation. Be willing to listen to criticism of others and acknowledge it, but be curious not to throw yourselves into confusion by accepting any and all opinions. Changing yourself without due consideration. Change what needs to be changed, but be stubborn about the rules we maintained. In conclusion, we mustn't fall for temptation or deception. Much like how a foundation influences the structures that stand on it, these principles being serve as a basis for all associations to uphold, being the association that supervises the systems or the fixes in general. The principles of the Hana are also applicable to the mindset any fixer should have. There are twelve fixer associations across the city. The Hana Association. Um, <clears throat> is the one in charge of general management of the rest. We're renowned for rate, rating the threat levels of hazards that occur in the city and grading them, grading faces and offices. On top of that, we give out fixer licenses, issue official documents about certain requests, and assign colors to fixers who prove themselves up beyond the grading system. Our association calls the shots on pretty much everything regarding fixer activity. Although, there is one thing the Hanna Association can't touch on. The ratings of hazards in the city are as follows. Urban myth, urban legend, urban plague, urban nightmare, star of the city, and impurity. Most other associations only deal with star and lower. Even though Han Association has control over grading hazards, there is one grade Association can't assign, the impurity. Only the head has this authority to decide that. I don't know the exact rationale behind these dating impurities. From what I can see, they seem to declare beings that defile the city as impurities and banish them to the outskirts. How does the head manage that part? Since things like the city, everything like the city aren't subject we are qualified to discern. Yeah, it's like as I, men I mentioned before, like, like when in Angela's bad ending, the library goes back to being called. Um, a star of the city, pretty much. Like, because Angela's human again. Because, because Angela's human, the, sit, the the library goes back to being called... Um, uh, it goes back to being called um, a star of the city. And then, as all stars do, they fall, eventually. But then impurity is something that's above all else. Something that gets the head really pissed off. So yeah, maybe something like honestly, like you could have like if the rabbit team was able to constantly do cloning but never wasn't able to be stopped. For example, if our corp like kept on doing cloning but wasn't stopped ever, um, they would become an impurity. If they kept doing cloning but wasn't stoppable, <laughs> they would become an impurity. Or like I don't know, maybe some if like some tax evasion. Um, thing happened like I think if the library don't pay taxes they'll become impurity <laughs> true I, I don't think they paid taxes in the first place they don't make money from this at least but yeah the impurity is because of Angela being an AI that's sentient and like you know big Hannah Tvai Tre Shi Ching Lu Seven Ufi. Oh, so we we only know up to eight then. Ufi is eight, I guess. Ufi is uh, what's it? What language is it? I can't tell. But okay, it's a number at least. Alright, cool. 
Some people ask how stars of the city, the highest level of urban hazards, are any different from Puritus. They wonder, aren't they disrupting the city's order? There's a, there's a mod about the true the, the, about true reception of the head one. Easy difficulty too. It's hard. I see. I see. If you ask me, the city as it is exists with the stars. May it might be what the head thinks is as an ideal image of the city. In the universe that is the city, the center of mass forms for each person who bears a wish for something. In clusters of dreams, comparable to interstellar matter, gravitate towards the center, driven by those force people exert in their attempts to reach their goals. Each nebulae repeatedly expand and contract until they finally fulfill their wishes, creating a star whose glow we can observe. The people who witness the spark of the star admire how brilliantly it shines in the sky, in the dark, and take the hope that it will shine as brightly one day, making yet more centers in the universe. Of course, some people have their eyes fixed to the ground, too busy to gaze at anything other than their path ahead. However, once a person sets their eyes on the star, they begin to head towards it, using its guidance as a compass. Though they probably they probably aren't going to become a star themselves, they may want to shine with their dreams for once. Not to indulge in the sense of the superiority that comes from being high up in the city sky. <laughs> oh, is Harold female? Is it? Let me... I have the art book. Let me quickly see. I could see... I mean, to be fair, we have Emma. Who's a male character? Oh yeah, yes, I see. Yeah, cool. That's cool. That's fair play. Fair play. Yeah, Harold's um female. That's fair. Fair play. Fair play. Yeah, it's in the art book. That's fair. Fair play. Fair play. Oops. One sec. Okay. Yeah. So. I know, I, I keep thinking of, um, with the way they revere stars of the city, um, what's it called? With the way they refer to stars of the city, um, I keep thinking of Blue Star. Hmm. I mean, it is how it is, so, it's all good. Hmm. But yeah, I keep thinking it's like Blue Star and stuff. I see, I see. I keep thinking of Blue Star and stuff when it comes to like the Star of the City thing and how people revere it. Hmm. But yeah, we got like, what's it called? Like, Emma. So it's not, it's a common thing with the characters in this game. Like, you know. Ron and I were long-time partners in Charles' office since the year dot. Um, there were 12 members in total, excluding Angela. <laughs> I mean, people have names, so it did be like that. It did be like that. There were 12 members in total, excluding Angelica, who joined the office later on. Oh, I see. Angelica wasn't part of it right away. Join the office to resolve the case of the Blood Red Knight. Consisting of rather few fixtures for a grade 1 office, I took on various requests, painted the strengths of the 12 members, who had different quirks and characteristics. Roland and I got along well together, so I often worked with him. Well, not exactly for that reason. To be precise, someone had to keep his impulse, to jump into action before thinking on a dog's leash. Ah, Valor without forethought is little more than a blunt. Uh, more, a little more than a bluff, and there is more strength in discretion than recklessness. I wonder if you remember this piece of advice I gave when you were still prone to take action without thinking. I remember you con conceding it and taking a step back. If I gave you that advice, now I understand that's not your fault. Thinking alone doesn't make one make progress, and too much caution can be a harm to oneself. I had the prudence. I had the prudence, and you had the unhesitating action. Uh, I mean, names are fair play, to be honest, so... Mm. However it goes. We helped each other with our strengths, and we could just live on by our dealing with matters at hand, back in the day. Maybe those were the days when we could laugh and lament the most, 
and carry out our lives just like that. But now that we've come too far to get back, to go back, so did you. So did Charles' office. Yeah, because Charles' office disbanded. So, yeah, they're all, they've all gone their separate ways now. It'd be nice to have them, yeah, all together again. That's for sure. All right. The ensemble. All right. Agalia isn't too long either, huh? All right. Now we're at this point. Let's go. The last, the last stretch. Uh, one sec. Lost us to Greta. <laughs> Blue Star Sister Complex. Uh, I think he just... He does say a lot about Angelica. I think it's a bit obsessive, but then again, he was shocked to the core about her death. So... <laughs> he was rocked to the core with her death, as much as he seems like he's chill. When he heard the news and rushed to the scene, only a hideous musician who had concluded his performance and permanently shut the piano's lid with his torso awaited me. For the first time, emotions I couldn't understand what up inside me. It's hard to define what they were, even now. It felt as if a deep, deep tenebrous strains were seeping out of my heart. Alas, I didn't shed tears from before that piano where your body rested. For I soon realized that you were no longer here. Bear. That's right. You have a gentle breeze that brushes past my face, and the clouds that fly in the sky, which gives me heed of your presence from overhead or underfoot. I thought you had left me, but you would always come back. That's why I care no longer about the skin and flesh you wore out momentarily. Angelica, I'll follow after the name you gave me. Alberto. You used to call me that down in those horrible underground chambers. Oh yeah, right. Because they mentioned right. Didn't um, didn't Angelica mention she was a um, that Angelica mentioned that she was a test tube, like not test tube, but like she was she was raised in a lab or something like that. She was raised yeah in, in a lab yeah yeah. Oh, I see I see. Wait so then. Are they siblings by blood, or do they, or do they see each other as siblings? Because um, he mentions Purple Terror, yeah, and also Angelica told Roland. Angelica told Roland as well. All right, wait, but then are an are Galia and Uber are and Angelica um, blood siblings, or just they they seem they're close like siblings. They look. For, they, they do look similar. Yeah. I create a new world, one where people can live bountiful lives even if they have nothing, free from obsession or greed. When we lose the fixation of our bodies, we won't be afraid of death anymore. No rest will be eternal. I have a twins. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll create. All right, Casey. Yeah. That explains a lot better his motivation. He wanted to create a world where. I see. I do get that goal, but the whole thing with um similar to Lisa and Enoch. Oh, then if they are like if it's Lisa and Enoch, then it's more like they see each other as brother and sister, but they're not actually blood related. Then, in that case, they're not blood related. They just see each other as blood brother and sister rather than being blood related. Hmm. Then again, they were both in the lab, but who knows? Then again, maybe the, maybe, maybe the lab just caused a lot of white-haired kids. <laughs> it just had a lot of white-haired people. What does Uberto mean? One sec. Uh, Berto is an... Oh, it's Italian. It means Hubert. I see. It's... Uh, Okay, yeah, uh, Uberto is like Italian Hubert. Uh, I don't see it that way. <laughs> I just, I don't see her having feelings like that. It's more like this, I feel like 
Lisa's towards Enoch is more this wonder. Like this feeling of wonder at how someone who's the same age as her pretty much can have this kind of um how could how could he have this expectation for like the future like the meaning of life that sort of thing like how how could someone like that like it's like this wonder towards him like she does miss him a lot that's for sure but it's also this kind of like wonder towards enoch like how can he think like that um let's not go there as in in the city we uh that's never brought up but let's not let's not go there let's not go there <laughs> let's not go there it's never brought up but let's not go there all right back to philip how much longer must i walk until i reach the end how tightly must i shut my eyes cover my ears and zip my mouth to keep what's around me safe where I can feel a semblance of happiness that won't leave me. I thought I had to overcome this pain and rise above it to become a tougher man. That's why I wouldn't lose those that are close to me. Um, however, a human is fragile by nature. If one is too weak, they, could, they would crumble. And if one is too hardy, they would snap. I figured there's little I can do to the calm disorder of this world. How can I live on without pouring to despair? A mind that is willing to let go of things that were destined to leave at some point. A mind that is content to have nothing. I feel that my, it's important to refrain from thinking that anything is in my possession. Uh, don't worry about it. It's more like... It's more like it's not really... How to say? It's not even... It's not really a thing that's, in, that's explored in-game. So... <laughs> it's not really... Like... You, you have no... Like... Proof for it either way so it's not something explored in game <laughs> hey, don't worry about it i followed your troop in order to find a way to be happy what did it, did it do to me staying with you only exacerbated my suffering defeating the whole purpose of joining you in the first place i do want to add that you are not at fault here though i was the one who tormented myself had i known what i know now back in the past would I have lessened the pain or changed anything? No. I don't blame myself for a choice in that moment. Even the failures of misery in the past were all part of the boys leading to this moment. So I'm thankful that I managed to achieve something for once. Philip is bold. Well, it's... <laughs> kind of. So I might have drowned in my own tears and sorrow back then. But ultimately, I'm grateful for the choice I made. No things in the world. Damn. I guess at least I know he's he has like he has a sort of peace with himself, but I wouldn't say it's the best way to go about it. Like, and then of course we got distorted Philip that still attacked us. So, <laughs> well, I don't know we'll see. Uh, we'll see with more Philip in the future, maybe. But he has a peace with himself, but it's not the best kind of peace. I guess he has a meaning. Yeah. It's the nihilistic piece. Yeah. I don't... I know. I can't see... I, I can't personally vouch for that kind of... Like, I can't support that kind of thing. Where he's just, like, nihilistic and, like... In a sense of... Um, it's a really... How to say... Sad way to turn out. Where, like, he has no one. Pretty much. Just to have no pain. In a sense. Eileen, where we live, there is nothing that can be achieved with our, your own free will. Hold on, one sec. Cool. Um, a flow that we simply cannot go against dictates us. What we call gears are simply there to share the flow. Show the flow. You can't see it with your eyes. Nobody who knows created this massive current, or why we must follow it. This flow never leads to bad places, however. Rather, thinking that such a place exists in the act of defiance in itself. We must... We merely watch events unfold as bystanders. You walk along a path, was it you who laid the path there? You didn't teach yourself to lift your legs up, to propel you forward. You simply moved. Furthermore, the decision to walk wasn't your own either. Still, too many believe that they moved their own legs as their own volition. 
It's a shame to see them struggle to escape the flow, but they're only strength from salvation. Yeah, I, I, I really can't agree with Eileen. It's essentially like, it's likewise with, um, in, not really priest, well, it's less in your face as priests, but it's more like, it's really go with the flow in the end that people have no free will. Bro, everyone is just a gear in the system. I can't um, agree with this either. <laughs> Cultist, yeah. I can't agree with this at all. <laughs> I get I get why, but I can't personally agree with it. Alright, the one we've been waiting for. <laughs> Greta. It's an era where humans are dominated by the act of consumption. When you're hunger, when you're hungry, you get annoyed, and when starvation touches your raw nerve, you turn violent. That's how humans are, and people who eat the same food will grow similar. So the high and mighty beings that want to rule over you demand you eat the correct stuff. What's when something's correct? It's gonna be something incorrect. Incorrect food. It's gonna mean humans eating humans, don't you think? Why do people think eating is natural, but then draw a the line eating their fellow man? Who decided it so and why? Because human life is precious? That's a flawed statement. What makes the lives of animals less precious? We're not about to go down a boring philosophical riddle about the weight of life now. If humans clearly have more value than animals because of we're the apex predators. Oh, the one, no wonder she turned into a shark. <laughs> apex predator. And then there shouldn't be any problem with a pack of humans that rise above the rest and pair the others. We've got two options. First, don't eat anything. Hey, I'm not suggesting we all starve to death. Your body is taught to eat. So what if you change that habit? Maybe instead of food, your empty innards can be filled with possibilities of other of kinds. If you're in a fan of that, there's a second option. Eat anything. Just trace the smell of the blood and stuff what you find in your mouth as your brain tells you to. Alright. Um, let's see. I can kind of see the whole better person. Yeah, not extreme vegan, rather. I don't even see extreme vegan, but more like... I don't see it like that. It's more like she doesn't, she's not held back by the ethics. Um, not bad written for Hod. I didn't mean that. It's more like... How to say? Like I like what's it called? Um, like this whole thing here, she's saying is that if we all eat the same stuff, um, if you if we all eat the same stuff, therefore we everyone would be better people because there is no incorrect or correct food. We'd all be eating the same stuff, and then everyone would be better people for that. So it's more, not really vegan, more like she wants people to eat the same stuff as everyone else. No, no, everyone eats the same stuff. I get, I can see, like, her philosophy, but as I mentioned, like, however so many times now, is that my thing, my thing with Greta was that she just got little to, like, very little build up, like, very little to none, like, the only thing she had is like the eight chefs mentioned, but we had like little idea of who she is and who she was and what she was fighting for, um, or at least what she could fight for until she met with Hod, like, like what's it called? Um, Philip, we meet him, we know Philip, we've been through all of that stuff with him. Eileen, we've at least seen her with the gears. We, we, she got her own scene demonstrating who she was in the full stop office um, thing. In, in the full stop office reception. And then we see her hanging around Argalia for a little bit. Bremen is like second least second least known. No, Tanya. They're like third. Bremen is like third least. The third least known but at the least with Bremen, they were like mentioned throughout the story with um, like Jack. I weren't clear at the same time as eight chefs, but with uh, Bremen, they were 
mentioned back then. We we fought the other members of Bremen, and then we um, obviously we, they closely relate to, to the pianist, and also they're really thematically tight alongside. They're really thematically tight with um, Neza's lore of art. It really ties everything together with Neza, with the whole. While he does appreciate art, he doesn't want people throwing their whole lives away um, for the sake of art. Oswald, we we got to meet in Noah Emma, and then he gets he gets enough. That's the thing. Oswald gets enough uh, development. He gets enough. We get with, we get his stuff with Philip. We get the stuff with Noah and Emma. He gets enough, and then of course. Um, Oswald has a really, really, really good clash of um, philosophies with Tifereth because his one is like having no expectations, no thinking about the future or that stuff, just thinking the now. Well, which is like Tifereth back in the Bosme Corp. And then Tifereth moved past that point, that thing. Tanya, I'd say, is the second least developed, but she's a really simple character. Like, Fighting for survival and like strength and stuff. Like with Gabura it works because what do you what do you use the strength for to protect while Tanya uses her strength as as a means for survival of the fittest. And of course Tanya's not the type that would protect the weak. She would just like, you know, she would serve under those who are stronger than her, but she won't use her strength to protect those weaker than her. Battle junkie, yeah. In a sense, but she also won't. It's a simple me. It's a simple thing about survival the fittest and strength and stuff. But it does fit Gabura, and we do kind of see her showing her strength during her thing. Second least developed, but still, it was something more than Greta. Um, Jai Hyun, like we got, like we, Love Town. We got love. We got Love Town from Jai Hyun. We have like a few mentions on puppeteers. We have the puppet. We have Love Town and puppeteers with I with him and uh, Elena. And then of course we have Jai Hyun coming up. Obviously Jai Hyun um, was a uh, what's it called? Jai Hyun had beef ish with Roland because Roland came and killed his puppet son. Well, destroyed, burned down his lab, burned down everything he had. So that is extra stuff for Jai Hyun. And then Tanya sort of had the cartel, but the cartel thing was with, with Roland. But like, that was like such a footnote, you know, honestly. It's, it's more of a footnote. And then Elena, um, like, Love Town again. We, got, we had Love Town with her, but then, um, at least we also had Blood Red Knight, and then we also have Nosferatu. Nos Nosferatu does relate to her, and then we also have Blood Red Knight as well, which was the whole thing we saw if that was getting mentioned before as a star that fell, and also as uh, when Roland and Angelica fought them. Pluto, we got to see a lot of. We see we saw Pluto during full stop. We saw we saw during. Um, um, we saw Pluto during, um, what's it called, Kane office, and we see Pluto in the flashback. Even Eileen, yeah, Eileen's father was in the flashback, which led him to, which, which led him to causing his distort, his daughter to distort. But with Pluto, yeah, we got to see him in Kane office. We got to see him. He gets mentioned in the Dawn office stories. As the one causing distortions, and he's he's the one who recruited, who came along and recruited, Plut um, who who recruited Bremen, and also made helped make um, Philip the Stork. So like, it's not like being rude to Greta. It's more about about her lack of involvement. Yeah, also in the Rat story. Yeah, Pluto and Jai Hyun. I mentioned the rat story, like so. It's like because she was paired with Hod, I'm a lot more critical about it. It's just in the sense that 
I wish HUD had a more developed um, counterpart um, to clash ideals with. <laughs> That's what I mean. I wish HUD had a more uh, a better, like a more developed counterpart. It's not that Greta's bad. It's just that we barely know her. And by the time we fight her, that's when we learn about her. At least everyone else. I mean, we see Greta slightly during like Purple Tear or The Thumb. But it was just like, haha, shark, eat people. And like, haha, eight chefs, eat people, eat humans. But like, we don't see any of this philosophy from her. At least we don't see, we don't get any build up. We don't get much build up to her. So, yeah, I just wish... <laughs> like because he was paired with Hod, I wish Hod had a better, had a more developed counterpart. Like I don't know, maybe, maybe we could have fought at least some of the eight chefs. Like the only closest thing to eight chefs we got was um, was Pierre's bistro. <laughs> That's the closest thing we got, and she wasn't even eight chefs. Her figure. <laughs> I mean, she's built up by all means. She's she's strong. She's muscular, but like you know what I mean. <laughs> but yeah, it's more because yeah, Ho's my favorite. But yeah, cute chef hat. I just mean in the sense that <laughs> I just wish Hod had a better counterpart to like clash ideals with. Like I don't know, maybe someone who like um tried to be a better person but then failed at that spectacularly something like that like honestly like you could you could pair philip with hod and it, it would work as well like philip works with hod and malkuth because um like philip saw himself as trying to be the better person yeah I, yeah yeah <laughs> i know you're just joking around i just want i just really want to explain my point I know you're. I know you're joking around. I just want to explain my point from like a story perspective. Like, as a Hod fan, I just wanted Hod to get more. <laughs> as Hod is my favorite, I just want Hod to just you know have more to it. You know. <laughs> but yeah, um, what's done is done. Bad is that. This is this. Etc. Etc. Like, I had Hod fight. Philip as well because like not as in fight Philip during the whole um, his incomplete ego no 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 when he came back as crying children I had Hod fight him as well because I did feel they were thematically similar um, but everyone else I don't think they would have like um, matched with Hod all that well like to be a better person Elena is a similar case where she could work. She works with Bina because it's like she rejected trying to break the cycle of feeding. While, but then again, it's more like as is, like with Greta in that case. But it works with Bina ish. Like Elena was okay for Bina, but but in the first case, is bad. But in the game mechanic is good for her. Yeah, game mechanic is fine. It's more like. Like, yeah, game mechanically it's fine because bleed you, ha you you needed bleed or like some status ailment on Greta to like um, get her defeated. Otherwise, she's way too tanky. Otherwise, um, just um, yeah, I just feel yeah, mm, mm, mm. pretty much like yeah, game mechanically it's good because you you're using the, the advantage of Hod. Which is bleed, like a heck ton of bleed, to defeat Greta. Gameplay wise, that's not that's fine. Yeah. Game mechanics for the parallelism, uh, kind of. Like you have burn, you have burn. Yeah, yeah. For how do you focus on game mechanics? Yeah. I just think they could have done a little bit more for Greta to like flesh her out some more. Hmm. Like um, the funny thing. Like with Bremen, the funny like g game mechanically, their thing is like um, stagger. Don't stagger them too fast. While ironically, Neza can potentially stagger too fast. 
Oswald, um, I use Tiff Zeldia, so <laughs> I don't know how much that will clash, but he does work in terms of like Nihil. He look he's similar to like Jester of Nihil. Yeah, I, I, I guess they thought of game mechanic first, but I feel they could have found some way. Like, at least made us fight one of the eight chefs, at least. Fight one of the eight chefs in the reception, besides Pierre, or something or another. Like, Tanya works for, like, gameplay-wise, because you, you, you needed, like, GSV to destroy Beatdown, or whatever it's called. And also because speed with um, Gibbara is the strongest. Gameplay wise, honestly, gameplay wise, they all match up. Argalia's deck is meant to be soloed by Roland's Black Silence. And also, right, yeah, Silence versus Sound, Reverberation. That's a funny, that's a cool thematic thing. Eileen, gear. Well, it's more aesthetically gears with your sod on his floor, I feel as well. Well, to be fair, with your sword, you also use smoke a lot, so it does clash in that sense. Jaihun, it's like you're both wanting to make sure that nobody, like, Jaihun ensures his puppets don't die, while you have to ensure your own, um, your own, um, librarians don't die because you, because of, um, the Wizard of Oz cards, all, um, they all use, the, they're like, power of friendship so you don't want you it's group it's a group of friends it's a group versus a group he has puppets um Chesed has his librarians Elena I mean it's like bleed versus like fairy or like both it's gameplay wise your you, you, Bina is like holding back um the vibration versus silent yeah yeah Mm, mm, mm. Elena like was like bleed in a sense um, and all that stuff so it's kind of works with like fairy-ish but like you are using um, Bina to combat against um, Vermilion Cross and they're both like older figures it feels like Pluto um, honestly it's like it's like like, Pluto is like the devil, so it kind of, like, thematically, religion, like, you have Hokma facing the devil, <laughs> in a sense, but also, like, the contract stuff, gameplay-wise, um, it doesn't necessarily, it depends, but you need to make sure you give Hokma the contract, the right contract, at least, the one that, for defensive plays. But also, hmm, it's a lot, it's, it's a bit, it's really a lot of micromanaging in this fight. And also, like, if you if you used time, the one that's, like, a uh, thing, when it's, like, yeah. Both Jai Kun and Ali yeah, true. You used, uh, Angelica. Hmm. Alright, let's get to reading before we wrap up. Let's go on an adventure. A world that changes with every step. The me that changes after every step I take. My eyes dazzled by colorful lights. I pursue pleasure that I don't have. Don't scold us because we don't, you can't understand our pursuit. You just happen to be one of the many who feel joy from common things. We, on the other hand, don't see color in those. You're the ones drenched in nasty pleasures. We're simply looking for what we lack, but complete satisfaction will never come. It only sink deeper in the raging thirst. We will spend our days in yet another grander debauchery. We're happy though. We, we can wet ourselves in new colors every day, unlike you. Yeah, just going all in. In pursuing their art, pretty much. Like, Neza explains it. Neza explains them pretty well. Oswald. People have hopes and dreams. I want to eat three blossoms of flowers. Yeah, Neza talks about not seeing colors. Oh, yeah. Good point. Oh, that makes it even better. Yeah. It makes the contrast between Neza and Dem even better. Right, he mentions colors. Right. Hmm. Good point, good point. Yeah, and then he chose to follow those colors. But then, ironically, yeah, in a similar way to following art with Bremen, it led Neza to his death in following the color of Carmen. But then, of course, now he wants to live, of course. He doesn't want to throw his, he doesn't want to throw his life away. Hmm, that's for sure. 
Oh, that's, that's, that makes it even better with Bremen. It makes it even better. It makes the contrast even better. People have hopes and dreams. I want to eat three bottles of flowers. I want to be a swifty, nifty, thrifty kitty. I want to earn a fortune. And then they add, maybe I'll find delicious flowers someday. Maybe I'll get fat stack of cash in my paws someday. Maybe I'll shout in the loudest applause someday. Someday, someday, someday. But dastardly someday. Just won't stop popping up. But to have a hope, you've got to prepare incense to offer those wishful prayers upon. A world where one can't eat flowers. A reminder that you're a sluggish turtle right now. The beggarly reality. Setting the stage for a performance we call hope. Ver thus and therefore, people have the wrong idea about how to use hopes. If they believe that the hopes will someday come true, they'll keep parroting that contemptible words. The day will never actually come. Also, book is somehow inspiration. Let's read. Having expectation this way will only leave you only bitter anger. I'll change someday. That person will turn over a new life someday. If I can count them and wait. Nyeh. People who entertain the hope as they please and then bite at each other when a change they exceed expected doesn't happen. Clowns can't give out smiles in a world full of meany, mean Terry friends. So, we should all do the stretches starting today. Abandon all expectation. Just keep a merry, positive attitude and laugh no matter what you see. Let's make a performance about what's already come true. Not of a supposed reality you, some, you hope for someday. I'm already on the stage. See, standing under the brightest spotlights ever. Yeah, like, just do it. But also in a sense of like, don't have expectations though, that's the thing. In one case, I like Oswald a lot. Um, I don't think it's even do it yourself. It's more like, um, I don't think it's even do it yourself. It's more of a, it's more of a, don't expect anything in life and just, then just be happy about everything. Like, I don't think, it's less about do it. Like, he's not saying, oh yeah, be a cat, be a, eat flowers or whatever. Or like, he's does, he's more like, he doesn't want expectations on himself or placed on other people. Like, I assume Oswald, I really like Oswald. I like it a lot and it contrasts with Tiff a lot, with Tiff a lot so well. Like, like the expectation, like he must be someone who had a lot of expectations um, for the future, but then got hopelessly crushed. But then he also was someone who also expected a lot of our people and then got crushed by that. Like, it's like, it's really a human thing. And it's like, um, I really want to see what his breaking point was. Like, what was the point where he could have gone ego or distortion, pretty much? What was the point where he could have gone ego? What would his ego, what would his ego be that, in a sense of, um, would he have realized about expectations was that it's good to uh, be happy with what you have now. Yeah, I guess that's the thing. Rather than, like, his thing is like, it's not, like, he totally um, goes, like, not full clown probably, yeah. But, like, his thing is, like, not to have expectations and all that. Like, he doesn't want to expect anything of others. Or himself it's not the night motto just be happy but just be happy again if you lose everything it's better to laugh it off and crap even cry about it yeah I think honestly his ego could have been like that something more positive rather than being this forceful no expectations at all rather if he embraced the virtue of like rather than losing expectations and um, rather the idea of being happy with what you have. I think that's the fine line between distortion and ego. They're both this, they're both similar, but there's a difference. Like Oswald abandons expectation and force yeah forces a smile pretty much. While his ego, if he was if he got an ego, it would, it would be basically um, being happy. Try to be happy with what you have and like standing above 
expectations rather like standing above expectations like don't let expectation like you like rather than reject expectations it's knowing expectations exist but um then how to say no no expectations exist but still standing above that and trying to be happy with what you have rather than outright rejecting expecting anything it's like nihilism yeah it's pretty much nihilism but it's both sides of nihilism pretty much nothing matters well not really it's, yeah nothing matters not even expectations but both in a bad way and a good way but yeah i love tifriff's contrast with him that's for sure fighting for survival is a natural thing even now we're all in battle there's more people born than folks dying of natural causes and a living struggle in their own in their own position in a position every day a fight to protect and to avoid falling behind maybe it's all because there's just enough seats uh just telling you what you're waiting for do it <laughs> be a positive energy sort of thing maybe maybe it's all because there isn't enough seats for the ever-growing population to take sure extra jobs and stuff could remain in the future but that's nothing more than helpful estimate that might not happen until it's too late for you the world we live in right now is what matters there's got to be a way to weed out the unfit without straining all of us that's when strength plays its part i don't get why you vilify this are we all doing the same thing we d directly or not we elbow our way past others so we can survive and the losers are knocked out of the race you say this is fair, but say no to physical conflicts, to respect life or whatever. Let me ask, what's the reason to respect life? Do you think you're respecting life right now? Tanya, like, it seems like, it feels like she used to be in, like, human resources or something. <laughs> she gives me that vibe, like, from this paragraph where, like, she talks about the growing population. Um, and, like extra jobs and stuff over it she comes it comes across like she's a human resources person in a sense it, hmm. but yeah it's a really simple philosophy though the dog eat dog etc etc strong so are the fittest All right, the last, the last three. Had I been busy with an urgent appointment as any other tragic tale should go, your death would want to have felt so miserable. Yeah, I could have cried until my tears had run their course, and I would have been able to ready to send you off. It was an ordinary day, a sort where there were no meetings or gatherings to attend to. After I came home from work, your body was crushed beyond recognition. I couldn't have noticed on my own that it wasn't a random chunk of flesh. They put your remains in a status box and sent it to me. That was their gesture of cond condolence. I refused to believe it was you. If it weren't for the clothes. I spent years, hours, sitting there in numb silence, vacantly staring at a lump I couldn't dare to hug. Ah. Oh, so then he did get... Right, so he did get his... His... His, um... He did get his, um... His... Yeah, his son's flesh. A stuffed doll you were carrying, now next to the box, caught my eye. Even though it was shredded and soaked in blood, the cotton fling was still clustered together, as if it remembered the volume of the doll. It seems more, seems some fabric remained even after the roller crumpled all the other fabric. Then for some reason, I brought the other dolls out of your room and cut them up with a pair of scissors. I don't know what possessed me to cut them into pieces of fabric. There wasn't even enough to fully cover the doll. So I scrapped together all the pieces of clothing to sew it back up with the same gentle hands that made your doll the first time. The outcome was creepier than it used to be, but it was the same doll I remembered nonetheless. The appearance didn't matter. Maybe just maybe the same could be said for you. Is it the box where you, uh, my son, rested for that longer be, would be no longer than eternity? My two hands were once so busy than it, that it was a bother. They had pauses for time, but now we're about to move again, just for you. It's sad, yeah. It's like, do you know, like, it's like the story of the ship of Theseus, where, like, 
It's the it's the it's the it's the it's the philosophical um like Pinocchio's dad, ish ish. It's like um it's like the story of the ship of Theseus, where like is a ship is a ship the same ship if all of its parts keep getting replaced. Would it still be called the same ship? So in this case, it's like, is it really his son? He believes in, like, he believes that, yes, it's still the same ship, pretty much. So like, so in this case, he's like, with the doll, he replaces the doll with other bits of the doll, other bits of the, other bits of doll. But then, is it really the same doll in the end? He believes so. The ship of Theseus and all that stuff. So, right. So that's the, that's his philosophy, pretty much. That, yeah, and it's, it pretty much goes over like his breakdown, pretty much of his son. All right, Elena, blood fiends. Yep, definitely Nosferatu. The being said to have been punished with never-ending thirst for the sin of lusting after human blood. That's what your kind called us, condemning us out of fear. I was afraid as well when I faced them for the first time in that mansion where everything began. Yep, Nosferatu, I feel. Violent beings who drank the blood of fellow humans. Even though I like to make world roller jokes, I like his character. Yeah, I like Jai Hyun. Yeah, I like him. I like him. It's just that the mention of the road roller was like really sudden. Like, huh? What? <laughs> My son was killed by a road roller. Like, what? Yo, what? That came out of nowhere. It, it, like, Road Bowler is just like it's cursed by Jojo. <laughs> like when you think Road Roller, you think of Dio just smashing down the Road Roller on Jotaro. So like him just saying that his son died by a Road Roller just makes it sound a bit comical. <laughs> like he did say, obviously it wasn't like a Road Roller fell from the sky. It was more like a Road Roller that like was used for the back streets. Or a nest or whatever. So like for like roads and stuff and streets, but still. A growing feeling of unease but the possibility of being the next target. People in the mansion were terrified of those who became monsters. Even though they were humans like us. Yep, they were outside of what we thought as the hip norm. In hindsight, well, swing to doom. Was it illusion of normalcy that we feared for and fought for so strongly? Let's say that every human on the planet is for one turn into blood fiends, and that single person remaining is left normal, as they say. In what case, what would, in that case, what would normalcy be there? How must that lone human feel being a monster among the creatures they dreaded? Should they fight to their last breath for the humanity they kept for so long? Perhaps that's become an obsolete ideology, one that's no longer worth keeping. What if rejecting. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. The whole road roller da. What if rejecting that old ideal and becoming a blood fiend opened up our potential for growth in numerous aspects? Your kind likes to claim that something is out of the ordinary when it's only different from what you've seen and experienced before, so you fear it, and try to exclude it from your head, heard. But you see, there's no real justification for your kind to condemn us. Hmm. Right, because like, also, yeah, Bina's one was, um... Um, also like, Bina's thing was also like, face the eye facing the fear. Um, to break the cycle, like honestly, it does. It does kind of relate. Like, what if we did? What if humans did face the fear of blood fiends and then broke the cycle of calling blood fiends monsters? That kind of works for Bina as well. Like, it talks about fear and stuff. And like, so what if? What if eventually humans did face the fear of blood fiends and accepted them as their own instead of like? Having this cycle of blood fiends feeding on humans constantly because they're vilified as monsters, but they do they do it for they do it to feed, but also also like it does perpetuate the cycle of the blood fiends hating humans, humans fearing blood fiends, etc. So it does work for Bina as well. The world is one massive aggregation of delusions. A world where individuals can shape their own reality as they see fit. Every person is susceptible to deception, for they have knowledge. For that reason, it's impossible for a pure being untainted by knowledge to see the world as we mistakenly observe it. In the same way, they cannot discern 
endpoint of a line or tell between blue and red. And in the philosophy is kind of hypocritical. She does, yeah, she done her own misfortune herself because some of the blood fiends are not hated much. She's, yeah, because like, yeah, because Elena went overway up to starve the city threat. So, yeah, she she didn't try to break the cycle at all. She was like, yeah, she just per she perpetuated she perpetuated the fear of blood fiends even more, pretty much. A world devoid of wants. It would be unfit to call that place a world. In fact, to even call it a place could be just yet another misconception amongst knowing ones. The more one learns, the more delusions they invite. However, if most people are observed the same place and felt the same sentiments, then it might not be your own delusion after all, would you say so? For instance, take a look at the blue sky. Well, the celestial dome is higher and further than one can fathom, and as blue as it can be, most will agree the sky is tall and blue. Alas, those who think as such are ultimately within your view. It's only natural that you'd agree with you as your figments of born out of your delusional mind. Instead, in indeed, a slight entity that prevents you from seeing the world in its serious form will be none other than yourself. Even the holy entity in which you believe and to which you devote yourself is going to be a projection of your own self. So how can I trust anything that my eyes show me? Hmm. All right, so yeah, Pluto's one, the, the 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 philosophical contrast is a lot more with um, Hokma and Faith. Like Pluto can't trust anything. He can't trust his own senses. He can't trust people who think the same as him. Like that's that's Pluto. Like it's why he likes contracts so much because that's the only thing he could trust. Something down written signed he can't trust his own senses he can't trust the world he can't trust other people who think the same as him pretty much he got scammed yeah he got scammed hard by roland <laughs> and like um hokma's like to be fair the i embracing the past to build the future i guess also was you can kind of see it i embracing the past to build the future like Pluto has no future. Like, if he had, he can't see the present. He has no future. He can't trust anything. What future is there for someone who can't trust anything? He can't trust. He can't look on the past and improve upon that. He, yeah, he's. Well, he became distorted now, and now he's like, yep, yeah, contracts. Cause there's the only thing I can trust, except for Argalia. But yeah. It's tragic, but mm, I see. Faithful old man versus unfaithful funny skeleton. Pretty much, yeah. He lacks, like, well, you, why some people might not have faith in like a higher being. Um, yeah. While people might not have faith in a higher being, at least people can have faith in their own selves, in their own senses. But he can't. He just has nothing. But yeah, sure. We'll check out the pianist story then, I guess. If it's on the wiki. Okay, cool. I don't know where was this from, the pianist. Unless it was from another source. What source is it from? I don't know what source is, where the source of this is, but okay, I'll read it. Let's read um, the pianist then. Uh... All right, let's go. Let's finish off that soundtrack as well. All right, a thirty-eight-year-old pianist wearing a worn-out suit. My days start off as a bite at the by street on District 9, known as the Street of Music, just loitering around aimlessly, knocking at the doors of underground stores, seeking for, um, seeking for a job. However, my reputation has already hit the bottom long ago in this very street. An abject musician who only knows to play by the rules of the music sheet. A boring clown. A poor pianist who lacks any money with no pool. I know better than anyone else that's the gruesome peak of my life. An exclusive pianist 
of a fancy restaurant. Perhaps in charge of a recital at social gatherings for the rich, or arranging a private concert. Um. Um. Well, I'll I'll check out the upper ending, but I'll leave um distortion detective and whatnot for uh probably off stream. I'll see, but I I, I need to uh eat soon as well, so probably um, we'll check out the Rowena ending at least the original one. We'll see. Um, object musician. Yeah, person in charge is all about unreachable longing for me now. A crummy 40 square meter bar under the, under the ground, full of all kinds of smoke. The scenery visualized by the flickering light bulbs faint. Scarlet light resembles a graveyard. A graveyard for the low life such as I. A place where the scum such as the incompetent fixers and the minor of a gang come together to praise each other with foolish consolation. In here, I fix my eyes on the score beating away black and white keys. It was 14 years ago, which I can't remember vividly, but I began to play by dropping my head, unhind unhindered by my surroundings. Um, I first played at a bar when I missed my chance to be successful at the age of 18. 12, sorry. Playing at a cheap pub came to me as an edge of a cliff, where I have nowhere to retreat to. As I start playing, the silence slowly covers the room. The customer's head turn towards my admiring my performance and forming a bond, single bond of sympathy is something I never expect as much but I wanted my music to be respected a bit more than it is while comforting the minds however when I look around the bar I have to accept that the fact that my music fits in here like a napkin which is something you naturally see in a pub it doesn't matter if I'm not the pianist of this place anyone who can play this play with a score can be here as a prop just assorted there where it's suitable like how napkins and vases should be on table. All these unnecessary um, contemplations happen more often these days. Three days of light, three days of darkness, and a day of silence that wrapped around the city. Sitting around the week, while playing busily I sink into the thoughts of the past and recall forgotten things at the same time. Had I gained enough composure to introspect in the warmth, anxiety and silence, which doesn't fix the city at all, my heart should have lost its capacity to let me think so deep, for it would have worn out too much already. As always, I gently close my eyes while playing with my fingers diligently, in this crude bar of the vulgar words and the louder, voices louder than the piano. The one job that I can do is hit the keys. There were fools here and there who knew how to play exactly as a score we were given. But most of them were in better places than I am. I could only watch the people who I once thought were insignificant, insignificant skyrocket towards the support from patrons. Though envious, I didn't resent. I was confident that once my talent gained its rightful recognition, I'd raised, reached a higher place than any others who would cash in, who used cash and connections to get up. But all that confidence was broken fast. It felt like a joke. About a year after my path to be a pianist, I heard someone say it's a boring performance. Even if it's the only talent I had, this all came to nothing compared to others' talents. Did I call this a talent at all? My eyes were the scores slightly faster, and my hands were a bit quicker. I just loved the sound coming from the red instrument. I didn't know that it was a mediocre attitude, deluding myself that I was unique, I was gifted with a unique artistic ability. And I realized it wasn't just wealthy patrons, parents or patrons that I lacked in these hands. I wasn't even gifted to begin with. My performance weren't even mind, it could be anyone's, surely playing by the rules of the sheet, the performance where the player didn't have to be me, yet I couldn't put my hand down from the keys for 25 years, why is that? It's because I love to play piano, and I'm still playing this instrument on my own, which nobody will pay attention to. My eyes open with someone forcefully pulling on my shoulder, a drunk bum talks to me with an infuriated face, telling me to move aside so we can play for his fellows who came along. Even if my, keys, my hands can see the keys away, they won't stop until the song is completed. This seat won't be empty till then. I will not yield. This is the last place I stand. It's been firmly kept firmly as the, my spot with an abject pride of mine. Even if I knew I had no gift in me and people despised, the shopkeeper warns me that I shouldn't, I shouldn't make a scene. Burning to loud, loudly that I'll lose my job if I don't step aside. I realize it this again as I look at them seated. My fingers are due to play. 
My performance has always been flowing at the bottom. It's sinking as I look up in eternity. My head rang all of a sudden. My performance ended as the shopkeeper slapped me across the face. I was the jerk sitting in front of the piano. As I sit in the table in the corner with wet towel against my cheek, the cramped out bar is still filled with the kinds of crude chatter from the tables. The man who in no civil, no way civil brags to his friends, spitting as he sits at the piano stool. He has been playing as a hobby. Stroking my swollen cheek, I wonder if things would have been better if I'd taken this as a mere hobby. A luscious tune plays along. That made me wonder if that really was the cheap, the same cheap one I've been using now. If all the song is the same, the melody close at the close into the heart. Despite all the noise in the bar, it sounded very vivid. And all the other sounds in the pub subsides. The music, beautiful music is the only thing left. Tears roll down. Body shaking with melodies with the melody spurring through my mind. It was all too beautiful and painful for me to keep the tears in. As the melody reaches climax, the small 40 square meter place is turned turn into a warm, cozy place that never, no one else, nowhere else can be there to be. But it, this is the true talent. At the moment I vaulted out of my seat, I headed straight for the piano. After pushing that son of a bitch aside, I moved my mind, banged my head against the keys like a madman. Bang, snap, ding, ding. The piano screech resonates, resonates. Water runs down my right eyeball as my water runs down as my right eyeball digs into the black key. I rub the grind of my head against the keys. The sheer white keys turn crimson red. When I twisted and snapped my left arm, crushing my left hand, I opened my mouth and rammed it into the corner of the piano. Teeth are broken and dropping out, digging out the instrument, rubbing, smashing, and grinding the whole body. A sound that's never been heard before oozes out of it. I wasn't upset when the customers ignored my performance. I wasn't upset when that jerk interrupted me. I wasn't upset when the shopkeeper was on my side. I wasn't upset when my colleagues became successful to help the patrons. I just want to be playing piano because I love to. The city won't allow it. Nothing here goes well if you simply like to do it. Where is my freedom to live as who I am? Why can't I leave the keyboard? Why must my heart be detested so much? The city disgusted me with all my judgement. I didn't think that my seat was taken when Mr. Nobody pushed me away and sat there. When his, when, when his melody lured my heart, only then my seat had truly been stolen. Why can't I capture people's minds? Why can't I capture my own mind? Everything was shambles. When I came to, everyone was listening to me play. I listened to my own performance. The piano creaks covered in blood and flesh. But how is it possible that my body could play anyway? With far greater willpower than I ever had before. That question is trivial to compared to the light in this moment. Not stopping, I continue to play by smashing my damn body against the instrument. The was supposed to be broken already, it's grown to be bigger with a better shape. The keys elongate, my arms stretch out, a brand new arm rises for the play. The music is more mellow than it ever was resonating. Score spreads, all right, this is when he becomes the pianist. Score, pian yeah, yeah, he becomes one directly. Score spreads out in front of my eyes. People are ripped apart with me, turning into notes, making the same sound that came from the body of the jerk. Fixtures draw their swords. Alas, V2 have become part of the play. I can see the sound above the music sheet. The sound of screaming, flesh exploding, bones breaking, and organs being pulled out. Though all of that's a cacophony, it turns into a melody with me. It becomes a beautiful performance. This is the truth for my talent. The piano and I, that used to be underground, became one and rise to the higher stage. I play alone at the bottom of the city, using the keys stronger and stronger, so one day every ear in the city can be full of music. I don't sink into worthless contemplations anymore. I don't care about patrons or talents. Everything becomes worthless in front of the melody. Steadily keeping my place in front of the piano, I make the tune flow like, like I can, only I can play. Though, um, though my performance could be flowing at the bottom, it will not sink further. Now look at who's playing the music looking down. Who's looking, who's, who's shaking their body listening to music looking up. I'm just a poor pianist from the city. Alright, yeah, so that's the pianist backstory. It's in, like, yeah, it's like the whole, um, what's it called? It's like the whole artist kind of, um, woe sort of thing, I think you could say. Where it's like, you could, you could, you could, it's like the whole, um, artist dilemma. 
and stuff where it's like they want to not really music is bad more like it's a story of like someone who wants their art to be recognized he lost all confidence in himself like he feels like all he's doing is just playing sheet music he wants to like captivate people and so in his like frustration like he starts smashing himself against the piano to make music which does like it does reflect the whole bremen stuff with like co- like killing people and making music from the from the sounds <clears throat> in the end people recognized him yeah he became like one of the most biggest figures in the city honestly <laughs> ironically enough yeah he did become in the end known as the pianist the one who the distortion who wrecked everything in the city and changed things forever it's quite something that's for sure and yeah it's like just it's like just tragic like i don't know i wonder like what would have been his ego moment then i guess his ego if he was if the pianist were to form an ego it would truly be it would be really about doing what he wants like playing playing the piano because he likes it and living up to that like accepting that and like that's what he wants to do and he'll free he'll gladly um do it um the day for oh yeah yeah, yeah the, the roland angelica one um one sec yeah the day uh the roland angelica one was he even a star he already has a fan club i mean he's the he's the very first distortion to um you know wreck stuff up so yeah i'm gonna mute let me see i think it's fine i'm gonna mute actually one second uh just making sure nothing pops up on stream that i don't want to pop up i think it's fine Uh, hold on. Uh, one second. Give me a moment. One moment. Hold on. Uh, one moment. No, that's fine. All right, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Apparently, for the video, like, there's a copyright at the end for the music here in the purple tear segment for some reason. So just in case, I'll just keep the. I'll keep the video muted, but I'll play it. Just full screen. Even though the star we call, we call the library has fallen. The phenomenon of the distortion is still ongoing. Han Association. It's time we established a new association, as someone pointed out. You mean an association to take charge of distortions exclusively, as countless suggestions have asked for? The Purple Terror has been submitting a mound of documents, as if she's been waiting for this moment. She was the one who said to be careful of walking between multiple dimensions to the influence of a singularity. Perhaps she's walked into the borders of the beyond. It seems she's still seeing further ahead than anyone else, and she won't look back at herself. An association of fixers, specifically dealing with distortions, is it? Knock knock, there's plenty of demand, you know? No need to scratch your heads weighing the gains. Some wings have already begun to move. Offices focusing distortions are a money maker on the rise. Better be the first to take grips on the market. Besides the distortion phenomenon, is starting to take a turn, new turn ever since the library case. You guys ever heard about the tower that's magically shown itself in its outskirts, right? Yeah, that's pretty much thing. You're still rude as ever. Don't you know how to knock properly? Sheesh, it's not like I didn't. You are correct. We did receive reports about the tower-like structure, which appeared in the outskirts. Apparently it would disappear like a mirage once they tried to approach it. Yeah, that's the library. Yeah, that. That's probably the new library. Well, it looks like it's operating in a different way now. Hmm. Pressuring us won't allow you to skip the standard procedure, Purple Tear. 
even have the Dastyus Dastyus would be in charge of organizing the association alone. To deal with abnormalities is born out of twists and distorting of humans. You want specialized gear? Wait. The distinct equipment Lobotomy Corp has dubbed Ego is the most appropriate for the, do for the job. Okay, so she's calling it abnormalities. Um, the thing about Ego, though, is that it's not any person who person can handle it. We need folks who can meet qualifications. You mean the so-called egoists, according to a document. Yappers, you know I've got smart eye for people. It wouldn't hurt to let me take charge. We should take the initiative in shaping the system our way. Right now, the public's ideas are all over the place, as is evident with terms like distortions, abnormalities, even plain creatures being thrown around. The first to define concepts and terms will gain the upper hand in the game of control. You know that better than anyone. We'll probably we'll consider your proposal with an open mind. Alright then, I'm expecting good news from you, okay? Alright, yeah. That's pretty much a teaser for um, Limbus Company. At least. Mm. Yeah, check out... It's on this channel, Scythe 7. <laughs> that I... That is from this ending. But yeah. Um, yeah, it's like... Hmm. It's like... I don't get the issue with it. Like, It's like the Tower of Babel ending. Well, Library of Babel thing with um, Angela. At the end of the thing. At the, at the end of the Lobotomy Corp. It's like... It's a teaser for something new to come. And it's like... Oh yeah. The, pro the, the city is obviously interested in dealing with um you know uh in dealing with distortions now um meme videos oh, yeah, yeah, a lot of it's meme videos like i like i i saw this one a lot i didn't i didn't i just watched this one it was like because it had like it's the first time i actually heard um, Ketter, the third Ketter phase. <laughs> so yeah, I like that one a lot. It's just funny. But yeah, um, what else was there? But yeah, I saw the the, the link they have here of like the um, the the director of Project Moon addressing it. It was like, uh, let's see. I forgot if they had any changes in dialogue. Because um, that was about, like, saying how Angela was the reason why the head went to the library. Um. Oh, I see. This, 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 didn't, this didn't mention it about. Okay. Um, right, we didn't have the Keter realization as well, which is interesting. Like,. I feel it's weird that they didn't have Keter's realization. Like, I get why, but as in, I don't get why actually. It's more like because the Keter realization um, was obviously, um, what's it called? It really helped give closure to Angela. Yeah, and they, they explained why Tiff wasn't there. Yeah, as Tiff is the youngest character in the game, she decided to leave out any depiction of death as they may be excessive. Yeah, this is why. Um, okay, Lisa had died when Arbiter Garion um, had thing uh, had sold to the library. Um, didn't yeah move? Oh yeah, this this, this this was the thing that I saw like moving on from El Corp story. They meant that uh, right. I I saw that thing and I assumed oh so no more, nothing else from them. But yeah, they elaborated here like the Sephiroth and Ang Angela will not be featured as main characters but they will still play they will still be there just not as the main characters and also Pillar of Light will still be having a role I guess they didn't explain the voice and then emphasis on the conclusion of the choices restructured the ending plays out after confrontation with the re reverb ensemble saving the heads of the mission for the epilogue I guess I guess it's better place to have the head involved in the epilogue then thing and then we acknowledge that the post credits conversation unnecessary 
I don't think it's unnecessary, but it's more of a teaser to be fair. It doesn't add anything to... Well, it does kind of. It means that the city really, really cares about um, distortions. Oh yeah, Iron and Carmen kind of. Like, I, I, I count um, Sephiroth and Angela alongside Carmen and Iron. But we'll see. We'll probably... We'll, we might get more than we expected of like the Sephiroth. Because like, the, the library is still around. The best way to think about the head is he can't have their pages. Yeah, yeah. So, mm, we, obviously did, we obviously didn't defeat them. At least. But yeah. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, one sec. Alright, we'll just wrap, we'll wrap it up. Oh yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't watch it yet, but I do plan on seeing that video at some point. Uh, one sec. Yeah, we'll check out the special, the one they made for, um, uh, the, the one they made, this one. This one, right? Uh, this one. I, I watched the Day 50 one already, so, uh, a while ago. But okay, yeah, this is, uh, a side story with, um, Roland and Angelica. Oh yeah, she calls Roland Mister. Mister.。전. <웃음> <웃음> 뭐라 했어요? 아, 일단 가서 먹어 보면 안다니까. 이상한 음식을 먹이는 건 아니죠. 어떤 질 나쁜 놈이 먹이고 나서 먹이고 나서 relationship when things were peaceful as well. 무섭죠. 말을 했는데 이상한 것도 아니고 이상한 것도 아니야. 평범한 재료로 요리하는 평범하게 맛있는 곳이거든. 그래요. 이쪽에서 먼저 뭐 먹으러 가자고 하는 것도 처음이고 굉장한 곳인가 보죠. 음, 그렇다고 또 너무 기대하면 곤란한데. 대포집? 좀 보름에 보여도 진짜 진짜 괜찮은 곳이야. 진짜 핫핫 플레이스. 정말 여기예요? <웃음> 여기 모듬전 하나랑 파전 하나 그리고 쌀 막걸리 한 병이요. <웃음> oh, yeah, I, I, I saw the real one. Yeah. I saw some screenshots <웃음> and like, like <웃음> pictures. 도로. <웃음> 이트라고? 저 혼자 착각한 거예요? 아니. Yeah, the thing that. 그렇잖아요. Oh, this is the food that she likes. 어디 내가 먼저 말하지. 그때마다 꼭 상호소 동료들도 불러서 같이 가지. 의뢰를 해결할 때 말고는 둘이 같이 있던 적 없지 않아요? 여기가 그렇게 별론가? 보통 점심 먹으려고 추운 뒷골목을 한 시간 넘게 걸어서 허름한 술집을 오진 않죠. 그럼. Mm, it'd be nice to go there one day. To the ham ham. 좋아해요. Yeah. Wow. Yogi Johnny Chinta Mashkinaneo. Tiki, Pajoni. Kitchi. Tadi Bishim Jogoedo. Maxam Yogi Trosso. Chicho Pajoni and Makoli Mogumin. Chinta Juan Danica. Bashin and Nimshing Yagi at Denen. One John Taran Sarami Deneo. Kunazona Tan Sarami Rang to Turio Soil. 알잖아. 그 친구. 둘은 질투날 정도로 친하네요. Olivia? I guess. 아, 술 기운이 올라오네요. 나수라는 취미는 없는데. 이게 또 가끔 먹어 주면 매력이 있다니까. 그래서 무슨 바람이 불어서 여기까지 저랑 온 거예요? <웃음> 넌 눈치가 빠르니까 알것 같은데. 직접 듣지 않으면 못 믿겠어요. 어? 긴급 호출이네. 시간 없으니까 한 마디만 해줘요. 알았어, 알았어. 사실은 좋아해요. <웃음> She was first. 뭐라고? <웃음> 당신은요? 
아 나도 그래 사실 네가 며칠 전에 산 묵공방의 최고급 제품을 아우. 시험삼아 만지다가 부숴먹었다는 말을 하려고 했지만 그리고 내 마음을 전하는 건좀더 아. 멋진 곳에 살고 싶었는데 그 말을 듣는 순간 그런 건 아무래도 좋았다 아 거기 파전 맛있는 거 기억나죠? 아, 나 no. 사와요. 아. 놀라. 이러다 다 타겠어. 어? 어? 아, 아이고 아이고. 큰일 날 뻔했네. 자, 여기서 다시 뒤집고 <웃음> 좀만 더 익혀 주면 냄새가 나쁘지 않네. 롤랑 표 특제 파전 완성. <웃음> 롤랑은 아. 정말로 요리를 잘하는구나. 자, 자, 여기에 막걸리까지 곁들이면 완벽하지. 내 자음? 여기요. 종류별로 준비해봤어요. <웃음> 막자지껄라니 분위기 좋네. 뿌듯하기도 하고. 롤랑? 무슨 생각했었어? 어? 어. 그냥 아. 옛날 생각. Yeah, this had, this had to have been obviously like... Um, after the game, you know, after the events, I'm glad we got something of the, like, officially of the, um, you know, of, uh, what's it called? Of the, blah, 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 words, of the librarians and Roland just hanging out, officially, post-game, post yeah, post-game, that's it. Like, we had, um, obviously, actually, yeah, because we, we had, like, the CGs, like, um, from the original credits, they were they were cut out because obviously they don't fit poems of a machine. So I get why they hid um, the credits, as in why they didn't use those graph those um artwork for the. Um, I get why they didn't use the artwork for um, the credits in the full release because. It doesn't fit poems of a machine, but it is really nice to um, have got um, some official, something official, with um, you know, as a as a way of them having, yeah, having them at least having a peaceful time in, like all together. Besides, like the short stories, it's nice to have them all like hang out all together. At least, which I'm really happy about. And so they cut those. They were nice art. Yeah, like I don't. I get why they cut them because it doesn't fit the credits um, poems of a machine. But I am glad that we have that. <laughs> it's tr it's 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 you know it's sad, but also it also means that Roland has obviously Roland has in some way. Is getting over his wife's death. He's he's got over it. He's getting over it. Like, mm. he, yeah, it's really sweet. And it's like it's like it it shows Roland moving on past Angelica dying. Like we obviously got some of that, like when he forgave when he forgave Angela, instead of just having his revenge that was just empty and led him to just you know dying in a ditch in a gutter. <laughs> But yeah. All right. <clears throat> What's the plan? Um, I'll end the stream in a bit. I'll next week. I'll probably do. Um, more so. Yeah, yeah. Accepting is a better term than getting over. Accepting his death and moving on. Mm -hmm. Um, I probably do next week. I'll probably do the Limbus. Um, trailers next week, I think. Next week, I'll do that. I'll do it next week. Um, I think I'll check. I'll make a schedule soon. I'm kind. I might be busy towards the weekend, or at least Sunday. I'll see. Um, I'll make a schedule and then I'll post whatever. We're done with arena now, at least. <laughs> um, I am interested in mods, but for now. Um, yeah, I'm done with the I'm done with the game for now. Maybe mods in the future, but not right away. I don't want to burn myself out 
on Project Moon stuff and Rowena. <laughs> Maybe in the future I'll come back and check out some mods, but I also want to play other stuff. So yeah, it did be like that. Um, I will check out. Yeah, I want to do the um, checking out the Limbus Company trailers uh, stream next week or so. Yeah, three to four months. Like they said, winter, so November, December, perhaps. But yeah. Um. But yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll plan out what I do for next week soon. But this game has really been a ride, huh? Like. It's honestly become one of my favorite games alongside Lobotomy Corp. Those two have become some of my favorite, not some of my favorite games. I don't have like a favorite game of all time, but uh, this game and Lobotomy Corp are up there. That's for sure. <laughs> not long of a wait, yeah, not long, not, not long to go. Like three to four months can just go by in a flash, in all honesty. We just happen and then go. We go on your heart. Hmm. Like, I love the, st the story of, like, Lobotomy Core really, it really helps add to Rowena's story, like, as I mentioned, like, the Sephira, like, you don't really care, like, I don't, like, you won't come to care about the Sephira or abnormalities right away if you didn't know about them in Lobotomy Core, and like, like, stuff like Ian, like, he's incomplete in Rowena, you don't know who he is or who he was at all unless you played Lobotomy Corp. Otherwise you're just following Angela's point of view of him being, you know, thing. If you don't play Lobotomy Corp, you don't have Alpha 23. <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't have had the Alpha um, moment. <laughs> I don't I wonder if someone else got that glitch at some point. I know there's people who had um I know like, like I've had like punishing birds stuck flying in one spot, or like Bina being in invincible during her boss her suppression because she got stuck. Like she was invincible. <laughs> but yeah. <clears throat> but I wonder if someone else got that glitch at some point. That'd be interesting. Honestly, I I wonder how it even happened. Like. I know Lobotomy Corp has some weird ass spaghetti code. <laughs> Door stuck, pretty much. Without Lobotomy Corp, Iron is just deadbeat dad, yeah. Like, without Lobotomy Corp, no like from Rowena, we barely know anything about him. Like, as as, as Angela says in Malkov's episode one or two, um, she mentions how oh yeah, Iron was probably being selfish. With, um, with with improving the Sephira, like the end result, of the Seed of Light was him was um, you know, was getting was for the Seed of Light, but also it did help the Sephira improve. But then again, you could also argue I could see the point of Angela saying he was being selfish because he did plan on the he did plan on the Sephira being like dying at the end of Lobotomy Corp when the light was released so you could interpret him as being selfish but Ian is one of those characters that you went you're that's open to interpretation pretty much he's not clear-cut the dog oh the bug of the parasite tree is locked to give bloom but you don't open a door oh I see and so make it sound he's the main villain yeah yeah pretty much like I don't fault Angela for thinking like that because <laughs> <laughs> I don't fault her for that because obviously she was like living through hell like her time perception was was like utter a mess and then she was like um, you know she lived through how many years worth of time so and she had to follow a script she can't she, she wasn't allowed to exert her free will pretty much until the very end where she stole the light she's followed the script and all that stuff so i get i get why she's also tragic for that sense but then it's uh, it's nice that rowena like i don't i'm really curious to see how angela will go in the future like where will she develop from here 
But I guess she's not a main character. She doesn't necessarily need to anymore. But yeah. Yeah, n n necessary evil, pretty much. Uh, read Detective and Leviathan on stream or off. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. I don't... Because, like, what? Project Moon has the whole thing where, like, you have to need a account to read Leviathan. So I don't feel right for having it shown on stream. Because it seems to be something they want you to make an account for. So I feel... Um, it doesn't feel right. I'll think about it. I don't know. People, perhaps I would say that Rune is one of your favorite games to you personally at the moment. Yeah, yeah. I get what you mean. It's become one of my favorites as well. Mm. There's like, obviously, um, not. it's not perfect by any means. Oh, just wait for, just wait for the game. Okay, maybe. Yeah, I, I, I could just wait for the Distortion Detective game. Like, I, I read that Distortion Detective 2 is going to be, as in, Lobotomy Corporation 2 is Distortion Detective, the game. We'll see. I don't know how that's going to go, but that's what I saw last time. That's what I read somewhere. But we shall see. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is like, it's like reposted on translation sites, but just more like because they want it on their official site. I mean, either that the English version isn't on their site and it's on somewhere else, but eh, we'll see. But yeah, the game isn't perfect by any means. Like, <laughs> um,. There's like some points where the spike is like nuts. The difficulty spike, like say Queen of Hatred, that spike was a bit much. Like you could do it with the cards that you want, but okay, there must be Corbin just to say about two different points. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I see. I thought it was the same where like you you investigate distortions in the city and that counts as the management system. It was, I guess so. Okay, I see. But yeah, um. Yeah. All right. We'll see how it, how it goes. Right now, the focus is on Limbus Company. Anyway, it would be nice to see when they do bring out those two. But um, distortion Limbus Company is the focus for now. It seems. <clears throat> all right. Yeah. All right. That'll be all for today and all for Ru all for Ru Ruina. That is this and this is that. <laughs> Ruina was too easy. I can kind of see, like, as in, like, compared to the early access, like, say, Philip and, like, Philip and, um, uh, Philip and Love Town were much harder in early access compared to now. Or, like, let's say the, when you did the, when you did the ensemble, you, you had to use... Like you had, you couldn't use. You you were limited for pages within each layer. But then in the early access, it was for the whole tower, the whole thing. Like yeah, like in the bottom course, if you do something wrong, you die. Hmm. I I know, but then again, in the bottom core, you're meant to do stuff wrong. You're meant to you meant you're meant to fail. You're meant to retry. You're meant to repository backwards, pretty much. You're meant to. That's the whole. Thing of the game, you're meant to fail. <laughs> you're meant to fail and try again, pretty much. That's pretty much the whole cycle's deal. You're meant, you're meant to fail. You're meant to die sometimes. You're meant to maybe get stuff that will kill you. Oh, the let's go play. They say the game looks too looks too easy. Nah, the game like the game does have its difficulty and micromanagement. Like, especially when you get like. Like, let's say, for example, um, Gabura's, like, fighting, not this one, whoops. It was, um, Adamati, like, fighting Red Riding Hood mercenary. It has some micromanagement. It's, like, really dicey to get it right. <laughs> let's say, it's really dicey to get Little Red Riding Mercenary correct. It's not easy. It's really dicey to get that correct. Or like Pluto's contract micromanagement or there's a lot of but to be fair, these do have the feelings of Lobotomy Corp with like managing and like trying to get the right conditions. It was a word before Love Town and Red Hood. Oh I see. They were they oh right, so they they were before Love Town Red Hood so yeah I mean the difficulty like 
the first difficulty really happens with um, Dawn Office, in all honesty. Like, you, you, get, you just get Crack of Dawn by Salvador, and it's like, oh, pain. <laughs> like, Salvador Crack of Dawn and you was not nice. The rest of these were fine. These it could be a bit of trouble, but yeah. Crack of Dawn, getting Crack of Dawn here was not nice. And then Love Town happened, and then obviously you get um, Emma Noah, which was kind of difficult. Crying Children, which is a long fight, for sure. Then you get the AI. Then it gets harder, like with um, Farm Lou, Blue Reverbs encounter, and then Xiao, Slaughtered Yan, Purple Tear, Red Mist, and then obviously this Gauntlet here. So like. Yeah. There is difficulty spikes, but they are kind of spread out. At least early game. Then you get a chunk of them within within this whole section. <laughs> Alright, yeah. I'll head off for now, so that's Marina and that is that. <laughs> this is that. Alright. I'll catch you all whenever next time. Uh, for me, like when a game gives you check, you check fight. What do you mean, like when you check the fight? Hmm. Yeah. Thanks for being along for the journey as well. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. Oh, if you play Save Aspire, true. Oh yeah, I, I played I played Save Aspire before. Um, I played a little bit, a fair bit, a bit. I see. I see. Oh, I said you get you get to like see what fight is here, right? You get you get to see who we're fighting here. You mean before we enter? While in Slave Aspire, you just jump into a, into an encounter, and then it's like, um, hmm. like every fight is a check for what deck can handle. I see, I see, I see. Right? Because to be fair, Slave Aspire is a rogue like, so uh, you do have to like build your deck for either a build or knowing what's coming up. For sure. Because it's all randomized and stuff. Like, it'd be interesting if Ruina was a roguelike, in a sense. Yeah, there's a. I think th there might be. It's an, it's an interesting concept, like, Library of Ruina roguelike. With, like, you just build a. You pick a floor and build a deck. But then, it'd be interesting if, like, Abno Pages. Um. Yeah, if you play enough, you know it's coming. True. Mm. Like if you like, if you think of like Abno pages where every floor was randomized, like rogue-like Abno pages plus the pages from fights. So Limbus will have a rogue-like mechanic. Oh, interesting. That's that'll be interesting. I know Arc Knights has a rogue-like mechanic. I don't have. I don't see rogue-like mechanics. Um, much in gacha games. I know Ark Knights has one, like with um, a roguelike mode. Hmm. But roguelikes are all about like you like you just you just become not so powerful potentially with like broken builds, potentially. <laughs> all right, <clears throat> that'll be all for now. So I'll catch you later. Bye bye for now. <laughs>